Today, we're going to take a deep dive into some of the poker coaches that are selling courses, selling content, selling one-on-one or group coaching. And I want to just, I'm on a bit of a jihad. I got I to admit, you know, it's having a little fun with it. But at the same time, over the last seven years of my life, I've been coaching poker. Maybe eight, maybe nine, I don't know. Depending on how you define coaching. I wasn't charging for it in, until like seven years ago, I'd say. And regularly, very regularly, I would come across a new student or a potential student who had had coaching in the past, but still really, really sucked at poker. And in fact, when I dug into why they sucked at poker, it was largely to do with the coaching that they had in the past. Either they'd watched a course that sucked or they'd had one-on-one coaching that sucked. And their thought process was just so clogged and cloudy and conglomerated. That's not the word I meant, but you get what I'm saying. That it it just, they, they couldn't beat anything. They were just fucking down and down and down we go and where it stops, nobody knows. And then honestly, it just takes like a little bit, like a couple of sentences even to just be like, you know, this is what you're thinking here is bullshit. What you're thinking here is bullshit. Scratch that. Here's how to simplify your thought process. And I've seen people go down and down and then boom, straight up, boom, straight up. It's happened more times than I can count. And it shows that a lot of people, it's not that they were bad at poker. It's just they were very confused when it came to poker. Poker is a very multivariate phenomenon. You know, it ain't, it ain't easy to understand exactly what you want to be thinking of in all uh, circumstances. Uh, I also have a day two of a tournament for the bankroll challenge in like 20 minutes, which I'm not going to put on stream. <laughs> so, you know, keep that off stream. Let's get the, uh, let's get the old chat going. Uh, by the way, check out my Discord, epiphanypoker.com. can join for free or you can join the Elite membership. And the amount of fucking content we're putting out for such a cheap price, $57 a month, is insane. Insane. Anyway, so hide him in the chat. I'll get a YouTube chat open. We are going to do some deep dives on some people. Take a look at Dylan Wiseman. Markets himself as a crusher, but as a literal fish and never posts results. You know what, my friends? I will take a look. I'm not saying that any of these people are bad at poker. I'm not saying that any of these people are, you know, scam artists or anything like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to deep dive into the facts and see where we come up with. All right. Keep my GG account over there. Log in over there. Please nothing pop up so nobody sees what I'm called. That'd be fantastic. People are still folding to me, which is nice. Don't want to KYC. Chat over here. Chat over here. Boom, boom, boom. Let's fucking do this. A beauty in the moonlight overthrew you. So the first one that came to my attention, as um, people have been mentioning it in the uh, in the tweets that I've been making, check out my Twitter if you're not sure what I'm talking about, is this guy called... And again, I don't want anybody coming after this person saying he's, he's a scam artist. I don't want anyone saying anything cruel to this person. But I've got to be honest, there are a few pretty big red flags when I've been looking at this person. So... Carrot Corner, terrifying, terrifying imagery here, but you know, shout out to that. Um, this is this is a streamer that I've come across a few times. I've got, I've got to be honest, he's not like the kindest, uh, at least when he's on stream, I've seen him get pretty pretty cruel towards people, including one of my very close friends. So, you know, there, there's, I don't think there's too many personal biases, but you know, put that out there just in case. But what I, what I have had happen is a lot of people come to me after having coaching from him and their thought process has just been absolutely scuppered. And uh, he, he offers one-on-one coaching. And the one thing that I really, that really didn't sit well with me was, if I can find it, uh, FAQ. So please join me on this personal jihad. Tell me if there are other people you want to look at. Uh, does he crush high stakes? The answer is basically saying, 
Ah, well, we don't really want to say that. He doesn't play poker for a living. He just uh, he teaches it. Um, but go check out his... Uh, the answer is no, but it doesn't say no. And then it says, where can I see proof of his results? Uh, well, it's no relevant volume at the moment. But what I have seen is him on stream playing a bunch of poker. Like playing a bunch of poker. Like, I've seen him play 100 an hour. I've seen him play... Wait, maybe I've only seen him play 100 an hour. And coach a bunch of people as well. But I have definitely seen him play. And so, like, if you've played a bunch of hours on stream, well, you're going to have some kind of sample. You're going to have some kind of sample that you could show people. But uh, I got, I got to be, I got to be honest. There's because there's no sign of it. It just makes me think it's probably losing. Um, and again, I, I'm not saying that this means that he's he's terrible. At that. I'm not saying don't go buy his coaching. I'm just saying from the poker world, what we really need to do is understand the difference between a person that's hiding their results or a person that's transparent about their results. So if this person was like, hey, yo, um, you know, I've been playing for the last few years off and on. Here are the results. You know, I've been slightly losing on 100 now. Um, but here's what I'm really good at. I'm really good at communicating. I'm really good at breaking down theory or whatever it is. Um, then that would be, that would be fantastic. You know, if he, if it was really open and transparent about it, that to me would be fantastic. And there was one other thing that this line, this line to me, I don't know how well you guys can see it. I'll, I'll read it out for you. Instead, it said, I'll, I'll read from the top. P has become a master at distilling complex theoretical material into easily learnable theorems and concepts. P teaches the truth about what makes plays and strategies objectively right or wrong and shows you why. By studying with solvers for many years daily, P has become one of the strongest poker theoreticians in the world. One of the strongest poker theoreticians in the world. And he knows how to propel the progress of his students just as quickly. I'm going to be real here. I don't think that that is true. I don't think that this w is okay to say. I don't think there's any evidence to be able to say that. And if that's the kind of... like, ima Imagine somebody's new to poker. They don't, they don't know the difference between somebody that's crushing like, you know, 5k now on online or somebody that can't beat 100 now online. And they'll see something like this and be like, oh, okay, you know, he's one of the best. Whereas in actuality, you know, if, you know, if he can't be 100 now online or if he can't be 200 now, whatever it is, it puts him nowhere near the top, like miles, miles below the top. Sounds safe and effective to me, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, somebody says, I was never a student of his, but three years ago I emailed him and he gave me some kind words and advice to step away when I was dumping money to say what's months his poker therapy book. I felt really enlightened too. So that sound that sounds great. You know, that that sounds like something that'll be really beneficial. And if he's if he's, you know, offering those kind of things in his coaching, I perhaps it's a steal. And poker coaching in general is often very underpriced. So again, I'm not saying don't go get coaching from from people, but what I really want to create is transparency in the poker worlds. And I've just met so many people that have wasted their lives watching streamers or getting coaches or taking courses from people that just aren't any good at poker. And obviously being good at poker doesn't mean that you're, you know, a bad teacher, but it, it really caps your ability to be able to, to be able to understand the game at a certain amount of depth. Someone says, Charlie, I don't mean to be, be an ass, but either you tell people what account is used for a bankroll challenge, it kind of stupid as well. Uh, no, it will come out, but currently it's kind of nice people not knowing. And I, I post my results as often as I have them. Yeah. <laughs> Try to woke up today and chose lines. I got no, I got nothing against this guy. Um, let's let's look at somebody else. Who who else out there do you guys think might be a little bit dubious? Um, and uh, and are there any counter arguments that you guys have? Because it here's, here's the thing: the poker world has to self regulate. We have no re regulatory bodies. We have no like organizational bodies that are going to say, okay, here's what's here's what's true and here's what's not true. So when it comes to like scam artists and when it comes to um, you know people that might be misleading their audience, it's very very difficult for a new person in poker to be able to understand what they're looking at, understand what they're seeing, and understand why they're seeing it. And so 
to me, that is a real big issue. And there needs to be some kind of like top down organization, some tr transparency, and we need to put pressure on these people, whether it, I'm actually unsure about streamers, but definitely coaches, definitely coaches. And tell me what you think about streamers, but definitely coaches to be transparent about their results. Somebody said uh, Ben C B. <laughs> okay, here let let's let's get let's get let's get Ben C B as an example. All right, so I'm I'm gonna open a thing called Shark Scope, right? I'm gonna open Shark Scope, and what we're gonna write is Ben C B. Uh, what's his what's his screen name? Somebody tell me. Is it like seven seven eight nine or something? No. Somebody, uh, somebody get me Ben CB's, uh, fucking 789. The fuck? No way, is he hide his results? I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Ben CB. Poker stars, mate. Ben CB, 789. Huh. I swear I've seen his, his graph. There we go. What's going on? All right. Yeah, you guys are wrong. You guys are wrong. Chat, get out of here. Ben CB, 789. Uh, he's up in dollars. That's going to be like 2.1 million over 90 something thousand games. 93,000 games. Ben CB is a verified crusher. He is absolutely a crusher. He streams 25Ks uh, all the time on GG. He's an annihilator. He's proven it over a huge career. He's only got uh, good karma within the poker community. He's never been, that could just be a lucky run here. The, the old 93,000 game lucky run, eh? <laughs> uh, and yeah, and that's that's only poker stars. So like then, then he also has GG. He also has party poker and things like that. All right, so this is uh, this is a uh, you know a very good example of a person who's absolutely crushing on what he does specifically. Okay, everyone's a lot of people are spamming Nick Howard. Um, I don't know what Nick Howard. I don't know who. I I follow him on Twitter, but I don't actually know what he does. All right, so all right, let's get let's get Nick Howard. So the first thing, I don't know if he's a cash game player or a tournament player. Let's check out his Hendon. Uh, Hendon, 770,000 over not many tournaments. Okay, so he's a cash game player. He's a cash game player. Don't worry about it. Let's <laughs> recheck Robbie Lou. <laughs> Shout out to Pink Coconut Water, by the way. I guess you can't see it's pink. You have to trust me that it's not a scam. Um, so... Yeah, he runs Poker Detox. So let's check out Poker Detox. So I, I've i met a person that went through Poker Detox and he spoke so highly of it. And uh, this, this person is a really, really trustworthy person, really great person. He went from beating like 1K or 2K in L to beating 10K in L through Poker Detox. Um, so I would imagine that this is going to be a very legit thing. Oh no, I don't want this. EQ Poker does post his uh, his graph. In fact, that's what that's what drew me to him. Uh, what's the YouTube channel like? Dead. Rip. F. EQ came from Poker Detox and Landon Tice as well. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but if that is true, then yeah, again, that just speaks. In, in my opinion, from what from what I've heard, uh, Poker Detox seems to be super legit. I don't know about Nick Howard's results himself, um, but I, I do understand that they have a very good database of... Um, of how people play poker and how to exploit it in a, in a really high EV way, in a very game theory or game theory oriented way. Um, so what I what I would imagine is that uh, 
even if he isn't crushing the super high stakes, he's managing to add a lot of value to uh, poker players through uh, population tendencies and exploits like that. But my guess is that he's probably crushing. Um, I wouldn't know how to how to look that up though, honestly. Um, maybe it was on his site. Yuri Peleg, I have zero red flags about. When when I watch when I watch Yuri play and when I hear him speak about poker, I'm like the guy knows what he's talking about. You know the guy the guy has stuff to teach me. You know when 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 I when I hear Yuri speak about poker and he's talking about game theory, I'm like oh okay, I'm genuinely learning stuff right now. Um, so yeah, Yuri Yuri's not not um uh, not my uh, my red flag like this. Someone says, what about Phil Galfon charging twenty four ninety nine for a course? Phil Galfon can charge whatever the fuck he wants for his courses. Phil Galfon can charge 50k for a course for all I care about. Um, he is an absolute boss. He can he can literally fucking... He can kill 16 people cold blood in the street for all I care about. He, sa he saved up that much good karma within his life and that much trustworthy uh, energy around him, that much wisdom. I feel like he's got at least 16 murders within him before he gets back to break even. What I would say. Phil hires uh, character work for him. Phil hires a lot of people. There are going to be some good good people and some bad people. But shout, shout out to Phil Galfon to, for not murdering people, even though he could definitely get away with it and nobody would mind if he did. Um, I'm looking at the Nick Howard thing. Because Nick, Nick Howard, I really think, is just going to be a great example of, of somebody that is creating an amazing, um, some amazing content. But I don't know how to about maybe. I don't know how to look up. Oh, here we go. Let, let's check out Nick Howard again. I think Nick's probably just going to be a fucking amazing, amazing shot of this. Um, all right, I'm Nick, the founder of blah blah blah. Over the last fifteen years, I've coached over a thousand poker players, including some top players in the world. Run it once. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got to be honest, this all sounds like complete truth. <laughs> Kept you hanging on that last word there, but yeah, this seems just completely legit. Um, and yeah, from what from what I've heard about, about Poker Detox, I, I, I would recommend if there are any low bankroll or even high bankroll crushes out there that want to get even better, that are very, very good at the mathematical side of poker, this is probably a great fucking place to go. So shout, shout out to Nick Howard for creating that. All right, Black Rain 79. This is the guy that ate dog food? Yeah, guys, come on. Yeah, everyone eats a little bit of dog food now and again when they're down on money. The Pokeball gave him so much, so much, uh, so much heat for that. But who, who honestly... Look at yourself. Who hasn't eaten a little bit of dog food? Okay, and I've not eaten any dog food either, guys. It's pretty. It's pretty wild that he did that. I mean, I, I I know that it's very easy to get food as a person that's homeless living on the street. They can just you know, there's food is like the last of their issues. Um, but yes, yeah, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not planning to I'm not planning on judging anyone. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, I've not eaten dog food. Obviously, none of us have eaten dog food, guys. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, so who else should we look at? Nick Howard was a good one. Nick Howard's brother, I'm very curious about. Um, and there was one guy on Twitter that I wanted to look into as well. My, my day two tournament's about to start in four minutes, by the way. All right. Let's, uh, let's look out for someone Howard. Very curious, by the way. Oh, we've actually got a reply. We'll just, uh, we'll just look at this now. Breaking news. I genuinely believe my claim is true. This is him being one of the, the best poker theoreticians in the world. I genuinely believe my claim is true. There's no objective way to measure how well someone understands the theoretical workings of the game. But if you speak, speak to my experience community, of course, or course buyers, I'll confidently bet that almost all of them would say I'm among the best. I've played under 50k hands since I started streaming in 200 Zoom. The SD is upwards of 90 to 100. Guys, what's SD? Standard deviation. 
What's SD? Somebody tell me what SD is. Carrot corner, you're very well, I'm not calling, I've said many times you're not, you're not a scammer, don't worry my friend, but if you want to jump on a Zoom call right now, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, be ha I'd happily uh, talk to you about it. I played, alright, let's just look at this fucking graph, I don't know what SD means. Standard deviation, yeah, okay. Jesus, what am I looking at right now? Okay, 70%, oh, okay, so he's genuinely looking at the normal distribution of his graph. What the fuck is this? Maybe, dude, if you want to jump on a Zoom call and help explain this to me, I mean, that would be fucking fantastic. <laughs> what am I looking at right now? Uh, I'll make I'll make a Zoom call, and if you want to uh, message me on uh, Twitch, that sounds fine. No, I'm not calling you scammer, but uh, it's obviously uh, a bit of a, a bit of a strong uh, title in the thing. But no, I, I've I, I, I've openly said so. Just so you know, I think that the claim that you're one of the world's strongest theoreticians in the world is absolutely bonkers and bananas. I think that's a, an insane claim, and I've also had a bunch of people come from your coaching saying, you know, that it wasn't so good. But I've also heard people say very good things about your coaching, and I've heard people say very good things about your character. So even though you've actually been kind of unkind to one of my very close friends in the past, uh, you know, I, I'm not one to judge somebody on their their worst actions in the world. Uh, but if you'd like to jump on a Zoom call, that'd be fucking fantastic. I think we'd be able to clear some stuff up and uh, just have a little conversation, maybe back up these claims. Yeah, it's, I, 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 I gotta be honest, dude. The, the, the claim that you're one of the strongest poker theoreticians in the world is is absolutely in, insane to me. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of poker theoreticians in the world. If if we're using that as somebody that just understands, get girlfriend off the Harry Potter right now. Yeah, no, no worries, no worries. Uh, so yeah, just just to just to kind of back up what I'm saying there. To understand poker theory on a deep level, you have to be able to, you know, you have to be able to beat it. Like if you if you understand poker theory, you can beat you can beat poker. It's not like you understand something like heuristically or conceptually, but then it's not not applicable. If if you can't apply it, then then there's you know it's very very unlikely you're going to be any good at poker. Um, and uh, very good at under understanding the theory. So I'm also playing a day two tournament on the side right now, and I'm not allowed to show it to you guys because I don't want to. I don't want to expose my uh, my name. All right, we've opened eights under the gun though, and the big blind's going all in, and we're reshoving. And we've got a three way all in. <laughs> Sorry, you guys can't see this. Against Jax, but the big side pot with for Ace Queen, King Five Five. Ace on the turn, not looking good. Need an eight or a lose first one. All right, never mind. All right, cool. So there was another person I wanted to look into as well, and we can we can do that uh, maybe after I negotiate with Carrot to see if he wants to come on the stream. And in the chat, are there other people that you would like me to look into? Because again, I I'm really undecided on a lot of these topics. I don't I don't I don't know. All right, here's here's here's, here's one to me. Here's one to me. Should Spraggy, Lex Veldhaus, uh, easy with aces? Seeing as here's here's the argument for. I don't know what what I believe into what what I believe. Here's the argument for. Thousands, tens of thousands of people are watching their streams and seeing them play the high stakes and potentially wanting to copy how they play, emulate their game and, you know, take inspiration from them. Is it unfair for Spraggy, Lex and Easy With Aces to hide their results? You know, let's say, let's say they're down like 300k. Is it unfair to hide their results and kind of give off the aura that they're winning overall uh, when thousands of people are going to look at that and think, "Oh, this guy's this guy's winning. I'm going to learn from him. I'm going to watch their theory series. I'm going to I'm going to you know attend the the coaching things that they do." 
or should there not be a social pressure on these people to hide their to, to show their results because you know they're streaming and it might add extra pressure or things like that pretty sure most of their viewers know they lose i don't know if they lose My, i was under the impression that um someone like spraggy would be up but uh i i, I just don't know Actually, it probably isn't. And never mind. Oh my god, we flopped top bear, boys. Min betting on Ace Deuce Deuce Rainbow taking it down. Nice. What do I think about Jonathan Lil? Alright, I gotta be honest. With Jonathan, I've got a bias because I really fucking like the guy. Um, so looking into John Little would be difficult uh, for me, but. I, I'm very happy to do that. Did I do Nick Howard Detox? Yeah, I, th I think the ov overwhelming consensus is that Poker Detox is a fantastic um, uh, course. And if you if you want to go into the game theory side of things. Somebody says, Ben CB hides his scope and I don't hear anyone go after him about it. We lit literally just looked at Ben CB's plus $2 million uh, shot scope. Uh, the Nardo is good to see, by the way, brother. The Nardo's says there is an issue with content creators as their real income is via streaming and sponsorship. Yeah. Charlie, are there any non-sponsored tournament crushes on Twitch? I haven't seen one. Uh, what about me? What are you, what are you trying to say? Wait, is Ben CB sponsored? I don't think Ben CB sponsored either, right? Uh, I think Ape Styles also just got to the end of his sponsorship. BBZ Jordan Drummond has, uh, all right, Carrot, you're very welcome on. And again, sorry, sorry you had a moment where people thought I was calling you a scammer. I can see how they would think that because I had your, your side up amongst other sites. Uh, but I definitely wasn't calling you a scammer. Look at Dylan Wiseman. All right, let's, can, all right, let's, let's, let's make this. We've got the guy that was annoying to me on Twitter. We've got Dylan Wiseman. Don't know who that is, but that name's come up a few times. We've got Nick Howard's brother. Um... Who else we got? Who else we got? I right, would check calling. And we're actually going to go for a shove here on the river. CG, I'm pretty sure he's good at poker. I've seen him play 500 soon. Dylan Wiseman. All right, a lot of people are saying Dylan Wiseman. I have absolutely zero clue. Got the bluff through on the river. Very nice. I have absolutely zero clue who Dylan Wiseman is. So let's let's go check this person out together. Okay, so if I press F5. All right, Dylan Wiseman, hand and mob. Still absolutely no idea who he is. 1.4 million with the biggest cash of that. Uh, I'm gonna bet four into six over that. Got the C bet through, very nice. So he's playing very recently as of two days ago. Started playing 2016 and has had not many tournaments that he's cashed in. Don't know how many he's played, but not many he's cashed in, so probably hasn't played too many. Played up to 25 and 50k, so holy shit. Okay, so this, this is actually a really bad uh, hand of mob. It's probably, he's probably losing overall if he's playing 25 and 50k's, just fucking randomly. All right, but I'm not a man to judge somebody based on their hand of mob. Let's find out who this man is. All right. Upswing Poker, PLO. So instantly I would think that Upswing Poker isn't gonna hire somebody that's bad at poker. That would, that would be like my, my first inst instinct on these things. Uh, if somebody wants to tell me I'm wrong, sure. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, what, what's, what's the argument for people wanting to look into him? Poker coaching. It's a difficult way. He's got to get a better website in my opinion, but that's uh, definitely no reason to call somebody anything bad. 
Somebody says Dylan is not very strong in PLO. Career transition. So he's not really. Okay, so it's PLO expertise. Bout. Poker life. In the past 18 months, you shouldn't have something like this because you have to update it every fucking month. Um, oh, we've got Ace King Suit in the big line, by the way. Dylan has grinded from 2 4 to 10 20 online and has played the largest live PLO cash games in Las Vegas. Uh, you don't know if that's true. I think it'll be some private games, but he, yeah, he means public ones. Recent notable win WSOP bracelet, hybrid play style compared to the most recent, and blah 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 blah. Uh, I mean, playing up to 10 20 online probably indicates pretty good. Um, yeah, what are what, I don't see any red flags. What are, what are you guys what are you guys thinking? I don't see I don't see any red flags at all. Yeah, what's 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 Yuri's website? Yuri Peleg. Some something tells me Yuri Peleg's website is going to be not very good at uh yeah. <laughs> He's got his graph there. It's going to be not very good at, at marketing, but just very trustworthy in general. Fucking ace king in the small blind as well. Let's fucking go. Have I hit the money? I don't know if I'm in the money. I'm so all right. I'm gonna get myself back on full screen for a second because I don't want you guys to see my screen in. It was not gonna come. Prize pool. <coughs> yeah, I'm in the money. Nice. All right, good to know. Anyway, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. So we're looking at F5. Uh, about us. Yeah, this guy's just so fucking legit. I just, I just feel it from him. You know, you ever get, you just get that fucking feeling from someone that is just like super fucking trustworthy. Bot. I want to see his, uh, his results. Not because I think they'll be bad, just because I'm curious. <clears throat> yeah, see, see, th this is great. Even so, our student pool has a win rate of three BB per hundred, uh, and there are only coaching higher stakes. Like that, that just there, that that that's enough for me to say, okay, this this guy cares about putting in the data, and uh, yeah, genuinely, genuinely showing how good he is at poker before before teaching people. I don't know how to check his results, but whatever. What about Yolan Cohen? He also seems very good. Um, don't know who that is. Joel Demand was told you were alive. Oh yeah, Joel Demand, you wanna have, come and have a conversation? Let's uh, yeah, let's have you on first, and then we can have uh, Kara Corner on, Mr. Mr. P. Clark. Uh, I can message you on Twitter. Guys, let's have a heated poker debate on Twitter. Um, fuck, what's your name? Sorry, dude, what's your name? <laughs> you, uh, you remind me your name. One second, guys. Having a few technical difficulties where Charlie's brain is barely fucking working. Joel Deman. Joel Deman. Joel Deman. Joel Deman. Oh, I've got to open that. I've got to type in there. There we go. We found you. All right. I'm going to DM you on Twitter the Zoom link, if that's all right with you, my friends. And we will have your debut on the Epiphany Poker Debate stream live. I love this part of, uh, of streaming. Uh, sorry, Caracorna, I've actually just got another person on. I will give you the link anyway. Um, Caracorna, how do I find you? Okay, 
I will, if you if you whisper me on Twitter, I'll be able to find you, and then I will be able to uh, give you the link. But ladies and gentlemen, making his epiphany poker debate debut, we have the one, we have the only, uh, Jared. Welcome, Jared. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, that is beautiful. You have no idea. I've I've had so many uh, debate streams with people with shitty microphones. It is a holy oh, thing yeah. to behold to hear a fucking streamer on a good microphone. So thank you for that. Oh yeah, no problem, man. Uh, I guess I'm not gonna be able to see you. Huh? Can you no, see me? Though? Yeah, it's gonna be a one-way mirror kind of situation. I haven't, I haven't figured out the tech behind this yet. Oh, that's okay. Okay, yeah, you can see me though. I'm also playing Usually. day two on the side, so apologies if my brain goes quiet for a bit. You're good. It's trippy because I muted your your stream and then I'm still hearing your voice. So <laughs> I'm calibrating a little. All right. So yeah, we so we, we had a we had a disagreement on uh, Twitter and I fucking hate getting in long form disagreements on Twitter because it's the fucking worst. Yeah, we, just talk, we all do talk around each other. Um, so do you want to kind of just lay out what the disagreements were and then uh, give your side of it and then we can uh, have a little fisty cuffs or whatever we fucking feel like doing? Sure. I mean, I think I'd like to start with like where we're almost certainly uh we we certainly agree which would be that uh people should not be misleading people into thinking they have experience or expertise or you know credibility in a certain pool that they don't have um and like i agree with the sentiment that like it's uh yeah like you shouldn't be misleading people i use the term bad faith to explain what and, and what I meant by that was I think it's just like presuming bad intentions without evidence of bad intentions is really the crux of my argument like I think there's a lot of reasons people display their graphs at varying levels of transparency and not even speaking about myself uh, but just thinking that like yeah until like I have evidence of wrongdoing someone not displaying the results i don't think immediately equates to like you are you are scamming nor do i think there is some sort of burden of responsibility for people to do something other than just not lie you know like you just you just shouldn't lie but other than that i don't i don't, I don't see what the you you know you're a business person like behave behave how you wish and you you will or won't get clients or students as a result of however you behave um that would be that's that's how I feel. <laughs> sure, yeah, no, I, I I appreciate it. Um, the one thing I really don't appreciate, I, I I and I don't I don't get the the sense that you're saying in in a in a kind of like nefarious way, but to to describe somebody's argument as bad faith, um, yeah. indicates that you think that I'm coming from a bad place. It doesn't it doesn't indicate that you think no. I'm misinterpreting other people's intentions. It's saying, hey, Charlie, I think that you're intentionally misleading people or lying or deceiving. Um, and your yeah. argument is coming from that place. And, uh, you know, that is yeah. definitely I, the I, case. I definitely don't mean it in that way. Okay. Um, that, that, that is literally what it means, just to be clear. Yeah. So I, I uh, it's possible I'm just like, what I think I want to hear the argument bad faith is just like, I when I say bad intentions, I guess I done with bad intentions is how I think about it. And I, I don't think bad intentions in the sense of like, and the, yeah, the way I meant it this time, which maybe this is just the wrong expression for this was literally just like, I just think you're unnecessarily presuming that people you're jumping to the conclusion that people have bad intentions. Yeah, and, no, and I, 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 I hear you. I hear you. Um, so I just want I just wanted to clear that out the, the 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 accusation of bad faith is I I think something that will cause a lot of division in conversations where there could be two people collaborating to come to a mutual truth because uh, in, instantly when somebody says hey Charlie you're being bad faith I feel like a defense in me and I'm like well that's that's obviously not true this is a really tilting thing to to hear somebody that I've never met say about me um, so so that that aside anyway that's just a small uh, small small quibble. Um, of no, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't, I mean, yeah, I, I don't mean to, the, yeah, the way, yeah, I don't mean to, you're right, I should be more careful with that term in the future. Cool. All right. So then the, the second part of it is, we, okay, so we both agree that people shouldn't intentionally deceive. And so the, the real crux of my argument is, what about deception by omission? 
So, you know, I'm, you know, you're technically, if you have a wife, you're technically not lying to her if you don't tell her that you cheated on her, yeah. but you're still deceiving her and you're still betraying her by doing it and not telling her. And every time you yeah. decide not to tell her, that is a deception. So when a poker player is giving off the impression that they might be an absolute crusher, when they're giving yeah. off the impression that they're beating certain stakes and they're using that image to then manufacture a following or coach it or students or you know people buying their courses, that to me is a lie by omission. And that's yeah. something that we need to strongly look at as a community and not say like there needs to be a fucking law, but we yeah. can at least co-create a space that's going to say you're incentivized now to be transparent instead of incentivized to not be transparent and to do that what we have to do is have these conversations and say okay let's see let's see the receipts let's see the proof let's see the data that you have to yeah. to you know sell whatever course or make whatever claim you want to be making yeah i mean i i think there's like some nuance here to what i will agree and disagree with in that claim i mean i think there's like of course i i think lies of any sort are or something that are not good and something people should not be doing. So lies of omission being included in this. Um, if you're if you're putting off the the sense like there's difference if you know you're losing at a stake and you're just omitting that data because you know it would damage your reputation. Yeah, like is that's not something I'm for. What's what's difficult is from the outside knowing when that's the case and and knowing when. Okay, so let, let me let me use my example my myself as an example for this. Um, so like I post my, for a while I was just streaming, right? I was just streaming myself on Twitter, I uh, sorry, on Twitch. And I was just posting my graphs in my discord. And for some people that like, that wasn't satisfactory for them, to them for some reason. And the, the fact was I was just put in a position of deciding, okay, like how, how much and it felt uncomfortable, right? Like, I just don't feel like I, it doesn't feel good to have to feel like I have to like answer to every question and every standard of how I'm going to prove my win rate to you. Like I was as transparent as I initially thought would be fine. And it wasn't satisfactory to some people. So like, I just decided that like, look, I, to be consistent with myself and like what I feel comfortable doing, I'm, I'm being X level of transparent. I'm posting my, my graphs in my discord. And uh, if that's not good enough for you, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and so, like, what's, what's difficult is from the outside, you get a... I'm just, I'm just hesitant to be throwing around accusations about why people are not presenting their data. Can, can I it's, ask you in your personal example? Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, when, when I, I looked into... Because, you know, the first time I saw you was today. And when I looked into mm -hmm. your, your content, there, there wasn't any... There weren't any graphs on your anything, yeah. um, and they're in my they're, they're in my Discord. They're my they're uh, my graphs. Are there dif um, what what sample is the graphs on your Discord? Uh, probably hundred k hands or so. Is it um, including all of your lifetime results, or is it just select things? Or? Uh, it was probably from the moment of time that I started streaming. Okay. Um, yeah. Why why not? So include... like it was just an unedited selection from the moment I started streaming to. Uh, I'm no longer playing cash, so. So I'm so for for complete transparency, and I I'm not I really am not accusing you of anything here because yeah. I I really don't know anything about this. But some somebody reached out to me after you and I had the conversation on Twitter and showed me a clip yeah. of you saying that you were winning something like nine BB per hundred on uh, two K and L or five K and on on uh, two different sites, Ignition and ACR. And then he also showed me the results that you'd had in the last. Uh, year or two and it was losing something like 40k um, yeah uh, it was 40k hands I'm, I've, I've seen this yeah, I'm familiar with this with so this data set. Yeah. does what's going what's going on there that, uh, so yeah so I mean some yeah so this and I'll, I'll clarify this um, first I do want to flag this though is this is this is the kind of thing, though, that I am talking about, where it's like, it's just like, it's just an uncomfortable level. Like, I've answered to this many times, and look, I try to clear this up, and it just, it just always comes back up. So, there, this is one of those topics where I've just hit a point where I'm just like, look, I'm just, I'm just not, I'm just not. I, 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 I really relate right. to that feeling. Again, yeah. I, so I don't, like, I don't have a position on this, but I really relate to the feeling of having to answer all the fucking questions that everyone in chat says. 
Um, yeah. So do you want to maybe just answer it once and then? Yeah, you know, I know. I'm happy. I'm happy to dive into this. So, first off, some background on those 40k hands. Those 40k hands are over a sample of not the last few years, but from if I remember correctly, I can't remember the site. I don't. I can't remember the name of the site they're pulled from, but some hand scraper site. And they're over the la- they're over the last six years, six six so so years, and many of them being in like the ACR Blitz pool, which is where I when I transitioned originally playing online. Um, where I played initially and yeah I mean if you look you can look at the breakdown of those hands like the bulk of them come from one two blitz like five five or six years ago which I when speaking to people many times I've said yeah when I transitioned playing online I was dog shit I was terrible um, and so yeah it's this yes yeah, this is this sampling so you can see that a lot of them will be from um, one two like blitz or whatever uh uh it's from a mixture between nl10 and nl2000 i think i've i don't think i've ever played nl5000 so i'd uh, be surprised it says nl5000 214 hands winnings minus 430 nl2000 uh 2k hands maybe yeah some, something yeah, like, like, so I, like i can yeah, i can yeah. send i can send you the image and you can just yeah uh, send me the image that'd be that'd be useful um so do you have proof of the claims that you're making about beating these things at uh, 9 BB per 100? Yeah, so I mean, like, again, some context for that. So, like, when I answered that, somebody asked me, like, what is your, what is your, and at the time, like, my current win rate on Iggy 2K was, was 9 BB per 100 at that, at that time. Over what? And then over it, what right now it's, like, 7 or something. Oh, okay. Know, do like, you, that, like, so that se- 7, 9 is the same, same fun thing. It's just absolutely annihilating. Do, do you have evidence for that? What's that? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, so this is anyone who knows me well knows this follow up fact is true, although as unfortunate as it sounds, I, my, this computer behind me is brand new because my computer broke and I lost lots of data. So where I stand right now is I have the graphs that are in my Discord, which will total up, which are completely continuous. Mm-hmm. And they are 100K hands at 2K now, and you can add them all up and they will add up to. It's just month by month of my streaming. Um, but, so, no, because I lost my data in building my new computer. I, I've also but, lost a shit ton of hands and data and stuff like that. I remember when I lost my laptop, I had like 2 million hands and I was so fucking tilted. So, I understand the struggle. Um, but what, what, what do you have to show of those 100k hands? Yeah, like I said, I have all of the, I have over 100k hands in my Discord channel of continuous they're just continuous graphs I posted month after month. And cool. the people who are like in my community and followed me, yeah. like who were actually with me, like would every month on the same day I'd post my graph. Cool. And uh, yeah. maybe just to fucking clear your name, because I'm probably going to do go through people kind of one at a time and just... Uh, oh, yeah, I'm not, to be clear, I have zero interest in clearing my name. I just, I don't, Why? I don't really care. <laughs> I, 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 it, so, it sounds like a pun, man. Because I mean, for for Ben CB, for instance, it took us just twenty seconds, and now everyone that had doubts in the chat is like, "Oh, okay, he's up two million on Shark Scope just on Poker Stars." You know, yeah. that, that's it's it seems it seems like a pun not to clear your name. Uh, so we could just point to this yeah. every single time and say, "Okay, well, if you are absolutely crushing, then here's, here's the proof." Yeah. I mean, and, so like, I, I can, can even I can make like a fucking... go through and grab my graphs. Yeah, not now. You don't have to now, but just would you feel comfortable maybe sending it to me afterwards? Yeah, like I'm. Yeah, like I said, I'm. I'm more than comfortable. What What is? And here's the thing. Like for me, it's not a matter of what's a punt or not. Like it's just uh, my Discord is uh, Jalderman's Party Place is actually the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the link is on my Twitter. <laughs> it sounds like a swingers club. You can just go. To, you can just go to my Twitch, and the, the Discord link is there. <laughs> Um, I mean, like for me, just like what is deeply uncomfortable is just like, is, is this sense that like, look, as long as I'm not lying to you, my responsibility to you, in my opinion, ends there. (laughs) Like I, I don't have to prove anything to you and it's not a matter. I agree with you. Like I said, I'll agree with you on all the points, but like, and I have the, you know, the graphs there to be posted that are posted. So like, I, I know I can validate the win rate that I've mentioned, Yeah. but it's just the, like so from some people like once they look at the graphs they're like their doctor i'm like okay I yeah just, I, 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 I have nothing for you here right saying, like i understand what you're saying i i think the barrier to faking graphs is pretty high though 
you know yeah i i, I don't i don't know i've never like i feel like that that that, that requires a lot of like intentional deception in which case you know we can be aware of that as a poker world but uh, yeah. the the chance of that happening is a lot lower than somebody just not uh, not explaining or not showing their results. Was um, oh, this Jarrett Man from YouTube? No, I'm not. So you can I. Oh, Jarrett Man! Jarrett Man's a fucking crusher, man. Fucking love Jarrett Man. Yeah, but um, anyway, I mean, all this to say though, like, what what I am sympathetic to because of this is the fact that like, like some people just don't like answering to a mob of people demanding their data, right? And like, if that makes them uncomfortable and they don't want to share their data as a result. I 100% understand because when I got on Twitch, I didn't think I would be dealing with that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, and, and yeah, I, I, I get you. There, there is a level of responsibility that comes with putting yourself in the public eye where you have to have a level of transparency about whatever domain you're in. I, I just yeah. think the level of responsibility is for you to be honest. Like, no, it, no because, lying, because you've, or, you've already said that you don't like lying by omission. And so, like, be, yeah, being 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 honest same, isn't this. Same thing in my mind. But it's not it's not a binary thing. It's not either you are or you're not. Because somebody might think that they're not sharing their their graphs for X reason, but it's actually X plus Y plus Z, uh, to use your American term Z. Yeah. Uh, and I think yeah, as a the guy who appreciate the translation. Yeah, yeah I've got an American word. I've got to speak trash sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so what what I what I think would be great for the poker community is to create an environment where we're not we're not forcing anybody to share to share their data to share their graphs or results or, or yeah. you know their argument of why they can crush but to create an environment where new poker players can come in and look around at maybe some like centralized site that says okay here's this person here are their results and here's here's what they're offering because at the moment it's such a it's such a fucking lottery when a new person comes into poker maybe they find poker through you maybe they find it through lex maybe they find it through whoever and then they, they find a coach that seems seems smart, but sometimes they're just going to be a terrible coach with yeah, yeah, terrible, uh, you know, uh, teaching skills and terrible poker skills. And yeah. we currently don't have a system uh, in place as a, as a community that will help those people. Uh, so what yeah, I'm saying... I, mean, I, I definitely think that there's like a... There's a, there's a problem here... Like, I, this, is, this is what's weird. It's like, I sympathize with your analysis of the situation entirely. And I think there's a lot of bad coaches out there. And I think there's a lot of... I, I don't... I'm not... I haven't noticed a lot of, like... Uh, thanks, Cipri. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not aware of, like... I'm not, like, viscerally aware of a, a bunch of fraudulent coaching like claims as far as win rates go I'm, I'm definitely familiar with like coaches who i think are not great coaches and who are like have no business coaching anybody but i mean some of those people in my opinion are, are decent winners too so like yeah like, and it, it's it's definitely it's definitely not like a you know just because somebody's great at poker doesn't mean they're going to be any good at coaching like, i really believe yeah. that a lot of the best players in the world suck at teaching poker and there's a true yeah, yeah. art to understanding poker and helping people be you know you could find somebody that's only beating 50 and l but it's better at t teaching two and L than uh, than Linus, you know. But yeah, yeah, but what, yeah. but what I think is important is we just incentivize good information and transparency as a community because there are coaches out yeah. there that give off the impression that they are some of the best in the world, but actually they just can't be like ten and L online. I guess I'm just equally concerned with incentivizing, um, like reputation destroying and like and like coming after people and like and, and incentivizing just believing the worst in people <clears throat> when we don't need to and like i said like if someone can if someone if i'm that's why like i for me it's just like you we should the the incentive should be like you should take your choices in a coach ser very seriously you should be careful with them i offer like intro sessions to people so we can get like a, a vibe you know and like you can ask me anything you want and if you it's free, and if you have no interest in my coaching after that, then you have, then that's that's fine. And like I think, what's important is that like yeah, people people need to take their decisions seriously. And of course, once someone is outed as having lied, that's one thing, right? Like once someone has outed has been outed as like yeah, you you are lying, and like and like should the poker community like keep promoting them as a coach and you know whatever? No. But I think really then, I think the response even then I don't think would be in like in any form of like vitriol of literature. Just like, it's just like, look, just like they, they lied and 
Yeah, we move, move on. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 hear, I hear what you're saying. I don't hear any concise argument of why we wouldn't want to incentivize transparency. I, it was, That wasn't super logically concise, in my opinion. Yeah, so I guess my only argument against that would be just, I think, I, I, I don't have the primacy on transparency that you do. I, I, I just, I think that people have different incentives. It's, it's People have individual autonomy, and you can do what you want. And if you don't want to share, if you don't want to share anything, if you don't want to share any results, and... I, then that's on you and like you're just you're you know you're in the you're in the free market and that might mean you get fewer you know you, you might get less coaches coaching right but, but at the moment we don't have a distinction in the poker community about who's being transparent and who's not so like it took it takes me a long time and i'm i'm obviously like fucking balls deep bones deep in the in the poker community i it takes me a long time to look through your website and see if you're and your discord or whatever and see if you're being transparent and honest about or at least let's say transparent yeah, but you're about saying transparency but there are no claims to win rates on my on my website right, right. So like, but so but that that took that took me a long time to figure out and what i'm saying for a for a less experienced poker player they'll be able they'll go to your website and they won't have they won't they won't be thinking about whether you're being transparent or not they'll be like oh this guy says he's great he seems great he seems like he knows what he's talking about and things like that but if we if they might also get the exact same vibe from somebody else who who can only be like two and L, but yeah. you know happens to have a bankroll to just throw on like fucking two K and just fucking play whatever, and yeah, uh, yeah you're right. And in, yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, my in my opinion, good. again, I'm not I'm not saying we should force any transparency, but I'm saying we should we should at least incentivize it and ask questions where questions seem to be worth asking because you know if so, you know if somebody does I, I really don't want to use any names because I don't want to accuse anyone, but if somebody X person is selling a course for like a thousand dollars and a bunch of people are buying it and they haven't got any proof that they've ever won po a, a poker in in their lifetime or they barely wanted it in my opinion as a community we, we have some level of responsibility because we have no regulatory body to stand up and say okay this person is probably not going to be able to teach you how to beat fucking 100 200 500 now yeah i just don't know if the if that correlates even necessarily because like i could see someone i can imagine someone like doing like if you're creating a course I can imagine you like doing a lot of research and preparation for that course and like the, the data you put out might be technically true, you know, like I was talking to Jane and I did a podcast with Jane and and just talking to him about the difference between what it looks like uh, to like uh, be a coach versus create a course. And like how much time you have to like research a course, like you can put out a, a course content that's just like way higher in quality than your coaching content because like at each topic point you can like get really studied up on it and like make sure it's really thorough. Now I've never created a course, but like someone who really like if you if you have a video in your course like how to play button versus big blind, and before you made that video you did like a shit ton of preparation and study, uh, then the video is probably better than anything I might teach you in a coaching session. <laughs> like, but that's but that's just not no. true. That's just not true because if somebody can't be two and L, no matter no matter how much they study and learn about big blind versus button, they're just not going to be able to understand the concepts that are necessary to teach it. You know, they might yeah, be able, they might I mean, be able to regurgitate a textbook, but that doesn't mean they they they're actually any good at teaching it. That doesn't mean they actually. Yeah, understand I, I, it. I think there's just like some nuance. Like there's there's a there's a middle point between the two things we're laying out, right? Which is like you know that someone trying to teach someone with absolutely no knowledge, and then someone with like enough knowledge, but like maybe before this video they couldn't. You know they weren't winning, but in preparation for the video, like n if they use this newfound knowledge, then researching button versus big blind, they do okay. But like, what, what, I'm just curious though, like, what do you make of the fact that like, like, so my, my personal coach is, um, Kevin Rabichow. So that's the guy who I go to for coaching. Okay. I don't know who uh, that is, but you don't know who that is. That's, that's crazy. Um, anyway, sorry. He's just, uh, he's a great player, but my, that's who I go to for coaching. My, take this point when I was playing six max cash and he was, and I was receiving coaching from him. It, I think it would have been fair to say that I was a better six max cash player than he was, mm -hmm. right? But I still went to him for coaching mm -hmm. because I, I believe were he to apply himself to six max cash, he'd probably be better than I am. Okay. Right. But the, I don't think your skill level. There's this like direct correlation between your skill level and your coaching ability in, no. in the sense that like no, I, dude, I just, dude, just, obvi obviously there's a correlation. Okay, I, sorry, like. There's not a causation. I don't think you could be a bad... Oh, sorry. Well, 
But yeah, I mean, like, there's likely a correlation. <laughs> like, yeah, probably, like, probably a correlation that the, the Linus is going to be better than getting. fucking Fred from uh, from wherever. Yeah, Fred's but, so let me let me say let me say this. Like, I I I think it's very unlikely you can be a bad player and a, and a good coach. But I I think it's very plausible. I don't I don't know this person off the top of my head. Like, I can't think of anybody. <clears> but I'm just I can conceive of somebody whose like results are fairly uninteresting. But who's a good coach? Like who? Yeah. Who, who so 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 again, coach? before before we because we're going to agree on all of these these correlative things. Yeah. It, it's it's pretty beside the point, in my opinion. <clears throat> the yeah. more information public, the better. And obviously, if the person decides not to share it, that's fine. But yeah. it, it it's as simple as this. If if you have more information, then you know it's good to share it, and then people have more information whether or not they want to buy your product. And yeah. if we don't have that kind of social pressure, then people are going to be incentivized to share the good stuff about them but not share the stuff that perhaps isn't so good. Yeah, I guess I just would direct that pressure towards honesty and less towards transparency. Like, I, I, like, I think we should have good, like, as a community, I, I've spoken with, you know, people about this before. I think there's a lot of moral concerns in the poker community that I think we should, you know, be better at taking more seriously. Um, all right, so fair, I, fair I, enough. Like, it, it, it does feel like we're probably going to go around in circles a couple more times. Uh, I, okay, I've, yeah, I've sure. got Peter Clark coming on uh, yeah, now. Yeah, I love Pete, so enjoy Cool. And uh, thank, thank you for coming on. Please do send me those graphs and then I'll, I'll fucking yeah, say it for anybody. And uh, let's, let's get Pete on. Good to meet you, brother. Yep. Beautiful. Jared Oldman, ladies and gentlemen, making his Epiphany Poker de debate debut. And now we have Mr. Peter Clark making his Epiphany Poker debate debut. Mr. Peter Clark, how are you doing? I am good, man. How, how are you? Oh my God, that's a nice microphone. I should... It I is. should it's I absolutely... Should... I should get streamers on more often. This is, this, is, this is nice. It's so nice, isn't it, when you speak to an actual person that makes content and it doesn't sound like they're in a fucking warehouse where <laughs> yeah. TVs blaring. Yeah. yeah, and they haven't muted your stream yet or whatever. Yeah, okay. So um, so I, I, I'm going to be... I'll give, I'll give you an introduction and I'm going to be as unbiased as possible about this. Uh, I, I personally really like you. Uh, I've seen some of your streams. You seem like a really good person. It seems like you really love your cat. And to me, that's like a already huge bonus. Um, I've heard good things about your coaching. I've heard bad things about your coaching. I've heard good things about your poker. I've heard bad things about your poker. You've heard the same thing about me, 100%. So that, that to me doesn't mean anything. Uh, I do have some personal uh, issues with ways that you've handled yourself in the past, especially towards one of my good friends. Um, I think you've been uh, you know, a little bit unkind when speaking about her and me. Um, Shall we start with that then? Because I'd like to clear this up. Can I sure. just tell you something that you may not be aware of first? Yeah. Um, so in our DMs there, if you scroll up a little bit from where you gave me the link today, you'll see a lengthy message that I wrote to you on the 11th of February 2021, Holy shit. to which I received no reply. I didn't see it. No. Um, so, oh, you don't see it. That's weird. No, no, I see sorry. it. I just hadn't. Oh, you do see it. I okay, okay. So maybe it, you yeah. missed it or something, but I didn't hear back from you. So this was actually me trying to clarify this whole weird personal beef stuff. I believe what happened was there were people in my Discord who were saying some unkind things about you and your community. People would join and there'd be like a notification for like blah, blah, blah has joined the Discord, right? And, mm -hmm. and then someone would come on and say, do you agree to denounce Charlie Carroll and all of his evil methods or something like <laughs> slandery thing like that? Yeah. And that happened for a while. And I have to admit, I did find it a bit funny and I kind of tolerated it and I should have nipped it in the bud a bit sooner. But anyway, I'll just read this message if you don't mind, just so the, so the community can hear. I'll, I'll read it out my, if my that's right. To, oh yeah, you can read it uh, out. It'll yeah, be yeah, less, cool. less weird if I do it. <laughs> okay, cool. No worries. Is there, just, just wanted to clarify that I don't hate you, not at all. There was a phase where my discord group was kind of going too far with jokes about you it was getting a, a bit unprofessional and i tried to nip it in the bud sorry that it's come across in that way we have opposite approaches to the game for sure and i do have a channel called fuck non gt on my discords uh people were also making jokes about you on there and i'll be honest i and say i didn't discourage discourage them it's uh it cuts off the cuts message off the there, message i didn't realize so yeah so yeah, so, yeah i think a Somewhere along the lines, things have gotten a bit misconstrued. I was kind of taken aback when I was informed that you referred to me as the guy that hates you. Haha, <laughs> that's certainly not the case. P.S. You're right. The queen eight suited is pure river jam. I was kind of nervous due to the weird dynamic that seems to be created. I generally don't. I remember that hand. I, I actually like, thought I was pressing the all-in button. I remember. I, I remember. Press the check button. Yeah, yeah I remember. <laughs> anyway, so I sent you this because I'm aware that there was a little bit of like 
distasteful stuff about you on our Discord. I don't know what you mean when you say that I was personally mean to your friend. Like, I don't remember ever. Are you talking, can I, can I name the person? Yeah, it's that Helena. Talking about? Are you talking about Helena? Yeah. Right. So I know that I've had friends that knew her in real life and stuff. You obviously know her in real life. I've never met her in real life. I don't even know her. I played against her in like 100 Zoom Pool or something when I streamed for Poker Stars. I don't remember being nasty about her player and that. So I'm wondering if you can clarify what you mean a bit more for me. I don't. I don't want to go into her personal stuff. Uh, I no, just no, say that's fair. But I, I just. I, I and I. I. I, I, I got to be real. I. I don't know enough about it. I might be conflating things that you've said or things that your community said. Um, mm -hmm. But I just remember her being really upset about it, and it felt yeah. like it was a really uncomfortable situation for for her for a long time. Okay, so just so you know, that's not me personally that said anything. I don't believe, um, and I don't really. I don't love it when. You know, I'm, I'm being sort of tarred with the same brush that people in my community have used. Like, obviously, people in my community, they reflect my views in certain ways, like the way I teach the game, things like that. But it's not like we're a cult that, that are all, you know, we don't all have the same opinion about everything or anything like that. So yeah, those okay. things don't necessarily reflect the way I feel about that person or, or anyone else. Cool. Let's move on. Uh, okay. I, I, by the way, I appreciate the message that you sent. I didn't see it before, but... It, you know taking accountability but also clarifying it's like fucking great so yeah let's let, let's let's right. move on so the the poker stream today i i've in the last day gone on a personal jihad that i think i'm gonna go on for a little bit longer about uh, there are a shit ton of coaches out there as i'm sure you'll agree that are selling courses selling content that they have no business selling for prices that they have no business charging the, there are people out there that are just completely garbage at poker and they don't share any of their results and they're completely garbage at teaching poker and a lot of people you know they they might drop their job to become a professional poker player and now they're they're stuck in a loop of learning from shitty coaches and i i feel like we need to create an environment where there's more transparency for people when they're deciding you know what what courses and what which coaches to hire and buy mm -hmm. yeah i think all of that is fair i would add that there are lots of ways of demonstrating value um as a teacher i think that teaching is basically taking a subject that hopefully you have thorough knowledge of and distilling it for another person in a way that they can to a large extent assimilate the knowledge you have and be able to apply it right we can maybe agree on that definition yeah and that's what i think i do very well um i try to demonstrate that by creating lots of content that's free in order to show what i'm like what i know about the game i'm very transparent with how i think about the game i'll show people any hand that I've played, I'll admit where I've made mistakes. I will compare myself to solvers and show where I've gone wrong. I will try to find exploitative deviations and, and show them. So I would say with respect to my coaching and my video content, there is full transparency. Now, with results, because I'm not an active poker player, I did have, as I said to you on Twitter, I did have a graph that was representative of about 400, 500,000 hands that I played when I was playing higher volume, which was winning and comfortably so, that was up on my website. I decided to take it down because one, it was a bit dated because mm -hmm. now what I do is actually teach the game full time. I've dedicated all of my time in the last five or six years to running the coaching business, growing it, doing private coaching, trying to build a brand, which is really tough, especially when you're not an active poker player with a crushing graph. So yeah. it's taken a lot of my time. Um, I do think that how well your students have done is a massive thing. I think this is something people should be looking to. I think if you're on your current quest to like ask for transparency from coaches, I think you should also ask them to show their students the results because at the end of the day, the thing in my opinion that actually shows how successful and good a coach is most directly, not to say there isn't a direct co correlation between the coach's results and their ability to coach, there definitely is. But the most direct correlation, I would say, is the results of their students. So I'd say that's something that was missing from your tweet, the one that I objected to. I, 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 I agree with what you're saying. I just just to jump on that point, but sure. I don't I don't think it's a it's a realistic uh, phenomenon that we, we can manufacture in the community. Like how we, you know, if you've had a hundred students in the past five years, uh, mm -hmm. what what are we going to ask you for all of the before and afters, and then no, ag aggregate no. the averages? Or, I mean, are you, or are you just going to pick the top three? In which case, having a large sample size is good. So then you, you see the issue here. That it's just pretty impossible to 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 aggregate that that sure. data. Sure, I think there's also a similar problem with coaches' results. There are people who post, you know, fifty k hands, a hundred k hand samples. Like I don't know if you've had a chance to play about with the prime dope thing that I sent over, but it's actually mind boggling 
in a high variance game with like six max cash against like really good regs how high the variance is right because the spots are so swingy and you can actually play 300 you can play three 300k samples and they can all be quite different you know like out with a few bb per 100 quite easily at a high standard deviation and i think that problem exists there too and you know you have you have testimonials on your site i've had a look at your homepage. you have testimonials you clearly think that it's good to show some level of transparency about what people think of you and mm -hmm. their experience working with you maybe you can't regulate it perfectly but nor can you with coaches' results. And I think for me, it's more direct to show the students correlation, but I do think both are important. Uh, I, yeah, I just, I just don't, I, I think that the teacher's graph and, and results is, is, is infinitely easier to in, implement in, in, in terms of getting, getting actual valuable data. Because I, I could point at, you know, Ben Heath, and I'd be like, oh, I coached him for five years and now he's playing 100Ks or whatever. Uh, but at the same time, that that's not valuable data because you know I coached him a while ago. He's also a phenomenal poker player in his own right. Uh, you know, it, it, I also have a bunch of other students who I'm sure have, have stopped playing poker after I coached them, or at some point, or started losing, or something like that, just because of the pure amount of people I've coached. Um, so it it seem, it's just seem, it just seems pointless to to have students' uh, results up on there unless there are like particular cases. Where you know on on poker detox they 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 might be able to point to certain top crushes that were at one KNL and now they're being like twenty five KNL or ten KNL or whatever it is, um, but to you know to take a fifteen L player and teach them how to beat two hundred L as much as I believe that that is very representative of being a good coach, it doesn't it, it's not good data because you could have coached a hundred people just to get that one result. Yeah, no, I agree that testimonials aren't good data. I do think that in the free market with any um, field at all, there is a reputation, there is word of mouth, and people that have... One thing I can say about Karen Corner and about the people in my Discord, and probably every coach can say this on some level, is that I have a ridiculously high, you know, like, feedback um, performance level from people that have bought my courses, worked with me. You just have to be in the Discord for a little while to see that. And I do think that when you have, like, a big you know, dose of community feedback, you can aggregate it out, you can begin to see, you know, who's good and who's not. Like, you tend not to hear very much. If someone is truly a scammer and they don't know their stuff at all and they're taking people's money, you would hear, you would actually hear a lot about that. You'd hear a lot of negative reports, you know, not just one or two. When you get a lot of positive reports, no, it's not like exact data, but I think it's still really important. I think the student experience here shouldn't be overlooked, but I do agree that it's much harder to quantify. Yeah, and my, my instinct is just by the way, my instinct is that you will be a great teacher. Like you're 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 explaining yourself in this conversation extremely well. You're very concise in the way in the way that you're speaking. O obviously, I, I think that the the GTO stuff that you teach is a bit stupid, but you think the way I teach is probably a bit, a bit stupid. So I'm kind mean? of more in the middle these days. I've moved. I was very exploitative back in the day. Then I did go down like the very deep dark GTO rabbit hole. Now I'm kind of I've come out the other side. Now. Oh my god, you're human again. Now. Oh my I'm goodness, human, welcome yeah. back. <laughs> I will admit I was like full full robot weirdo for a while there in like 2017, 2018. But yeah, I emerged, uh, thankfully. But yeah, thank you for saying I'm concise. I normally just end up rambling whenever I make content, I feel. So that's always, that's good to hear. Thanks. Okay, so so maybe jumping to a point where we will disagree. I, I believe that calling yourself one of the best poker theoreticians in the world is a, an insane statement to make. Mm -hmm. Do you want to defend that comment before I, before I go any further? Um... Well, maybe give me your argument about why you think it's so insane first, and then I can maybe be defend it. So I, I would argue anybody that has a good understanding of poker to be a poker theoretician. I, I believe that the term is a little bit vague and loose, and it just means somebody that thinks about poker or somebody that understands mm -hmm. the theory of poker. Um, mm -hmm. so That's then, what it's meant to me. Yep. Okay, cool. So I'm a poker theoretician. Linus is a poker theoretician. Ben Heath, yep. uh, Mustafa Khan, all, all of these. But, you know, If we look at the fucking GPI, if we look at the top cash game players in the world, these are all poker theoreticians. So to say you're one of the best in the world, you're saying you're up there with like Makita Bajakowski, you're saying you're up there with Limitless, you're saying you're up there with Fedor, and you're saying you're up there with all of all of these huge names, um, which which are in the conversations of you know being the goat or whatever. And uh, I don't I don't see any evidence for that. Yeah, um, I can't prove that my theoretical level is up there with the people that you've mentioned. Maybe it's not up there with all of them, although I don't know enough to sort of say like how good is Limitless's theory. Specifically, how good is Ben Heath's theory specifically, I don't know. What I will say is from looking at content that I've seen in lots of different places, I often see 
inferior to theory to what I know that I can teach and what I know I can understand. Like when I made my my course, I hope you don't mind me just saying the name of it. I'm not. No, no, plug, please shout, shout, plug, plug as much as you want, honestly. No, I'm, I'm not good to plug, but when I made yeah. the character focus school, just clip that one part and it's going to sound like I'm an <laughs> Um I did a lot of study. It's actually based on like six, seven years of like teaching players, some of them quite good. It's based on my own forays into, you know, understanding what Pile Solver is doing, you know, what a GTO seeking algorithm is doing and why it's doing it, the hows and why is the nuts and bolts, the laws of physics of poker, as I like to call it. And this is my opinion. It's not that I think I'm in the top 10 poker theoreticians in the world, and I'm certainly not in the top whatever poker players in the world. I'm very rusty at the tables. I don't consider myself to be as good as lots of guys out there. So I'm, I hope, you know, I'm not making the claim that I'm one of the best poker players in the world. Now, you're right to pick up on this word theoretician. It's very intentional. And what I think I excel at, if you imagine it's like an RPG and we have like different sets of stats, right? You have eight stats and I have eight stats. Yep. And you're really good at like betting small to induce and reading people's souls. And getting <laughs> hey, crazy thanks. With, thanks for the SCI shout out. The SCI shout out, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I do actually, I find it quite weird that STI is part of that word, but that's another um, <laughs> story. Um, but I think the reason I choose theoretician is I think that my theory stat as a poker player there is incredibly high compared to my other stats. So I think I'm, a, I'm quite an unbalanced character. If I'm in an RPG, it's like agility 10, but like strength two or something like that sort of rogue or something like that. But my theory stat is way higher than my other stats. My in-game feel, my exploitative sense, they're getting better. They used to be quite good for the time, like when I played back in like you know, 2013, etc. Now they're coming back a little bit. But I do think my understanding of poker theory and what I've tried to distill in the Carrot Poker School is very, very strong. I think if you speak to people in my community, people that have taken the Carrot Poker School, there are some pros in there that have taken that course and worked with me on theory. I think at that aspect of the game, I'm very good. Now, arguably one of the best players in the world, maybe or one of the best theoreticians in the world, maybe that's too strong. Like I'll go away and think about that. I really don't want to represent myself, but I just hope that people know that when I write that, it's with full honesty. I mean it. It comes from the heart. It, maybe I'm a bit, maybe my ego's inflated because people in my own community are saying that and stuff like that. Maybe I'm on a bit of a an ego trip that afternoon where I sit and write that that one piece of copy, and maybe it's too strong. But it is something that I do believe my theory is way better than most other aspects of my game, and it's like my my main strength. Right. Yeah. I. I. Yeah. It's it's a lot to say that because. All, all of these GTO crushes that are at the top, they're, they're spending fucking hours a day, they're fucking studying everything, they're talking with each other with, you know, they're running supercomputers that the public don't have access to. Yep. But there, there's, there's such a deep, nuanced understanding that's required to be able to beat, you know, 10K and L online or, or, or higher. Um, yeah, I think to call yourself one of the best in the world seems, seems like a, a little bit of a ridiculous statement. Yeah, I think when you take these people that are working privately, you know, that no one really has a lot of information on, that's probably true. I think in terms of the theory courses that are out there, that are available, and coaches you can hire for a reasonable rate, I would say that I'm up there. I think when you very, start very, around, very different statement. Very different. If you want to say that you think this is one of the best poker courses in the world that teaches theory, 100%. But mm -hmm. one, one of the best poker theoreticians in the world, like, I, I can literally just point to Ben Heath. And mm -hmm. I, I know with near 100% certainty that he's going to be, uh, he's going to have a deeper understanding than you about, about poker theory, uh, mm -hmm. because I know the extent of which he studies, I know the extent of which he goes into nuance, fine nuanced detail about all of these things, speaks with all of the best players in the world, has, has an incredible intellect and is just fucking sharp as a knife. Like, I, I, I know that he's a better poker theoretician than me, I know he's a better poker theoretician than you, and... Uh, I, and the disparity will actually be, be quite quite huge, uh, and it, it just seems like if your poker theory were that up to scratch, you would also then be able to apply that at just like fucking at least like two KNL, you know, it never you know maybe ten KNL. You'd just be able to jump in and be like, oh okay, well I'm ten out of ten poker theory. I can I can play a balanced strategy, um, you know, I find staking or sell action or whatever it is, and just play against these guys that are only like top okay. 30 in the world and uh, then we'll fucking have okay. it out. Let me come back on that last point. That's great. Um, I think you're making an assumption there that I, the reason I'm not doing that is that I can't do that. Is that the assumption you're making? Uh, I believe that it's not an assumption, but I believe that you can't do that. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I, I hate the word belief. I don't really, I, I don't like the concept of belief, but my, no, that, my guess fair. would be like Bayesian perspective, 98%, something like that. Okay. Sure. So, 
I agree with you that I can't do that right now either. Um, and there are a few reasons for that. One, I don't have a particularly good mental game. Two, I don't really want to. I don't really have the will and the. I don't want to set aside that much of a bankroll and do the variance. I don't really want to be a poker player. I want to be a poker teacher. And I know that might sound bizarre to people. Why wouldn't, you know, those that can't do teach, why wouldn't this guy just want to play poker if he was really that good? It would take a while for me to convert all the theory I know into an applicable game that I can implement, you know, without RTA in 10 seconds at the table. That's no easy feat. I think when I'm working at two minutes, a hand review, going through a hand with a student, I'm incredibly strong. I think I can sort of, the other day I, I made a video and said, well, a strap on this river probably has 62 percent equity in theory and someone posted in my discord saying oh my god he like nailed the, the equity it does have that now obviously that's just one anecdote but i do think that my theory is better than you might think from the outside um but i also think that no i wouldn't be able to right now set in a game like 1k 2k and l apply it with the you know the sanity to really grind that game successfully the mental game to, to grind that game and i don't have the will i want to I want to make a, a solid living like i'm going to hopefully be having a family at some point in the near future i really want to just like be a really successful poker teacher within the industry i want my business to be really successful and i don't want to grind i want to do that grind that's my sort of destiny now as i see it so you're right if i sat down to tomorrow i probably couldn't do that i do think the theory i have would stand me in very good stead to switch to that kind of profession gradually by working on my end game skills if i wanted to do that but no i couldn't do it immediately for sure so could i convince you and again i mm. i I, pre I appreciate the fact that you want to be a teacher there's there's fucking nothing wrong with that i think it's it's great to teach people in poker i think it's very rewarding for both the teacher and the student but could, could i convince you to add a little little layer more of transparency to your website and to to the way that you present yourself online to say like hey guys this is this is what i'm beating these are the these are the stakes that i can currently beat I can't currently beat these stakes, but it's not because I, you know it's it's more that I haven't I haven't really tried, or like here are the stakes that I used to be able to beat at, at these or what, whatever whatever it is because at the moment, it would be great to set an example for the rest of the poker community where we don't have people that are kind of like omitting things that might seem a little a little not so good. You know, I, I, when I'm on stream, I'll openly admit there are, I I can't beat 10k NL on stars. You know, and the reason for that is that I'm not good enough at theory of poker. You know, I, I openly admit that. Um, but I'll tell you, okay, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm great at. This is what I have achieved and this is what I've done. But this is what I'm not so good at. So if you want to learn from me, here's all the information that I could possibly give you. And then you make that decision. Whereas I think what I feel from basically everyone else, bar a few people, is that everyone's just taking all of the cherry picked things about themselves and saying, well, here are all the best things. And then it leaves people just stuck for choice because, okay, we have Bart Hansen saying this, you have you saying that, you have me say, you know, you have all of these different people saying this is what we're great at, but nobody's actually being honest and saying, actually, this is what I'm not so good at. Yeah, but then again, it's a really competitive market and people need to try to succeed as well. And I do agree that there's a balance to strike between transparency and success. I don't think explicitly saying i can't be xnl right now if i tried on my website makes as even you don't, you're not not on your website but maybe standpoint. just like just like semi-regularly uh yeah I, th I think i do say some things like that like i've definitely said that i don't know if i'm winning in 200 zoom like when i play it in the mornings and it's really reg infested like i don't know that i'm beating that game because well one i don't have the data to prove that i am i don't have a sample size where i'm winning enough in that game for a long enough time to show up at all two it's full of really good regs. Three, who knows how safe it is from RTA. And four, there aren't many fish at that time of day, at like 11 a.m. UK time on a Wednesday. So I don't sit in that game and say I'm winning in this game. I actually tell people I don't know when they say what would your win rate be in that game. Um, what I do know is that I can beat like 50 NL. I can beat table selecting soft games at almost all stakes up to where the soft games run out, right? Like something like that wouldn't be a problem. But yeah, it's super hard to quantify, you know, like, I don't actually know exactly what my applied poker level is right now, but that's not what I'm selling. What I'm selling is courses, what I'm selling is coaching, what I'm selling is my ability to teach what I know to people to make them successful poker players. I've built a lot of successful poker players in my Discord. But I agree with you that I do think that statement about being one of the best theoreticians in the world is a bit far, and I think I will probably amend it, like us having had this chat now, so I will take that away from this. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I just want to say, because there are a few people in the chat getting, getting a bit rowdy, that I, I, you come across to me as a very honest person. 
I, I don't I don't get the idea that you're hiding anything. I don't get the idea that there's a part of you that's like secretly subconsciously trying to hide stuff too much. No. Although I'm sure with all of us, there's a part of that. Um, but yeah, what what that somebody actually did ask a good question. And I'm curious what, what your thought is on this. So mm. how can you be certain that what you're teaching is good if you're not testing it yourself in a in in the games and how do you know because po poker is such a good reflection of oneself you know if you have this idea of how poker works you straight away find out well not straight away you find out over time whether your heuristics or whether your idea of poker actually actually works out because over a large sample you get to see what works and what doesn't you get to see okay i'm losing you know three bb per 100 from this spot or whatever whatever it is um and so how how can you be so certain about about the theory being applicable without actually testing it yourself um yeah it's a good question so firstly i was a winning player whenever whenever i played professionally back in the day professionally is a loose word obviously i was in university i wasn't playing as like my sole source of income but uh, up to what stage so? like 200 nl 400 nl poker stars like back in the day yeah i never played high stakes i've never purported to be a high stakes crusher or someone that's made a load of money um playing poker I, I don't have like a really large um net dollars one playing poker that's never been me i went into coaching at a fairly early point in my poker career and kind of loved it and went down that path and um, full throttle after that but one reason is that i did well back in the day when i did play um today i've done so much work in solvers i can predict things i know what's going to happen before i look at a sim a lot of the time i have a cohesive web of ideas that is completely mutually supportive and stands on its own rationally and logically and also i get feedback from strong players that i teach that sort of say that, that i'm very strong at what i do so there's a lot of ways that i can be very confident without having any actual data like exact data that i'm good at what i do and that i don't have a problem saying that on my website or or here on the stream but at the same time, I can understand fully that there are people who only want to work with a coach that A, still grinds, big volume, plays professionally, and then B, <laughs> has the graph to prove it. That's totally fine. Then don't buy my content. That's okay. But I, I do want to stress that there's a large gulf between people that can teach something very well and then people who are currently choosing to do the thing they're teaching. If you look at all kinds of sports and professions, very oftentimes the coaches aren't in the physical shape and it's not a perfect analogy but they're not in the physical shape you know go with lift weights in the olympics or something like that but they're the best weightlifting coach in the world so it is possible that someone who isn't currently playing high stakes can teach you much better than somebody who is beating high stakes i think that's very plausible that that can be true so I, I i'm with you in a lot of what you said so a couple of things i want i want to i want to jump to so that so a couple of people online made the analogy between like sports coaches teaching uh sports uh and not being as good at the sports the, the analogy is not not very analogous um it you know that the reason that they might not be good at the sport might be because of their you know the physical detriments that they have versus other people they might be injured they might be old they might just not have the right body shape or body type for it um, but that doesn't mean they don't have a deeper understanding of what they're doing than the person that they're that they're teaching. So the, right. the the information diffusion will still be going from a high to a low place in in a lot of these circumstances. Um, whereas in poker, it, it's an intellectual sport game, whatever you want to call it. It and so you to be good at it means that you can beat games. That that is the definition of being good at poker. It means you can make money in poker. To be good at teaching poker is different. Um, but the analogy between sports, physical sports and poker, in my opinion, is, is completely off. Yeah, I don't think it's the best analogy either. I, I do think it applies to some extent in poker, though. I just don't think it should be a mandatory requirement for someone to be able to say, I'm currently beating X stake and making X money to be able to be seen as a good teacher within the community. No, I, 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 I agree with that. But I, I do agree with you, though, that people shouldn't if people do purport to have certain win rates in games, then it absolutely that should be fully transparent. Like you can't, I can't sit here and say, I have a seven BB win rate and 500 zoom and then be like, but I don't show my graphs. I think that's that's ludicrous, but I respect my own privacy too much to show you that's just weird. But I'm very open uh, you, 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 you just had a like, bang, bang, bang to the last guy, by the way. <laughs> I mean, he's he's gonna send you stuff. I actually spoke to, I spoke to Jarrah on his podcast on Thursday and I thought, um, He's actually a fascinating guy. He's doing a lot of work right now. You probably won't like this, but he's doing a lot of work with 
building solvers and, and bots and things like this. I love that stuff, man. Um, uh, I'm it's all for really it. interesting, right? To see, like, I made a video the other day called "Would a bot or would a solver be 25 and I'll zoom?" Um, just to sort of play devil's advocate and get people talking. So it's really fascinating to like try and understand what is the actual performance of a bot in a game like that. And I was, I had a chat with him about it. It was a really, really interesting yeah. conversation. But back to the point, though, I don't think that there's any way that someone can sit there and say, this is my win rate at a game and not and not show it. I do think sample size is important. Like, I don't think posting a 10K sample is is relevant at all. I think I would rather someone didn't post a graph than post a winning 10K sample. On like, my on my bankroll challenge, I've played 13K hands and pre-rake, I'm up, uh, actually, I, as of yesterday, I had a, had a losing day today and I haven't checked the graph, but I was up 32 BB per 100 over 13K hands. So I'm a 32 right. BB per 100 winner, guys. Well, it does mean that there's a very <laughs> high likelihood that you have a large win rate. Like, you can say that about yeah, a sample yeah, like yeah. that for sure. And there are, there are confidence intervals. So like, if you posted a 32 BB a 100 sample over 50k hands like you are undeniably an absolute crusher right or if you posted that in a live game where the variance and standard deviation is very low there's no chance you're not an absolute crusher but if you play a game like 500 zoom and you play 50k hands and you're you know you're winning at four or losing it two or breaking even or whatever it may be hey the next 50k you play can be totally different that's the issue and that's why when people are sort of posting graphs in high standard standard deviation games I think it's worse than to post no graph at all to show a winning 30k sample and there are so many coaches that actually cherry pick those samples and just post that and i think that's worse got you and and just the second thing i want to pick up on on the the thing that you said before is that you you said you got up to 2 slash 400 nl on stars back in the day yep. um which might be around now like 50 nl how tough it was back then i i don't know how exactly how many is but maybe like 50 25 nl something like that um is is it okay let, let me let me rephrase how would you justify the prices in which you you charge for coaching if you haven't got recent results or even past results that are like extremely competitive or anything like that um do you have like a lot of data of students you have like mm -hmm. okay you've tracked all of your students and you've got a few like fucking up to the super super high stakes and things like that I mean, I think you're placing too much emphasis on stakes for what my product is trying to do. Like what the Carrot Poker School is really trying to do or Cash Injection or any of my other um, courses is get people from where they currently are, which is usually some point before they're professional, up to a level where they're beating one or two stakes higher and they're on an upward trajectory. But that's what I'm trying to do. I believe that when people take the Carrot Poker School, it straightens out how the game works for them. It really sort of irons out the concepts and helps them build together these concept, uh, concepts in a cohesive way. And how can I justify the prices I, I charge for the Carrot Poker School? One, the professional academic layout of the course. There are homework exercises with feedback. There's it's such a high production value. So much time and effort has gone into the product. This isn't just about the knowledge of the individual, although that's a big part of it. It's also about the means by which the individual conveys the knowledge, their skill as a teacher, how slick is the product that they've put together and how efficiently can that product help you achieve your goals? I believe the Carrot Poker School and all of my content it helps, its tar helps its target audience achieve their goals very efficiently and easily. And that to me is more of an innate reason to, to say that I want to charge X for it than you know some, some graph of some game over 150K hands or whatever it may be. Like I think we just disagree quite strongly on the importance of, or let's say the essentiality of results when sort of rating a poker training product i don't think they're as big a deal as, as you do but i do think that they're great if you have them and if you do play poker in in a big way and you you have a sample you should absolutely be held accountable to, to show that large sample when it reaches a certain point so if somebody were putting out a chess course do you think that they shouldn't have to tell people what their chess elo is I think if they play chess and they have an accurate chess elo, then they should have to, just in the same way that if they play poker and have an accurate large sample size win rate, that they should have to. Right. And in my opinion, if, if somebody was selling a chess course, their elo should be on there no matter what. You can't like you can't just not have an elo on there. But I don't have a poker <clears throat> elo. Like, I don't know what my poker elo is. There's not a number that relates I, I understand, to my but, level. But can you see that there might be some emphasis on putting as much information as you have out there like okay i used yes. to i used to only beat uh you know 400 nl 
which you know might translate to this but now i've got this this di this different theoretical understanding of poker and here's, here's what i've been doing and again i'm not saying that to detriment your course because obviously you and i have disagreements on how poker works but i've also heard loads of good things about about your course and your streams and your your coaching style so I, i'm not i'm not going to poo poo it um but yeah it, to me it just seems like having having as much information out there as possible is such is such a good way to do it and i understand the, th the whole thing about marketing and it's a competitive market and things like that but i think that has to come second and ethics has to come first and putting as much information as, as you can out there um it doesn't have to be like fucking page one of your thing but maybe in like an faq or an about section or something like that so people have more information about about who they're buying their course from in the same way that you you'd love to buy a course from a gm chess teacher who's also good at teaching etc um than you would from somebody that's like 1200 elo trying to teach you the nuances of chess yeah i think i agree with most of that one point i would make here is that we've done some analytics and stuff like me and my um sales guy and a lot of the people that buy the carrot poker school are actually people who are already very exposed to me and my content they're people who have like watched a lot of youtube maybe they've been on stream slots before they've bought other cheaper products or something like that I think there are very few people out there that walk up to that rock up to a poker site and just gladly spend a grand on a course just by looking at like a couple of pages on that website. If I felt that that was actually happening, I would be a lot more concerned about just people's sanity in general. Like I think that's an insane thing to do to just go to somebody's site that you've never seen before, <laughs> see one page, be convinced by a couple of lines of copy, and then buy a course. Like no doubt it happens, but we know that the people who buy our content are extremely all, they're already very used to me. They've built up a ton of trust in the brand. And the way I build that trust, Charlie, is not in any other way than just being honest about what I know about the game on YouTube, on Twitch, or anywhere else. That's that's where I do it. And so, no, I don't, I don't think that this transparency should extend to the point where we're trying to just give people whatever data we may have over small samples and call it an ELO. Like, I don't think it should go that far, but I do think the big sample should be, you know, should be shown. Um transparently all right boom that's it case closed pete you're not a scammer obviously i didn't think you were in the first place but I, i'm i'm just gonna say it now you seem like a fucking great guy to be honest and uh i'm glad i'm glad that you sent that message a while ago because it really does show a, a great thing of character um i i would i would tend to believe that being able to show results in poker is really important to be able to sell something big um i i feel you know, I, I wouldn't be able to recommend somebody that's above like 100 L to buy your course, but that's where we would disagree and I'm not going to hold my own opinion as an authoritative one. Um, so what, what, you know, other than that, fuck, fuck yeah, shout out to the fact that you put so much time into the course and that it's high value, that people have got good feedback and that you, you've obviously helped a lot of people in their poker career. Um, and in my opinion, by the way, poker coaching is so underpriced in general or, you know, the value that you get is so much more than what you're paying. So you, you could honestly be charging like $500 an hour, $1,000 an hour even. And it, I, that would still be, maybe a thousand is a bit too much, but like 750 even. And I, I'd be like, that sounds fine. You know, if people are paying, if people want to pay for it, that sounds absolutely fine. If you're selling courses for a thousand dollars, to me, that's fucking great. You know, that's, you know, people only need to learn like three things and then they're going to be, that's going to be a plus EV investment over the, the, the course of their life um so yeah I, i'm uh a lot a lot of people will hear, hear numbers like that outside uh, of the you know the high stakes poker world and the mid-stakes poker world and they'll be like thousand dollars oh my god that's like a month's salary or whatever half month's salary and it sounds like a lot of money but in poker it's just not um you know if you're playing 100 now a thousand dollars is only 10 buy-ins if you're playing a thousand now it's only one buy-in so it's it's just uh it's just fucking whatever can i can i whilst you're on here uh mm -hmm. do i do, do you have some time yeah, yeah absolutely all right, and there are a couple of people in the chat, by the way, going going ham at you for fucking no reason. So chill out, chill out, chat. He's a, he's a good guy. Fucking chill. Um, uh, yeah, Marius, I love you, dude. Uh, but chill, come on. Um, what do you think about? And chat, tell me what you guys think as well about the 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 fact that some of the biggest poker streamers out there are probably losing money. Um, but they're just getting all of their buy-ins paid for in the high stakes and that there are going to be like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people watching them and are completely unaware that these guys are hemorrhaging money or losing money or whatever it is. Yeah. So first off, 
they're not selling courses, most of them, right? So it's not really the same thing as like you getting me on here and being like, you know, you're selling a course for a K, justify it. Um, these people are providing entertainment value mostly. I will also just preface this by saying I don't really know what like Spraggy's win rate is in any games that he plays or Lex's win rate is or any of the big streamers. I have no idea. I think if they are pitching it in a way where they're purporting to be the best players in the world or like really strong players or something like that, then clearly that's completely ludicrous. They're like very far from it. But at the same time, they're very good at the entertainment side of what they do. And I don't think it's necessarily a problem, you know, if people are rocking up just to watch entertainment, just in the same way as like the people on like Hustle of Alive or whatever, like streams like this are, are pretty bad poker players for the most part, but they provide entertainment value, right? I, 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 I hear you. And I, I think that, you know, let's take Spraggy for example. I watch all of his videos. I love watching his streams. I think he's, he's a fucking great addition to the poker community. I just wish there was more of an more of a an air, more of an atmosphere where people were just sharing their results honestly and openly. Like there's no there's no harm apart from to Spraggy's ego or brand for him to share his shark scope and to share. Okay, well the, these are the results I've had over the last day, you know years. The, these are the downswings I've had. These are the upswings I've had. Whatever it's going to be. And then new poker players, and, and, and again, it's so important because poker players, when they're, when they're getting into poker, they might drop the rest of their life to get into this thing. It creates an atmosphere where there's a bit more understanding, transparency, the fog is cleared. It's like, okay, this person's crushing, this person's not so much crushing. You know, they, they, they might look at Ben C.B. and Spraggy and see them as the same kind of poker player. Um, or maybe not in the same, but maybe like relatively close because they're playing relatively close stakes. Whereas in actuality, you know, Ben CB is actually, you know, significantly better. Um, and it, it just feels really like an easy fix to just be like, oh, let's just show our, show our results. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with most of that. I think with these people as well, it's like the part that bugs me a lot of the time is when they try to talk strategy like i have a real problem with like commentators on poker streams that don't know what they're talking about and <laughs> yeah me too man just, just trying to speak about the game when they don't even know like the first thing about it and that to me is like i spend i don't know about you but i spend most of my coaching career when i first get a new private student it's not that advanced uninstalling like i feel like they're just like this horrible fragmented hard drive and they just show up and i have to just like wipe so many things in order to actually show them like what poker theory is and yeah, that's a, a real hindrance. It would be so much better for most people that I teach if they had never learned anything at all that they'd watched like kind of entertainment or learn entertainment, even like hybrid poker content on YouTube or Twitch. So I think that side of it is a real setback. It's like you're already tying like a metal thing around your ankle and walking backwards away from the starting line before you even run the race when you do that and you don't even know because it's fun and it's easy to do. Most yeah. people do so what, what do you think? Do you think we should be like, hey, Spraggy, Lex, easy with aces, just unblock your shark code, be, be more honest, be more transparent. Obviously, we're not, no one's going to force them to do it, but let's maybe like, do you think it's good to apply some social pressure on these things? Yeah, this is the thing. This actually follows on to something else I wanted to talk to you about, which is like, how do we actually go about doing what you're trying to do here? Because from my point of view tonight, like this was really alarming, right? Like I, again, this afternoon, I'm settling down to play a game of TFT. I don't know if you know Team Fight Tactics. It's no. like a... It's an the League of Legends client. It's a, it's a fantastic game. Don't quit your, your day job for it or whatever. <laughs> I, pl I played one, one practice game in League of Legends. And I was like, I could yeah. dedicate my fucking life to this game. It's oh my sick. God. Yeah. It's so good. So this is like League, but without needing the motor skills to play League, right? Like I don't have oh, the okay, reactions cool. of a 15-year-old. Um, <laughs> so I can't play League. 15-year-old on, on Ritalin. Yeah. Exactly. I, I don't have that. Um, so anyway, um, I sat down to, to play this game and then I saw that like there was this thread you started and as soon as I saw some notifications in this thread, I knew that I was going to be a target of it instantly because you'd started the thread by saying, who are the poker um, players or poker coaches who don't show results, blah, blah, blah. Then I, I like find a post where someone's like, oh yeah, Carrot Corner does this, Pete does this. And you're like, yeah, Pete, is this true? And I just felt like ha if we hadn't had this chat, I feel like the online way of dealing, dealing with things, it spirals so unbelievably quickly out of control and it's so easy to become like tribal and you know people on my discord are like furious that you're doing this that you've got this title saying exposing poker scammers and you're going through my website and i didn't see that part of the stream so as i said apologies if you didn't direct directly call me a scammer i just got like 11 messages in 10 minutes saying that that's what was happening so yeah my, my pulse is up i'm like alarmed by it i'm like shit 
this guy with quite a big following is like attacking me on stream this is like not a good thing and i wonder like what do you think about the way you're going about this like on twitter like the way you're sort of asking these questions and probing these people like social pressure is probably good but like should you message them first should you try to like set up a call with them and interview them on it rather than just going straight to to their jugular i don't know i think it has some dangerous repercussions like the way you did that today what do you think i don't think there's much danger but i i i'm i hear what you say and i'm open to having a better way of doing this it's for me i know that the way i'm going to do it is going to be ethical i know in the sense of like you know i'm going to give people a chance to speak for themselves i'm going to look at the data with with as much of an unbiased point of view as i can in the past we've had what people like doug polk kind of navigating these things in the poker community and trying to trying to just basically assert his ego wherever his ego wants to be and then you know creating a lot a lot of pain in people's lives uh, you know, he, he's gone after people like uh, Ben Tolerine and uh, Alex Tur- Alec Torelli. And they're, they're, you know, Alec especially, he's had his his uh, his reputation absolutely annihilated by Doug, and in my opinion, a completely unfair and disgusting way. And so at the moment, what's happening is that th- there's this complete shit show, old style Western shootout thing where whoever has the biggest ego and the biggest drive to hurt other people can uh, assert their truth and the people will just end up end up believing it. And that's not what I what I want to do, and it's 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 not nowhere near what what I want to be doing. But the, on the other end of things, I don't want to be running away from controversy. I don't want to be stepping away from you know hurting people's feelings just because it's going to you know cause, cause disruption in, in their life. It, and so, sometimes, and it, this is really something that I've not been doing much recently, until in the last couple of weeks, I I have I I've just been running away from the idea of causing any kind of tension between people and that that's actually been quite difficult for me because i've had innumerable amount of people say horrendous things about me and including all the things like he's a scammer he can't beat 2nl he can't all, all of these things and there isn't there isn't this like centralized organizational body or anything that can just say oh well, actually this is what's true this is what isn't true this voice this what isn't true and that's what i'm trying to create here and i i just felt like just like throwing myself in the deep end and seeing seeing what works and seeing what didn't work um, so I, I, I want to say I'm sorry that, that it, it, the information came to you like that. I, I made it explicitly clear, and you can watch the VOD back, explicitly clear that I don't think you're a scammer and that, you know, I said nice things about you. And I made it explicitly clear that I think saying you're one of the top poker theoreticians in the world is insane. Um, but, you know, that's, again, just my opinion, and I make it very clear that my opinion isn't, isn't fucking God's opinion. Um, but what but what it has done is it's got you on a call it got the other person on a call it's got loads of people talking about these things and it's getting information up to the top and up to the surface uh, it had a bunch of people DMing me about different people they want they want me to look into um, so I, I think I'm open to there being better ways of doing this um, and if you have an idea of how to do it better I'm, I'm super open to listening uh, about yeah. it yeah I, th- I think like getting a list of like going and doing your own research like well first off let's maybe just start with the premise that objectively it's a noble pursuit to try to expose people who are benefiting from other people's from other people being harmed in any aspect of life so like what a scammer actually is is someone who gives people false information in order to coerce them into getting their money without having to provide any value or service or enough value or service in return and that's clearly something that is bad in poker and it's something that we should try to do something about where it's happening in the same way that we should be trying to do a fuck ton about rta and and gto bots and all of this sort of stuff as well so i think it's a worthy cause for sure i think social media i'm very new to twitter i avoided it like the plague for most of my life because i can't stand public discourse where private discourse would fit better that's why i messaged you on twitch like all those years ago i guess two years ago now was that when there's a problem or there's animosity or you're on your stream or someone else is on their show saying, oh, Pete Clark, blah, blah, blah. The first thing I actually want to do is say, hey, man, like, what's this about? Can we talk about it? Can we sort it out? So I think having the people who are willing to talk to you on this show and promoting the show is a really good thing and asking them, you know, you've claimed to beat 400 NF, what am I talking about? Like still 2011, that doesn't exist anymore. 500 Zoom or whatever for yeah. For BB for 100, where are your graphs? You said there are graphs, like, do you have them? I think that's completely fair. I think giving people the chance to go, like, messaging them privately and saying, hey, I'm doing this show. 
we're investigating blah 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 would you like to come on and, and talk about it would be a much et more ethical you know you're saying you're completely confident in the ethical way in which you're conducting this study um well this comes down to whether whether morality is objective or subjective and like I, I, that's a whole other conversation um maybe you mean your own your own moral code but i would think that a lot of people would be quite um i guess upset and like shocked and when they see the mob descending on them i think twitter has this like aspect of modern life that's extremely harmful to a lot of people where when you look at a thread and a mob is descending on you like in this case it was quite minor right you'd said something about me maybe four or five people were like oh this guy's a scammer yeah he's full of shit blah 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 but when you read when i read like those four comments all at once that was pretty upsetting right like and i'm someone that's been on streams i've, I've made enough content through the years i've got a fairly thick skin depending on the day like to take criticism and stuff like that i don't have an issue with that but i think that whole mobbing aspect of twitter is, is the dangerous part that's what i'm referring to i think the investigation's good i think the the twitterizing or let's say going straight to the twitterizing of the investigation might be an issue going there eventually when someone has refused to cooperate when someone has said i'm not going to talk to you and i don't have to show anything maybe going straight to that i don't think that's a good way to go about it that's just my opinion yeah i i think i i think i disagree but i, I just want to say i i completely understand uh what you're saying about the the pain that it causes sometimes if, if one is sensitive to to public discourse about them uh i when when doug made a, a video about me like four years ago it was during a really tough time in my personal life and it it was very fucking devastating to have like thousands of people sending me death threats and things like that and yeah having all my youtube videos just fucking mobbed and people calling me things that were just like really really terrible like i that for me was so devastating psychologically and emotionally and i know that's because i got bullied as a kid and all of these different things um and i know that's why i was i was very sensitive about it um so I, I do I do really empathize with that. But at the same time, I did see it as it was my responsibility to strengthen up. Because if I'm putting myself out there in the public eye, I'm putting myself out there to be to be uh to be publicized. Yeah, to be crit yeah. Pub publicly criticized, sorry. Um <clears throat> and what we're doing here is, you know, we're not going and saying this person's a scammer, this person's a scammer. Like people are gonna do that no matter what. But what I am doing is saying like, hey, I'm just going to have a conversation about people. Guys, bring up names you want to bring up and we'll clear them or we'll not clear them. And I, it seems to be working. It seems to be working pretty well. And I did put a lot of thought before I pressed the enter button. I meditate on it. I was like, I you want to make sure I'm not doing anything unethical here. Um, but it seems to be working pretty well. And I, I again, I do empathize with the fact that it, 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 it's really, it can be painful to hear people say things about you. But going from this conversation i think uh maybe the chat can speak up for this but it seems like more people are now thinking very high highly of you because of this you know and there might be a few people that are like no we can't beat that so i'm not gonna but now we've had like a mature adult conversation about it about how you see yourself how i see it how other people see it i think a lot of people are just gonna be like oh okay he's he's super honest he's super respectful he's super concise he seems like he's he's got a good understanding of what he what he teaches and um, that might not have happened uh, so so quickly and so abruptly and so so powerfully if, if we didn't have the the initial just spark of, of doing things. Yeah, this is true. Like I wouldn't have got away from like my normal Sunday night relaxation mode to be on my computer here having this chat with you if I hadn't been a bit alarmed. So there is a sense in which I'm glad we've had this chat. I'm glad that like we've cleared the air a bit. I'm also glad that like I've been able to just address this publicly because i do get this on my stream a lot as well you know people say this guy doesn't he doesn't have a sample he doesn't play poker so clearly he must be a shit coach and a scammer and blah blah, blah. it happens sometimes so i i welcome like the public space to be able to just have this conversation and i think like these face-to-face -face conversations via zoom call like in real life they very much mirror like the way humans have learned to treat each other in, in society like yeah, to be able yeah. to get along and get stuff done and be productive and work together <clears throat> i think the problem with twitter in general i'm just very much not a fan although i'm kind of like addicted to certain aspects of the platform i find it quite dehumanizing and alienating and i think it's twitter's just called it it can cause a lot of harm and i think it is the only place we can go to to make things public really quickly I just think that we should treat people the way we would treat them in real life first and we should behave on the internet as we would behave 
in the state of nature, in the tribe, in the city, in society, <laughs> before we start going to these these platforms right away. So that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, I, I feel you. I, I, what it, I think I'm going to continue to speak publicly about people. like Because now, now, for instance, I, I'm going to ask you a question. Who do you think, if you feel like naming anybody, is perhaps mis-selling themselves, or the chat can get involved as well? Who do you think is out there that is you know perhaps not not giving the most honest impression of their own abilities uh and selling things that that are that are unfair and again i'm not expecting you to say names but the you know yeah i it, the just to open up the concept that you could name now like three or four names if you felt if you felt that way inclined and mm-hmm. we would be able to go through them really really quickly and, and easily yeah honestly i've not done enough research like if i had known about this sooner and I had gone away and had the interest to start researching as possible I would have names which I could state here like with full confidence in order to that I would feel like I wasn't possibly defaming someone wrongly but right now all it would be is a suspicion so if I was to name a name and then they are actually innocent and haven't done that even though I know you're just trying to do this to like get to the bottom of things I still don't want to be someone that like puts a name out there and then it's like totally wrong. So I'd rather not because I'm just, I haven't done enough research. But if you guys want to continue, I'll happily chill here for a bit and I'll be a part of it. Can I give a quick shout out actually? Please, um, please do, yeah, please. Debbie's in chat here is extremely um, defensive of me and she's done a ton of work for me over the past couple of years. And I Who, just, who's her? I just want to say Debbie's massive shout out to her. She's actually like someone that works for me and has done a bunch of work for me before. Um, and she's just been here, like trying to defend me all night and stuff, like while this has been going on. So massive shout out to UV, but you know, we're all good here. You don't yeah. have to like battle the warriors in chat or anything. But, yeah, it's you know, it's it's not a fight you can win unless you got the microphone. I, I, I don't care. Like I don't care what people think. I'm not trying to like make everybody believe I'm amazing or anything like that. I don't need that. As long as I can run my business and the people I'm teaching are happy and the people that are buying my stuff aren't writing to me outraged that they spent 1k which has never happened um you know then i'm then i'm happy i don't i don't mind but yeah shout out to her for just like having my back um tonight and just how 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 was your how was your experience in school like did you get bullied not so much like a little bit i think we've all been i think everyone's been bullied somewhat and i went to a really rough school so like i went from a a primary school that was pretty nice and everyone was quite tight knit and and peaceful to a high school that had like a catchment area that was much rougher and kind of feral like borderline like one of the worst places and probably the worst place in scotland actually was one of the catchment areas and there were some really rough kids there fortunately i've always been fairly good at like relating to them on their level and like knowing kind of where they're coming from and i think when when they saw that i i perhaps didn't catch as much um of the bullying as some other kids from my school that went there did but i've been there i know what it feels like to be bullied um in short bursts i don't doesn't sound like it's anything compared to what you you underwent in your childhood but it sucks and i think anything at all that brings back that trauma for people is is rough and i think that's a big part of what happens on on twitter and stuff is that people get that same panicky helpless feeling when the mob descends on them. I think there's a real mob culture right now and it's it's kind of horrific to be honest. But yeah, I can't say that I was bullied like worse than the next guy or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, people are throwing out names so I just want to clear some of them. Dominic Nietzsche, one of the best bug players in the world, guys. Chill out. <laughs> Dean Eggs, uh, I, th- I think Dean Eggs probably overplays how good he is at poker but he, he's, he's got such a fucking amazing track record. Uh, where nobody's gonna shit on him for selling a course or whatever he wants to do. He's Dean Eggs. He can do fucking anything basically, um, and he's under so much criticism and scrutiny anyway. Um, I I'm Kira and Doug Polk, fucking amazing at poker. Uh, fucking crush and buy his courses probably if you want to get better at poker. Um, I'm curious about people like uh, Bart Hansen, about uh, Nick's brother. Um, you know the I'm curious about uh, you know someone like Jonathan Little. Uh, pe- people like this that I see people buying uh, Dylan Wiseman we didn't really cover we looked at him a little bit yeah we, we just kind of th- there's a lot of, there's a lot of people in the in the poker world that have like these huge reaches for a lot of very uh, very precise content that's meant to be very theoretical technique uh, technical and things like that and I I'm curious I, I'm not expecting you to tell me exactly um, you know what you think but I'm, I'm very curious how these people portray themselves in the public eye and whether whether it's like a legitimate thing um so 
do you want to stay on whilst I do that or do you want to like avoid the controversy? Um, I don't really have, maybe I'll, maybe I'll hop off just because I don't really have like a massive opinion on any of them. Um, some of the names you're saying, you know, I, I understand why you're putting forward, like some of the names that you are, but I, I'm one of these people that's done very bad market research and probably should have done more. I don't know enough about my competitors. So yeah, I'll let you get on with it, but yeah, it's been, been a good chat. Cool. We should have a GTO versus fuck GTO debate someday. It'll be fun. We should. If you want to do a stream, you want to do a video, just hit me up. I'm always down to make content. Yeah, I'm super down. All right, cool. Speak to you later, brother. Good to meet you, brother. You as well. Take care. Bye. Another good thing about streamers is that they know how to leave Zoom chats. <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm doing my streams with you guys, some some of you are just like fucking sitting there just looking for the escape button and I have to give the awkward kick out. <laughs> Can we do votes after the interview? I don't think so, man. I don't think so. I, I'm, I'm looking at basically every comment uh, that everyone's leaving um, and I'm, I'm really trying to listen to what everyone has to say. I see a lot of people are very skeptical still about the first caller that we had, Joel Deman. Um, and I, I will do some further research into into the results that he has um, because, you know, it's he's made some very, very distinct claims, which I think could be quite easily, easily backed up. Um, so, uh, we'll, yeah, send, send graphs on Twitter, well, fucking there. And then I think once, once we, uh, you know, once we clear those things up, then it'll be a lot easier for people to... Uh, chill out on, the, on him who should we look at next this is this is kind of fun i gotta be honest i'm enjoying dancing in uh, on the edge of controversy but doing it in, a, in an ethical way i wish more people would like this you know there's a duality between not being scared of, of controversy but not being so e egotistically driven that you're trying to like tear people down uh, i will i will look at those graphs these any because i should just mention your name again We have making their Epiphany Poker stream debut, the graphs from Older Man. Oh wait, you can see my DMs. I don't think I'm DMing anyone, weird. All right, well, this is how much I trust you guys. Show you some of the top of some of my DMs. You won't be able to see any messages, you'll be able to see who I'm DMing, which is fine. Charlie Carroll exposed, DMing. Will Jaffe. All right, so we have. I fucking can't read any of this. I got. <laughs> I can't read a fucking thing. Let's try and save the images and then uh, we'll go. We'll go back. It must be terrifying for people that have things to hide if they're streaming. Cause I, I, I'm pretty sure there's not a single thing apart from like naked photos of, of my wife, which are probably on my computer somewhere. Apart from those, I don't think there's a single thing that I wouldn't want uh, people to see. Uh, but it must be tough to be a streamer and genuinely have things that you want to hide. Uh, don't know how. Okay, we're we're gonna have to look at it. He sent me a bunch of graphs. They all look like they're going up. Uh, a couple look like they're going down. Uh, and if you're saying it adds up to seven BB per hundred or something like that, well, I'll do the math later, but if you're saying that, I'll believe it for now, because that'd be a, an insane lie. Just watch some of Jordan Man's streams, you will know. I gotta be honest, I did watch one one hand breakdown that somebody sent me of Jordan Man, and uh, maybe, maybe, maybe Jordan Man and I could have a little bit of a disagreement on that. It was the one, if, if you're listening, it was the one where you called down King Jack on uh, six six deuce ace x i think the river was a four and you caught down with king jack with the jack of diamonds when there was a flush draw on the turn that was a, that was a spicy one <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean no, no, I've, I've made way worse calls than that don't, don't you worry but the justifications for it, i think were a little bit a little bit, a little bit devious <laughs> Um, but anyway, that, that's poker strat got nothing to do with anyone's honesty or anything like that. That's, uh, it's literally just a poker strat. When's Hannah due? Hannah's due a week ago. We've, I'm a father. I'm a fucking father. Uh, guys, who would you like to look at? I'm, I'm tempted to look at Bart Hansen next because, uh, his name flowed up a few times. Let's look it up. So we've got. Bart Hansen Poker, again, very trusted person within the poker community. No reason to believe that he's a scammer. 
definitely don't think that he's scamming anybody, but very curious about his results and what how he's portraying himself in, again, I'm just doing this for a lot of people, so please don't read into any anything that I'm, I'm looking into specific people. These are just names that are coming up. Bart or Johnson Little, yeah. Yeah, we'll look, we'll look at Jay Little afterwards. All right, so Bart is crushedlivepoker.com, if I'm, if I'm getting that correct. Uh, he's been playing since 2004. Holy shit. He's been playing since 2004. That is 19 years. 19 years of play, 18 and a half years of play. Started playing a 5K in 2005 and has managed to amass a total of $1.1 million. Uh, I'm a real, not, not a very good um, hand and mob, pretty, pretty small in comparison to the amount that he's played and the stakes that he's played. Uh, probably close to not winning, um, but that's, <coughs> that's, only, that's only live tournaments. So, you know, there's also uh, live cash. I don't know if he plays online tournaments or anything like that, but that's, uh, that's that. Crush Life Poker. Oh, it's cash game player. Okay, fantastic. So let's 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 look at Bart being a cash game player. Again, just want to be clear. Nobody's calling this man a scammer. We're just looking at people one by one. Yeah, I'm starting to be a little bit dubious about the title of the stream as well. In fact, I'm going to change the title of the stream. I thought that it would be a kind of like fun energy going into it. And I've changed my mind. I think that this has become a little bit... It's not that it's become serious for, for people watching, but anybody that gets... Uh, okay. How... How good... Ah, uh, poker coaches, really. Yeah, I just judging by what Pete said um, and the reaction that people gave to him, perhaps I will take the L on the titling of the stream and give my sincere apologies if anybody else has had a, uh, a negative experience from that. So uh, yeah, my bad, my bad. All right. That's up, that's updated, right? <clears throat> Examining poker coaches like fucking everyone. No, the, the, the problem is like finding the balance between something clickable that isn't clickbait is really fucking tough. And then also ethical at the same time. It's like, yeah, you get, you, you feel me, you feel me. All right. Uh, again, my bad, my bad. I will, I will learn. All right, we've got about founder Bart Hansen. How good is he really? In his career as a professional player, Bart Hansen has six WSOP final tables, over 15 years of experience at the table, over a million in tournament earnings. So this, this would sound like a lot to people that aren't in poker. This sounds very, very impressive, but it's, it's, it's actually, he might be like close to break even, judging on how much he's playing. Uh, maybe, maybe like a slow winner. Multiple appearances on ESPN and Poker Night in America. Fourth place finish <coughs> in the Monster Stack and hosted. Very, very good commentator, by the way. Fucking, yeah, top-notch commentator. Uh, I've got to be honest, his strategy when he's talking strategy, from what, I, what, from what I've seen, has been not very good. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty, pretty bad. So what's he selling? Elite, very similar to what I'm doing with my Discord, except my, my basic is free. Um, my premium is 57 a month, and my Elite is a one-off payment, so it's not per year, it's a one-off payment for $1,000. Uh, so, relatively similar. Where's like, what do we even, what do we even check, to be honest? What's he? What's he? What's he? Uh, what's he saying that he can teach? Fuck! I'm not. 
very good investigator, am I? <laughs> I'll get, I'll get there, I'll get there. I, don't, I just don't even know what to look for. 12 years of content. So my, my, my first instinct is, I mean, this, this is super cheap. Uh, just for the fucking podcast. I mean, people will pay this much for a fucking podcast. Yeah, Joey, Joey's got the fucking reps and he's got the hours in. Um, yeah, so ju just for the podcasts, just for the Discord access, like th this is going to be plus EV already. Th this is uh, this is already going to be plus EV. He's not making any claims about the stakes that he can beat, which is, uh, I guess, good. So far, no red flags whatsoever about this. Personalized dashboards, that's sexy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Take the courses, oh yeah. New courses. There we go. Crushing Live Holden 2023 and beyond. PLO battle plan, crushing live PLO. <coughs> yeah, we'll just look kind of normal. All right, well. Bart Hansen can't beat 2k and Allen Stars, filthy scale, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Bart can't beat like uh, 50 and Allen Stars, but he's teaching live poker, and uh, I'm sure he can be like 510 on, uh, you know, Bellagio or something. So to teach that to other people sounds like, sounds great, to be honest. All right, I'm saying it here, I'm saying it now. Zero red flags from what I can see. Uh, again, would would be great. Again, would be really, really good if he would have like, you know, his his live poker results, something like that. I think that would be, uh, you know, that'd be a fantastic thing to be able to show people like, oh, I, I can beat up to 1025. I can beat up to whatever. Is 510 really that weak? Yeah, guys, if you, if you can beat 50 and on stars, you can probably make like $100 an hour in, in Vegas. Uh, so five five ten live it it's super super it's super super easy um, in in Vegas in other other places in the states as well. Charlie, can you show your graph? I only have the recent. So I didn't use a HUD for the for the few years where I was uh, playing recently. Um, I have my shark scope which I can show you, and then I've got my Hendon mob which I can show you, uh, and then I do have a graph of my bankroll challenge that I've recently done. Um, which is around 30 BB per 100 winning pre-rake at the moment. So, was doing all right. Won the fucking Sunday million. Won some other stuff. Won some other stuff. Won some other stuff. Was up. This is in pounds. So, it's, you know, uh, I was up like fucking, well, like 380K dollars. At the time, it was, it was more. And then won the fucking scoop. Like a fucking G. Uh, went on a big downswing. Recently on an upswing. And I uh, haven't really played played much recently. And then uh, I'm up another... Maybe like 500k pounds on party poker. And probably down like 60 to 50k on GG, if I had to guess. Yeah, first 3k MTTs. Guys, I'm curious. I think what this is is sit and goes. I'm pretty sure this is all sit and goes. I'm I don't know where the poker stars count sit and goes, but I I, I I didn't play that many MTTs for sure. So it count it counted fucking something. What about coin poker? Uh I'm down in coin poker cash games, but I staked for the whole motherfucking thing and I was playing PLO fucking 2k, 4k against Linus Love, etc. Uh personal money, I made hundred K out of it, which was pretty cool. Change all games to scheduled and it takes out singles. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> okay, so I've actually only played uh, 6,500 tournaments lifetime on stars, which is not many. Really fucking not many. Man, that Sunday million thing was pretty nice. I gotta, I'm going to be real with you. And the same in the same day, I also came sixth in the Sunday second chance for like ten k. That was back when the Sunday million actually had money up top. Um, yeah. Um, what else? I can look my hand in. So 
So I tried, I tried adding up how much I've spent on this. And I think th the amount that I've put in is around $3 million into buy-ins. Uh, that, that was my, that was my estimate. I had, uh, the biggest upswing you could ever possibly imagine, uh, throughout basically my whole career, which was very, very nice. Shout out to the, the highlights. No, it's 1.6. I always call it 1.5. Apparently it's 1.6. Nice. Maybe that's the, the old translation from pound to dollars. Had a 1.2 and had another one point something somewhere. There it is. Uh, and yeah, I'm very transparent about what I can and can't do. If you were to put me on 10 KNL on stars, I'm 90% certain I would lose over a good sample. Maybe like 85% certain. Um, unless, unless you accounted for me being able to study and, and, and do things like that. Um, the reason for that is that I haven't studied game theory enough. And as much as I'm like the fuck GTO guy, uh, because I, I really believe that to get very good at poker, you can't just go through the game theory route. It's so fucking confusing. You need to be able to intuitively understand range analysis in a lot of depth. Um, but then to beat the top levels, like for instance, I, I played Linus Love heads up. And my heads up game, I've barely played any, but it's actually very, very strong. Um, but against Linus, obviously I'm losing. And it's, it's a very good example of why you can't not understand game theory to a high degree if you want to play those stakes. And the reason is that he was better at exploiting me than I was at, at exploiting him. Maybe not in all spots, but in most spots, you know, maybe in like 65% of spots to 85% of spots, he'd be better at exploiting me. And the reason is that he's played a lot more, but he also just has this un deep understanding of human proclivities and tendencies of like, oh, okay, well he does this, he did that with this hand, so he's probably likely to do that with this hand in this spot. And in ways that my brain just, you know, I just didn't have that understanding, didn't have those repetitions in. Um, and I think for me, it's really important that I'm transparent about this. You know, it's really important that I'm transparent about my own abilities and my, my own foibles and weaknesses because if somebody wants to buy a product from me or even literally just watch my YouTube content, I want them, oh, you can you can get on if you want. I'll just put the Zoom, chat, Zoom link in chat. Um, I want them to be able to uh, know exactly who they're, who they're watching. You know, I want them to not come away with, with an unrealistic idea of, of who they're watching. I will, I will say the one thing I, I do sometimes go back and forward on is like, ima imagine I'm posting a highlight video of the Bankroll Challenge. So I, I streamed the whole Bankroll Challenge, $50 to 10K. So if you're watching the stream, then you know you got, you got the whole thing. But if I'm posting a highlight video of maybe like 500 Zoom, do I post the days where I play like crap and then give people shitty advice you know, like by proxy, because I'm like, hey, this is how I play poker. And today I played like crap. And today I lost like four binds. Or do I post only the sessions where I play well, which on average will be ones that, that go well. And uh, yeah, for me, that's been a, it's been a difficult, uh, it's been a difficult one. Um, <coughs> yeah, dude, if in, in the chat that wanted to come talk, I just posted the link Literally anybody can come talk to me right now if they if they want to name somebody if they want to talk to me about anything I always do debate streams anyway where someone can disagree with literally anything they want Absolutely anything they want to disagree with me on um, they can come in so it doesn't even need to be poker related You could be like, oh, I saw you post that stupid take on vaccines or whatever. We've had so many fucking So many wild when I had a flat earth guy on that was pretty fun had some atheist stuff had some spiritual stuff had some Yeah, that's pretty cool but um, there's a guy saying the original. There's a guy called the original Captain Nemo that said, "Get me on." Elaine Thomas making her epiphany poker debut. We have oh his, sorry, uh, Elaine Thomas. One second. Ah, oh, you missed him. You couldn't see him. He's gone now. We had Elaine Thomas that just came on, just like a, an older gentleman, bold. Uh, that was fun. Did I ever play against Stefan one one two two two? I've never played against him. No. I wish there were more <coughs> more ways to like play heads up against people. Um, that isn't just heads up cash games, you know? Because I haven't studied much of that, but I'd love to have like a 
fucking legit heads up thing. How much my house worth? I have no idea. I didn't buy it. Matt has entered the building. Matt, I'm going to get you guys to see it very quickly so you're not just fucking not seeing it. Ladies and gentlemen, making his Epiphany Poker stream debut, we have Matt. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Can it's, you hear me or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good enough. Loud and clear. Uh, so, what, what are we here to talk about today, Matt? Cool. <laughs> I just wanted to echo a few comments that uh, people were kind of talking about earlier about um, posting results. I think it's super important. Um, when I was first coming up to stakes, I I always wanted to like. Uh, see somebody posting on the forums, uh, like their, their journey throughout the stakes. And what I found and was quite disappointing was everybody would either just post their upswings or they wouldn't stay consistent or they would just quit. And when I was coming up the stakes, I found it pretty depressing because I, I didn't know what to expect. And that's why when I first started my blog on two plus two, I really wanted to show like the upswings and the downswings. And I feel like nobody shows that anymore. And I wish we could kind of bring that back as a community. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to give a shout out to the blog? What's it called? Uh, sure, I guess I could put it in the forum somewhere. Yeah, maybe put it in. It's on 2 plus 2. Put it in the Zoom chat and I'll post it in the... So basically, yeah, I've been posting my results for like four years basically so you you feel like it's really important uh you won't be able to post it in the, in the twitch chat you can post it in the zoom chat um <clears throat> do you think it's important for streamers as oh, well and as well as coaches sure. um i think it depends on how they market themselves like i think if they market themselves as a uh good pl player or someone that you should learn from i feel like they should Hmm. Okay, so so take for instance Lex Veldhaus. Um He has a lot of like strategy things where he's teaching people how to how to be how to beat certain stakes. Um, he's also talking strategy a, a lot and uh, these things. Do you think it's important for him to show his his results? I, uh, you've muted yourself somehow. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get we didn't get a word of that. Start again. <laughs> um, so I watch Lex on occasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing that I noticed about him though is that he's also with like the BBC coaching or whatever, and I almost feel like the onus isn't necessarily on him; it's actually more on BBC, if anything. Would you agree or disagree with that? I th I think there's more onus on on BBC. I would still love to be in a community where someone like Lex or Spraggy post their results honestly and openly. I think the only downside to doing it is, is like ego or brand. Uh, unless there's some like reason stars doesn't want it, but I can't imagine why that, why that would be a thing. Um, I, yeah, I think it would just be a more authentic experience within the, the poker community where people aren't taken awry by thinking somebody's way better than they are or way more successful than they are. Yeah, I guess it all depends on how you frame it. It's really just what it comes down to. Like, I would love for the community to all show results, but at the same time, I kind of understand why they wouldn't want to do that as well. Um, I also noticed, so like, to kind of give you a history on my blog, when I first started, I wanted to post weekly. And the problem that I actually found with that was, although I wasn't very good, and this was at the start of my blog, um, if I had a bad week, it would kind of like, it would make me want to try harder or just like I was more focused on each week showing a good graph as opposed to having a quality blog or and I felt that that was actually affecting my game. So now that's why I only post monthly. So I, I feel like you do have to kind of find that balance. Like I, I can understand why people don't want to say, OK, hey, here's my monthly graph, especially when you go on poker dope and you let's say you put in like a two big blind win rate. Um, you know, the variance could be 100, 200K hands. And then at that point, you know, it could be mentally tolling. So yeah. I kind of understand it in a sense. Yeah, I understand it too. Um, yeah, no, I feel it. And maybe, yeah, you're right. There is a lot more pressure on someone like, you know, BBZ Poker to be able to share share their own results, including their, including their downswings as well. 
um it's a tough it's a tough one when they're trying to do the marketing and things like that but yeah, yeah and i just want to make one one other point too is that oh sorry that's kind of weird there's like a delay in my headset of you talking and then me talking so sorry i was talking over you. maybe but... you're listening to the stream um, instead i also of think me. it depends on the style of coaching you you coach like i won't oh, maybe that's what it is let me just see here because i hear like an echo Where in the world is my Zoom settings here? I don't know. I'll figure that out, I guess, later or another time. But what I was going to say is there's this one, I won't say any names, but people could probably put it together. There's this one streamer who doesn't post results publicly, but showed his like GTO wizard score, like how accurate he was on GTO wizard. And realistically, that doesn't actually tell you anything. That doesn't tell you if they're a good poker player or not. So to, to try and figure out if someone ethical or scamming or showing results, it's, it's how, how do you actually even define that in the first place? Um, so yeah, I, I just want to make that point known as well. Who, who's the person? Everyone's saying, uh, a couple of people have said CG. <laughs> it, it may or may not be that person. All right, all right, but honestly, right. like I, I really like CG as a person. Don't get me wrong, but but it doesn't really tell you anything on how good of a player you are because um, some some friends of mine we've we've been actually trying to do this test. Like, okay, how much would GTO actually win? Because there was this discussion on Twitter, and it was like, oh, a, a GTO no bot would just crush. And maybe in MTTs with ICM that might be true, but in all my tests that I've done, GTO doesn't actually win that much at all. And in fact, if you put it in a live game, I, I don't even know if it would beat rake on some like lower stakes, wow. depending on the players that it plays with. And even multiple sizes doesn't actually win that much. So again, I, I think that what is a metric on how good of a poker player you are, I guess it really is just results at the end of the day. So you have to show a graph over a significant <laughs> sample. And I think that's really all you could do, I guess. Cool. I, I've, I've got a couple of people saying that CG shares his graphs every stream in discords. That could be possible, but from, well, I don't, unfortunately I can't play in those pools anymore, but when, when we were playing in it, there was a big discussion amongst all of our friends on how good he actually is, if he's actually winning and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, well, I will... But he's not even selling coaching as far as I, I understand, so... Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if he is as well. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him about it because uh, he and I are now new buddies after we had a little debate about GTO versus non-GTO. He didn't really know the definition of GTO. Uh, he was very confused about that, but he did seem to have a good understanding of, uh, of poker sure. at least. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> That's, that's a debate, well, I mean, that's a debate that could last hours, but all I know is like some of the tests that I've been doing, it's really opening up my eyes onto, I guess, where the money's actually made and what actually is GTO, especially nowadays when there's so many different types of solvers and different ways of solving the game and simplifying and the fact that, you know, nobody even has a real good grasp of what exactly proper preflop is. I mean, I, I don't know if we can ever even say like, what, what is GTL? Like, what, is, what does that even mean when we don't know it? Cool. Uh, I'm gonna let Richard Johnson come on now, mostly because you have that delay in uh, sounds. <laughs> it's, uh, it was great having sure. you on, Matt, and thank you for sharing your, your wisdom. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right, see ya. Peace. Cool, shout out to Matt. Uh, again, I think I can post his, his blog post. Oh, Richard, you're back. Hello. This is the, you. Uh, you first went on under the alias of Elaine. Yeah, Captain Nemo is my name <laughs> in the micro stakes. <laughs> you got it. What are, What are we discussing today, Mister Mister Richard Johnson? Uh, it's it's a little bit about poker coaching, and uh, uh, obviously, I'm a, a micro stakes player, and. I obviously want to learn the game. And I look to you, obviously. Uh, you stood out in your uh, 
YouTube videos, uh, Pete Clark stood out. There's one, 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 one or two others, but I think judging them on their on their winnings and basing it on the on how much how much they've won as to how much they can charge, etc. It's, it's it's I don't know. You're a, a very good teacher. Pete Clark is a very very good teacher, and I've learned so much. And I've, I've gone from two NL up to five NL uh, on the basis of uh, the free stuff I've had off you and the free stuff I've had off Pete, and obviously other people. Nice, nice, going, good, good job, dude. Yeah, go, going into um, you know lo- looking into like. You know, if if you're going to base two hundred NL or uh, uh, high stakes uh, high stakes tournaments on teachers, like you're kind of making a big mistake. Where you should be, you should be able to know the game to to enter them tournaments, them big massive tournaments. So as for learning, I don't think it matters. Um, what 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 what, um, what 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 you got behind you? What 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 you know? As long as you can teach it, um, good. Then you could teach it. Mm. Yeah. For so, I know that it is important to be a good teacher, but at the same time, you can't teach somebody how to be 100 NL on, you know, PokerStars if you can't personally be 100 NL on PokerStars. You might be able to give them little tidbits, but you won't be able to give them an overall holistic view of what that looks like. But surely <laughs> that, that if, it, if it helps uh, a, one N, a 2 NL to get to a 5 NL, to get to a 10 NL, surely if you can teach it, then should you be judged? No, not judged at all. I don't, and I, I, I don't think we were judging anybody. But uh, what, what we do want to do is kind of speak out and add, add a lot more transparency to the poker community. Uh, oh, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, that's 100%. But <clears throat> it's, like, like I say, I've, I've picked you, Charlie, Carlo. I've picked Pete Clark. I've picked one or two others. There's others I wouldn't even entertain. I wouldn't even look at that. It's, it's, there's no point. It's, they're just trying to send me something. That's fine. That's, a, that's great. But not for my game. Yeah. Cool. So I, I, look, I, I look at people who can teach and who, uh, I think uh, one of your statements on your uh, YouTube videos was, fuck you, to your, and I was like, oh. Okay, this guy's got something good to say, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I, I've started watching him, and I've learned so much about the game. Yeah, I'm not going to be a Christian. I'm not going to be a, uh, you know, a, a hundred, two hundred NL player. Not with that attitude, Richard. But I believe in you. You seem like a curious yeah. fella. What stops no, you? I, what I, stops I, you I, from I, reaching the high stakes? I, I play, play for fun. I, I work. I got family. I play pure fun. Cool. Well, th- thank you for but, thank you but, for coming on. But, and, oh, okay. But I want to get better. Hell and yeah! Think, that's what I that's what pe- we're here for, man. People like you and people like like P. Clark. I, I think people like Dan Legrand as well. It's another good one. They we're all peas in the same they, pod. <laughs> they they give snippets of information, but. You know, yeah, okay. Maybe I'll be playing in ten in a year time. Maybe I'll be be playing in twenty. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. going to go to Vegas. And, oh, I bet you could one day, my yeah. friend. Yeah, I'll I'll, but, I'll I'll give you this as parting parting advice, perhaps. And th- thank you so much for coming on and and speaking so fairly and and articulately. Um, I would say don't ever undersell yourself and don't ever underestimate how how bad people are at poker. You know, if you went to Vegas, uh, you know, if, if you can even beat 25 and L online, you'll be able to, you'll be able to crush it like one, three in Vegas and make like maybe like 30, $40 an hour. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely not out, outside of your reach. I believe that almost everybody's capable of getting to that level at least. 
Um, but I'll, I'll go to the next person now. Tommy Hamilton's in the chat. But uh, thank okay, you so much for coming on, Mr. Mr. Richard Ham nice. Johnson. Ta-da. 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 Love. <laughs> All right, give it up for Richard. Thanks, guys. And um, we have what looks like a professional poker player making his Epiphany Poker debate debut, uh, Tommy Hamilton. Hey, Charlie. I'm definitely not a professional poker player. I'm actually quite bad at poker, but uh, I'm pretty good at IT, and, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about, sort of um, the realm of cryptocurrency from like the, the point of the technology. Fuck yeah, all right, let's just get out of the realm of poker for a second. Guys, put your Bitcoin hats on. Start start wearing those HODL t-shirts. Bitcoin to the moon, fiat to the grounds. Let's fucking go. What are we, what are we talking about? So I guess, uh, first question, <laughs> what's your feeling on, on crypto? I think I've heard you talk a little bit before about how you feel that it's the future, how you see maybe Bitcoin specifically is... Um, like maybe the future of currency is is that accurate or would you say that you think something different cool yeah i i'm just going to give a li little bit of a thing to the to the chat uh we're hit, generally on these streams we talk about literally fucking anything so you know we were talking about poker before and now we're just talking about crypto and we're just going to go with it so uh, fucking enjoy uh i believe that as humanity evolves the structures around it need to co-evolve with it in in a kind of parallel way so as people spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, intellectually evolve, you know, we, we outgrow feudalism, we, we outgrow monarchies and patriarchies like that. And we, we outgrow certain types of economic structures, certain types of political structures, certain types of religious structures. And uh, at the moment, it feels like we're outgrowing the fiat currency and cryptocurrency, which is a lot more nuanced, but has a lot more integrate integratable ability within corporates entities within charitable entities within yeah it's just a lot a lot more to it and it's a lot more decentralized and giving a, a lot of power back to people if we get it right which we you know could also get it wrong yeah and i think you're right about all that i think that you're right that as time goes on you know these systems that built society go away and then new systems that are better for the newer society are, arrive I guess my position is specifically that I don't think that crypto in its current form is the answer, and I certainly don't think that Bitcoin is the answer specifically. And so some of the reasons why I think that are, um, have, you ever, have you ever done any sort of transactions in other blockchains, maybe like Polygon or something, some of the lesser known? So you have like Bitcoin, the Ethereum blockchain, but then some of the other lesser known uh, blockchains like Polygon or yep, something yep, like yep. that? Yeah. Okay, so one of the things that you might notice is that number one, the transactions take a lot less time, and number two, the transactions are a lot cheaper, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, the problem that I see with Bitcoin is that in order for it to really take its place as a <laughs> currency, the adoption would have to be so widespread that it basically becomes as ubiquitous as cash. Would you agree? Um, it depends what 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 it wants to fill, like. Some people will say Bitcoin is is only meant to be used for kind of like larger transactions in the future. Some people think that it is going to also be for microtransactions. And I think the, the steel man case for those people would be that the technology is going to evolve and it will become cheaper and faster. Maybe that's the case. Um, you know, I look at things like the, the Visa credit card, you know, that are um, backed by Bitcoin. And I look at different governments that are accepting it as legal tender and that's a little bit different than buying a Ferrari. That's, I would say, toward the, the, the edge of microtransactions. Um, you know, if, if you're going to go to the store, um, those types of things being done in Bitcoin, I, I think is unrealistic. And the reason is because the, the technology that backs Bitcoin, it, it, it's a distributed network of a, a graph database, basically. And so this technology has been around for quite a long time. It's just been applied to this realm of cryptocurrency. And one of the nice things about it is that it's a distributed system. So there's not like a centralized power, right? Yeah. Um, if, if I'm running this, like if I'm Visa, then I can just decide when your transactions are confirmed or not. But because this is decentralized, it takes you know a number of nodes on the network to confirm the transactions. And so there's no centralized power that can muck things up. But the, the thing that makes that so powerful is also the downfall of the technology, because again, for it to, you know, take the place of uh, a currency in the world, it would have to grow to such a size, and then that, 
that consensus network would have to grow to such a size that the transactions are going to take way too long and also they're going to be much too expensive. And you see this again when you use a, a chain like Polygon, transactions really fast because there's less nodes to confirm through and then the fee is a lot less because you're paying you know less people competing for, for gas prices. <clears throat> and so I've seen some things like Lightning that um, are you know second layer um, technology that's supposed to address this, but I just haven't really seen anything that's going to solve this problem. And you've probably seen it with Bitcoin, especially when, when it's peak times. Sometimes people are paying hundreds or thousands of dollars just for gas fees and it takes you know 10 minutes. If you're at a store, that's completely unrealistic. Number one, that you're gonna be waiting that amount of time, or number two, that you're gonna pay that amount of money for a transaction. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to re, be real with you. I don't have enough knowledge to debate this at all. Um, it's uh, it's something that I feel very strongly, but it's not something that I can articulate with with like precision or knowledge. So there's a very good chance you're just right. And I'm fucking I have no idea what I'm uh, what I'm talking about. Um, but at the same time, yeah, it's, it's not something I, I'd be able to go back and forth about. No problem. And the <clears> last thing I'll say is like the the reason why Ethereum 2 came out is because they saw that this problem existed, right? And so what they sought to do is make the the, the contract of, um, like when you're writing data to the blockchain, make that smaller so that the transactions can happen faster. Um, but, but again, I, I just think that it's like a, a chicken and an egg scenario. In order for Bitcoin to become a ubiquitous currency, it would have to grow to a, an unsustainable size with the current technology. So. Uh, just wanted to put those thoughts out there. I, I'm not like a naysayer for crypto. I just, you know, have a hard time wrapping my head around how the technology is going to work at scale. At scale, excuse me. I love it. I love it. I barely understand what you're saying, but I love it. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Tommy, for coming on. No, thanks. Appreciate it, man. <clears throat> All right, beautiful people. Let's get uh, who should we look at next? Let's get Jonathan Littles up. Jonathan Little. Da, 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 Has anyone taken Jonathan Little's courses? Has anyone ever taken his classes? Has anyone ever done his stuff? Um, let's get this up. Let's make my face small again. Boop, boop, ba, ba, da, ba, ba. Jonathan Little. Ba, da, 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 da. 7.7 million. I mean, he ain't no Charlie Carroll, but that's pretty... I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <coughs> holy shit, he's playing 50Ks these days? Jonathan just out there crushing it, huh? Da -da 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 -da. And remember, for each one of these that you see, there's going to be like a six or seven that you don't see. So he's he's out there he's out there throwing some fucking hefty money around. But 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 yeah, his micro tapes is good. Shout out to Ish your boy Bad Shah. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Feel free to introduce yourself. ACR banned him. Why why would they why would ACR ban ban him? Ace Spade says John lost a lot of money a while back and started pounding his coaching. I don't I don't know if that's true. His masterclass course is great. Help me learn a lot. Fuck yeah. It's just hard. It's hard, isn't it? Unless people post their their results and their winnings, uh, their profits and things like that. It's just really fucking hard to know. Wow, he's been playing since 2006. Since your boy Charlie was uh, 13 years old. Holy shit. <clears throat> he's been playing 10Ks to, since 2006. Wow. Yeah, he's he's old school guys. This is this is wild stuff. No I no idea if this is even gonna be a you know, plus money there, but very well could be. Very well could not be. Hard to say. <coughs> Depends how much high stakes he was playing. Jonathan Little, he has jonathanlittlepoker.com. I thought he also owned pokercoaching.com. I swear he owns pokercoaching.com. Yeah, 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 okay. I'm 
pretty cool. Classic website, try for free. Hi, I'm Jonathan Little, and I want to welcome you to PokerCoaching.com. <laughs> no matter what your skill... He's so funny. I really like Jonathan, by the way. My, my, my internal bias here is I really like Jonathan. Learn from world-class pros. Who have we got here? I recognize Faraz Jaka. I recognize Jonathan. Should we try and should we try and name all I recognize Evan Jarvis? Should we try and name all these people? I recognize that guy because he's the guy that cried when he lost that big hand in WSOP. Um I'm sure he did a lot more. Isn't his name Ben Affleck or something? Or no, that's the That's the actor. Something like that. It's like something Affleck. Giraffe Ganger. Oh, is this Giraffe Ganger? He's this giraffe ganger looks like how giraffe ganger plays like. <laughs> oh shit, Matt Affleck. Okay, cool. Yeah, th this this guy looks exactly how I'd expect giraffe ganger to look, <laughs> judging <laughs> judging on how he plays. Jonathan Jaffe, which one's that? <clears throat> Is that Jonathan Jaffe? Yeah. Love a little bit for us. Uh wait, is this guy Jonathan Jaffe? So that's up left. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Cool. I paid my team of world class coaches over six hundred and fifty K so far to create hundreds of coaching webinars and interactive hand quizzes that you can learn from. By the way, guys, join my Discord, it's free. I'm just gonna show you my Discord real quick whilst we're we're looking into looking into Mr. Jonathan. Open Discords. I'm not going to show you my DMs. One second. Epiphany Poker. Check this out. Oh my goodness. Epiphany Poker Discord. Just look at arrivals quickly. Holy shit. Whenever I stream, a lot of people join. This is, it's been like a thousand people joined last week or something. <coughs> Some crazy number. Um, you can go to the elite and get a lot of elite chat. We're doing weekly sessions and then monthly free sessions if you want to join for free. I can invite you guys by saying, here are, invite people, copy this, boom, boom, boom. Join it for free. And I'm talking in there every day, hand histories. I'll be jumping on calls. I don't know if people are on calls at the moment. Um, yeah, a couple of people having a call at the moment, watching somebody, um, watching somebody run deep on the elite thing. Uh, I really like this feature. And again, this is still quite early days. We still have a lot of features that we're, we're getting into. I really like this feature where uh, you can look at different hand histories and they're segmented, right? So, you know, we can we can look at, uh, you know, this, this one was posted, let's look at this one. King nine suited. Um, <clears throat> we're on the button with king nine of clubs. Cut off check. Wait, wait, what happens, Bree? Cut off opens. We three bet. Fold call check. Bet call with a double gutty. Check check on the 10. Makes a lot of sense. Cut off checks. Hero bets $4.29. Yeah, I think you probably just get heroed here a lot, my friend. That's the problem. And uh, I think what I would do is actually over bet. <clears throat> So we can see me giving insight, and I'm doing this all the time, giving insight into different cash game strategies, MTT hands, there's so much on there. We're doing weekly calls. Uh, we're gonna have a lot more added to this as well. And also, you will get a bunch of free stuff if you join epiphanypoker.com. Get a bunch of free stuff. If you click join now, or wherever you wanna click it, you get the starter thing for fucking free. You can join as a starter, get a bunch of my, um, a bunch of my content, elite members that you have no idea how much content you guys it was going to be getting. It's like all of my master classes, this the mini master class on range analysis, the big master class on cash games, loads of coaching for MDTs, loads of coaching for cash games, loads of fucking everything. Uh, this is a one time payment. It's basically the same as this, a little bit more and a little bit more access. 
Um, there's also going to be uh, yeah, a lot of leaderboard things, accountability buddies, things like this happening. It's early access. If you join within the next 11 days, you're going to get cheap for life. The price will never go up if you get it now. Uh, whereas if you join 11 days, it's going to be $77. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah, that is... Uh, in my opinion, we're building the best poker community the world's ever seen. Anyway, back to Jonathan Little. Doesn't give his winnings so far. Um, would be would be good to see. But at the same time, I think what Jonathan's done really well is he's he's got other coaches on. And he's getting like, I mean, this guy's fucking amazing at poker. This guy, I'm pretty sure, is amazing at poker as well. Girat, uh, this guy's amazing at poker. I'm sure a bunch of them are as well. And I, I, I don't know the rest of them. Um, and so it doesn't really matter how much Jonathan's making or winning or anything like that, because now he's managed to diversify his coaches into, into others. And something I've not done yet is something I've considered for a long time. Um, but I, but I've decided against having other coaches, uh, coaching at the moment, <coughs> just because a lot of people don't, they, I, I, I take coaching and teaching so seriously and a lot of people just don't get it. A lot of people don't get how to teach people. You need to like layer up a thought process. You need to start from the bottom where they're at, cut away the bullshit, which takes, you know, not too much time, but it, it's really important to be able to directly say to somebody, you're thinking about this in the wrong way. This is bullshit. This is bollocks. This is bullshit. And then, and then build up from there. And you can't, you can't just throw them in the deep end of balancing ranges. You can't just throw them in the deep end of this because they, they need to understand the game in a layered perspective. And to find coaches that really understand that is, is actually really, really tough. Um, wait, let me, let me put fucking epiphanypoker.com in the chat. If anyone wants to join, <coughs> epiphanypoker, oh fuck, I put doc, dot on, fucking Charlie, dot fucking on. Can't take a serious person when it says winning at 49 BB per hundred. Who said that? Who said 49 BB per hundred? Oh, somebody, Zancy said, yeah. So you're probably not winning on 49 BB per hundred um, in a long term, but it's great if you had a short term stint like that and you were crushing. That's fucking, fuck yeah, good. Of course, I recognize grips. Yeah, so far, so far as of yesterday, and I, I did have a losing day today, so it's going to be less. Uh, so far as of yesterday, over, I think, 15k hands or 13k hands or something, I was winning at 32 big blinds per 100 on GG. 32. That's crazy. That's pre-rake, so post-rake, it was probably closer to, like, 24. But honestly, I that's fucking insane. Like, that that level of uh, win rate in that sample is, 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 uh, is, pretty, is pretty unholy. Uh, if anybody wants to come on and debate me about anything or disagree with me on anything, this would be great. Uh, it looks like there aren't too many fucking scammers at the moment out of the ones that we've seen. A uh, little, little bit skeptical about a couple of things that I've seen. Um, but yeah, let's see. Let's see what this guy wants to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, making his Epiphany Poker debate stream debut, we have the one, the only. Phew. Hello. Hi, Phew. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you well. Okay, perfect. First, thanks for having me. That's all right. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about I watched your streams a couple of days ago. I think you played like NL two hundred Zoom on Stars. I think it was I think it was fifty. Fifty. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> doesn't really matter because. You said that you don't use HUD on stars. Oh, yeah. And uh, your reasoning behind it was that uh, it's uh, unethical. Hell, yeah. Because the guy who's sitting there, probably recreational, uh, doesn't even know what HUD is. Exactly. Well, what if you like play GTO against this guy or like uh, use something you learned from a book? And he probably never heard about that. So if there was a line you had to draw, where would it be? So, 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 so let, let me, let me throw that back to you and perhaps you can answer it for yourself. Imagine mm -hmm. I, imagine I challenge you to a high stakes chess duel, right? Mm -hmm. And we're playing behind computers 
you think we're playing chess. What I'm actually doing is I've got my my uh, my opening charts, you know, my opening fucking first 10 moves just mapped out mm. for me. And I have in front of me an artificial intelligence that tells me that you have uh, the biggest losing streak when you play certain openings and then tells me which which moves to play to bring you into the nodes of chess, which you have the, the biggest losing rate on. But you're completely unaware of that. Is that is that an unfair advantage? Yeah, I would get so, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's the exact equivalent of having opening charts and HUDs. So, what you're saying is like it's uh, too personal. What I'm saying is that pe people turn up to play chess, so they should be playing chess. If people think that they're playing chess with additional computer help, then people should play chess with additional computer help. So when people turn up to play poker, they think they're playing the same game that they play with their mates down in the garage for fucking ten dollars a, a go, uh, and then they find out two years later after they've lost five thousand dollars of their of their kids lunch money that suddenly oh actually, actually all of these people have been having a uh, computer generated help getting stats about me that i didn't even know existed and i i didn't sign up for that nobody told me it was happening it was completely unfair yeah i i hear you but <clears throat> at the same time like uh, i agree that having hard is uh like enormous advantage, especially when you are multi-tabling. Oh yeah. But at, but at the same time, if you were just playing one table, the HUD doesn't really tell you something that you can tell yourself. No, it's not true. It just it, it's not true. Really? Yeah, dude. If you're not if you don't know that, then you're not using a HUD very well. Like there's there's no way that a HUD can tell me that. Sorry, there's no way that without a HUD, I'll be able to know that somebody's opening twenty three percent under the gun RFI. You know? Yes, I mean, sure, if you go like to the exact numbers, <coughs> like over a sample of 1k hands, let's say he has a check fold of 26%, obviously you're not going to remember that. But I'm saying it's not like, um, I, I agree that uh, it's pretty much cheating, but uh, what I'm saying is that it's uh, extracting from the data that if you had like a super brain or uh, you could remember yourself yep i don't know if i, I don't so, know so so you agree it's sense, cheating but... right yeah i i do okay so it sounds but... sounds like you came on to disagree but you ended up agreeing no no i was just i was just uh, wondering where the line would be if you had to like if if using hut is unethical is is using like a gpo that the guy also probably also haven't heard of no because that's part of the game you know, like he, he might have heard of the Merb where you haven't heard of the Merb. And that's part of the game that he signed up to play. He knows that people might know things about poker that he doesn't. And I know that he might know things about poker that I don't, even though it's less likely. Um, or, you know, there'd be less things, fewer things. Um, but that that's how he, like this person behind the screen that doesn't know about HUDs, that's how, that's how he understands the game of poker. That's what he signs up for. That's what he's playing. And so to, to take advantage of him... Uh, by using unfair means is, is is super unethical and that's why i don't use it all right <clears throat> yeah, well i guess that pretty much answers my question so are you going to stop using hud uh no ah so you yeah, well, so you, you've I heard mean, you've I heard mean, it here ladies and gentlemen mr few knows consciously um, that it's unethical but still refuses to put down his hud for the sake of what what's your reasoning um, you, by the way, by the way, your facial expression right now, I'm a live read expert, is somebody that just got caught cheating on their girlfriends in the act and is trying to explain the texts that are on his phone. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I mean, if, if I'm going to be uh, tagged as a cheater, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. But uh, <coughs> it's, it's pure, uh, the reason is pure uh, money. Like if, it's my, if, my, if, my, if I can increase my win rate by using something that's allowed on the side I'm playing on, I'm gonna be using it. If no one else can use it, I'm not gonna be using it either. So uh, that's pretty much my uh, my position. And if I was, if I have won millions in the past, or if I was in the position you are in, then I would be. I would probably have no reason to do that anymore. But uh, as a struggling poker player, uh, I'm gonna keep. Keep using how to decide uh, 
So and I I just want to I just want to clear clear make that clear and concise. You missed a few. Understand that it's unethical to steal money off other people unfairly, but you're still going to continue to steal money off other people unfairly because you're struggling at poker. No, but mostly because other people are if other people are allowed to use use it, then me not using it is going to put me into in disadvantage. Uh, yep, that's the whole thing about doing the right thing. Sometimes it comes with a short-term disadvantage, but you just have to fucking cross your fingers and pray that karma exists, and you're gonna get your 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 you're gonna reap the rewards in some other some other lifetime. So yeah, I'm just <laughs> what I'm trying to say is uh, if if the difference between using HUD and not using it while other people are using it is uh, making and not making money. Then as long as it's allowed, uh, I'll be using it. Yeah, <coughs> today it, it probably not probably, but it for sure is unethical. But um, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, no. Before before you, there's somebody in the chat. I just want to give a give a call out to. There's a guy called Skill Full the Best that just says, "Jesus Christ, Charlie, your argument is insane." And uh, the link is in the chat for Skill Full the Best to jump on and tell me exactly why my argument is insane. And if not, you're a little pansy, little bitch, little, little crybaby. <laughs> I'm just messing, just messing. Anyway, sorry what we said. Oh, yeah. Mm. So, like most of the high stakes games, uh, you usually only see to be running when there is a recreational or fish play. Oh, yeah. Because obviously when two ricks are going to battling each other, each other, one of them will be winning, the other one will not. So uh, it only it only pretty much runs when there is a recreational. So yeah, to me, I know you already explained why you think that using GTO or something you learned from a course or a book is not <coughs> unethical while using Hadis, but and you agree, yeah, and you, and you just agreed, and you're like, I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying I disagree, I'm just saying that um, when five people, like, in a six max there is five professionals and one recreational, then, like, uh, and they know that they will get this guy's money eventually, they are also kind of, like, behaving unethically. All right, so fuck it, everyone, just get your cheat sheets out, get your RTA out, get your bots no, out. Um, Everyone's cheating out there, so you might as well do it too. Every man for himself, good luck. Nah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just, uh, I'm just bad at putting, uh, putting my thought into words. But it's it's a very clear spot, man. It's it's very obviously unethical to use a HUD um, uh, if other people aren't aware of it. Uh, I understand that it's not easy to put it down because you will be losing edge versus other eggs, which is which is very annoying. Um, and that that's an ethical decision that only you can make. And no, no one's going to fucking think you're the, the next Hitler for, for making that decision. But you are making an un unethical decision knowingly. Um, but it's it's not a, it's not a, it's not the worst thing in the world. Every every single person that's listening to this bar, maybe like one or two are going to be doing more uneth unethical things in their life at somewhere. So no, you know, no, no hard feelings, and maybe one day you'll look back and be like, oh, maybe I should have done that, but it's okay. No, it's com it's com completely fine. I, uh, I don't think of myself as a bad person, but I will be keep you, keep using hard as as long as it's allowed. So. All right, cool. Let's wrap it up then. I got a guy called Fishin. Okay. Um, it was great to speak All to you, right. Mr. Few. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, is my Twitch title still uh, exposing poker scammers? What the fuck? Hello, Mr. Fish. Mr. Fish, you are muted if you're trying to speak. Hello there, sir. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, if you're looking for a different microphone, you can usually hit the bottom left. There's an arrow, and then you click the arrow. 
and then choose your microphone. <clears throat> this is what I'm talking about. It's very nice when we add streamers on. All right. Well, whilst this guy works out his, uh, whilst this guy works out his microphone, I'm going to go grab a drink. I'll be back in like a minute. Has Mr. Fish managed to make his microphone? If not, you're gonna get booted. All right, Mr. Fish, it turns out you're a technological fish as well. So, with all love and all respect, get out of my stream, punk. Om namah shivaya om. All right, anybody else want to debate me on anything? I got a lot of very controversial top, uh, opinions. Could be poker, could be anything. Talk to me about vaccines. Talk to me about aliens. Talk to me about poker. Talk to me about veganism, that's a good one. What are some other controversial opinions, guys? <clears throat> if others using HUDs, it'd be plain stupid not to, says Bradley. Well, it depends what you consider stupid, because I think being unethical is stupid. But if you think that just maximizing EV is the most intelligent thing to do, then fucking good luck. What's the pink stuff I'm drinking? It is raw coconut water under the brand named Chi, C-H-I. So good. Oh, it's so much better than other coconut water. Holy shit. Is baby getting MMR? What's MMR? Toddler, toddler duty. Yeah. How about the lack of med medicalization that I'm having in, in my child's life? <clears throat> we had a home birth. We didn't have any uh, any drugs, any painkillers, any scans. And like one, one scan. I had, some, I had some stuff back in America because I had, had to. Not getting any, uh, any vaccines yet. We'll see. We'll see in the future. Hospitals, by the way. Hospital births, most of you won't know this. Hospital births are so traumatic to mothers. Al almost always. Pretty much always. Maybe always. Um, maybe, maybe not in like very, very private hospitals that have like water births and things like that. But... The medical procedures that they do are so traumatic to the body and to the mother. And they, they cut the umbilical cord too, too quickly. They wash the baby. They take the baby away too quickly. They do loads of things. and Oh, my God. The, 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 the drugs that they put in women to induce birth, uh, I think it's called prolactin. The, there's, so, there's so many fucking things that if you looked into it, a bunch of you would be like, fuck it, what? That happens in our fucking in our hospitals and the amount the amount of people that come out of there just deeply traumatized is, is fucking insane what did i have birth yeah i had home birth <clears throat> how did i do at home do i have a doctor um no doctor no med no official medical professional uh, so if anyone wants to come debate that that'd be a fun one what do you think the ratio of stupid slash evil of world elite I'd say it's more evil than most people think. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people in the world that are dedicated to evil. Do I have a medical background, Charlie? Nope. If you mean, do I, did I go to med school or anything like that? No. <clears throat> How did you do it? Like, who helped your wife, girlfriend? <clears throat> um, let's say it was, it was just me. It was just me. I want to be very clear. 
that I don't think um, that is what everybody should do. I don't think every any everybody should. In fact, I wouldn't tell anybody what to do in, in any situation. Sometimes hospitals is going to be best for people because they, they don't have anything better. Um, but Hannah and I were very, very well prepared. We had a lot of uh, a lot of resources, a lot of money, a lot of education that we could buy. And also just a good connection to ourselves and to our body. And uh, yeah, we were very confident and everything went swimmingly. <clears throat> Um, two questions. Kate, one came from, Hey Charlie, when should I move to NL5? If I did $20 to $50 in one week, 10k hands, should I move to NL5? I would say move to NL5 minimum $100 once you've beaten NL2, um, up to $100. And then the way that I do it, and this is a very aggressive way of doing it. And the way that I, I would do it is when I, when I move up, say a hundred, if I then lost three buy-ins at NL5, so then go, losing $15 down to $85, then I'd move down to NL2 and then try and get back up to a hundred again and then do it like that. If you had to give yourself a poker ELO without, what would it be knowing that GM equals 2,600? Um, yeah, it would definitely be GM. <clears throat> it wouldn't be super top GM. It'd be like the one below that. Is Hannah only breastfeeding? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, maybe 2700. Not not like Magnus level, um, and not like Hikaru and um, <coughs> whoever else level. And the reason for that is online, I would just get I would just get my ass handed to me by some, some of these people. Live, I feel very confident against literally anybody in the world. But um, online, I, uh, I would get my ass handed to me. Prenup? No, no prenup. Uh, did you have midwife? No midwife. Isn't that high risk for medical complications? Depends what you mean by high risk, but the, the statistics are actually a lot a lot better than most people seem to think. <clears throat> Charlie Cow, I'm so glad you know about births. Yeah, I'm so glad we know too, because hearing some stories from friends and from just people online and people like the doula and the midwife we're now working with postpartum, the some of some of the stories they hear are just fucking horrible like people being emotionally manipulated into getting c-sections when they don't need them into not having them when they do need them um into you know ha <clears throat> like a lot of the drugs that they use that they think are doing a lot of good are actually doing so much harm you know they they will they'll have a scheduled date for the birth and they'll they'll give a, a woman i think it's prolactin is the drug but some kind of drug that induces birth and it just messes up with the whole process. And it's it's the, the classic cliche bullshittery of modern science. And again, I'm not shitting on the whole of modern science because there's a lot of benefits to it. But it's the classic bullshittery of believing that we can play God. Believing that we can mess around with something that's been built over hundreds of thousands of years by just like fucking changing one thing and giving them one hormone. And thinking that isn't going to have like immense repercussions. And it's, it's fucking insane. It's fucking insane. So did anyone here feel scammed once they learned about HUDs or feel the same um, about everyone thing they learned a benefit? Well, when I when I told True Geordie about HUDs, it was like five sessions in to him playing high stakes. And I told him, I was like, oh, I haven't actually mentioned these guys have HUDs, they have stats. And he was like, what? That seems kind of cheaty, doesn't it? And um, I think that's a pretty common thing. It's oxytocin, not prolactin. Yeah, I might, I might just... Uh... Epiphany 77, you really just ignore questions about your cash results. Uh, well, when you phrase it like that, it makes me want to ban you. But instead of banning you, what I'll do is I'll invite you into the chat, Mr. BM Black. <clears throat> and you're very welcome to come have a conversation with me about my cash game results. Uh, but right now, we do actually have somebody in the in the, in the the waiting room, which I didn't realize. Making his Epiphany Poker debut, we have Andreas. <laughs> Joke says calling board. Welcome to the stream, my friend. Hey, uh, how are you doing? I'm already on stream. I just got to quit the tables really quickly. No problem. My throat's hurting a little bit, so I'm speaking a little bit uh, more quietly and gently than, than I normally would. 
Um, where's the... I don't hear you actually. Um, just a second. <clears throat> testing, testing. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Testing, testing. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three, oh, one, two, three, oh, one, two, three, oh, testing, testing, one, two, three, oh, one, two, three, oh, uh, hi. Okay, no, it's, it's all fine. All right, cool. Yeah. It's good, I was running out of uh, lyrics. Yeah. I was just saying the same ones over and over again. All right, Mr. Andreas, welcome to the Piffin yeah. Poker de uh, Debate Debut. What are we here to talk about? I mean, uh, just uh, following up on the hot thing, um, have you ever, like considered any um, analogies like with like the you know pro gamers like World of Warcraft for example or or Le Le legions or no I, I don't I don't know I don't know anything about them yeah because if you um, like think about like a game with add-ons I think like a hard is like very comparable to add-ons wouldn't you say so um, in the in <clears throat> these environments do all the players that they're playing against at the top levels know about these add-ons. Um, yeah, over time at the top they know, but it's like the same thing in, in poker, right? And at the moment, like if you watch, for example, like most sites, like GG Poker, like even recreational, see that there's like an inbuilt hut. So at that point... Yeah, G GG does like, it great. GG, GG I, I, fully, I fully think that the GG hut is, is, is an incredible way of balancing the field. But let's talk about poker stars, where people don't know that these things exist. They don't have access to them. They're not even told about them as they log into the software. I mean, yeah, you could argue, like, in, in a way that, like, the size responsibility is to inform players that these add-ons exist, right? Like, you yeah. could, like, then have the ethical burden on the on the poker sites itself. But I think it's, like, somewhat disingenuous, like, to blame the players who is using an add-on to do that. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, see, let's yeah. use the word disingenuous a little bit more precisely. What do you mean disingenuous? <clears throat> yeah, I think it's, it's a little bit uh, reaching uh, towards, like, Blaming a player that uses a hat on poker stars. All right, that that's um, not that's not what disingenuous means. Just be clear. Um, I think yeah, but but because like you're projecting your standard of like an ethical boundary violation on that person, whereas I think like generally speaking, that's like super super debatable. So I, I do think that's that's a bit um, uh, yeah, quite quite uh, yeah, reaching. Like, why why would you say that? <coughs> Okay, just just be clear. Disingenuous, yeah. disingenuous means like dishonest and unsincere and insincere and things like that. Um, yeah. But so not not that. But the ethical. So when when there is an action, there are, let's say, somebody in society that's taking advantage of somebody uh, financially. You know, it might be illegal sorry it might be legal for that person to take advantage of this old lady financially by kind of like coercing her into buying a product uh, at the door but by you know mild intimidation <clears throat> uh, and you can make the argument okay well it should be on society to make this illegal because other salesmen are being coercive and manipulative and 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 uh, harassing these old ladies so obviously this guy has to otherwise he won't be able to c catch up with his competitors Whereas in actuality, the the ethical um, the ethical uh, sorry weighting is going to be on society, but also on the person that's doing it. There's two layers to it. You have you 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 always have to take full responsibility and autonomy and accountability for your own actions, even if you're in a situation which might short term incentivize unethical behavior. Yeah, but in that uh, on that regard, um, you know that person who is at the lady store like. Doing that is, is fully like trying to scam someone. Whereas using an add-on in a game, yeah, all bait the game is being played for money, um, is like something entirely different. You can say that okay, there's there's this nuance, right? Where <coughs> pokers get played for dollars in the, all the other games, uh, where people are maybe unaware of add-ons that are quite useful, um, like in gaming sometimes. Um, they give a non-fair advantage to certain players. So like in, in competitive gaming, most of the time people would argue that that's just the responsibility of a competitor to look for, you know, add-ons, so to speak. I think like a HUD is like a very, very clear example of an add-on, if you, if you ask me. 
Right. Whereas I think the ethical boundary, like if you want my opinion on it, uh, is like clearly crossed whenever you are using data that hasn't been gathered by yourself. So then you can, I think, make the argument that, yeah, you, you have, for example, like somehow bought hand histories from somewhere. Then you, like, say you bought like two million hands from poker stars, and that's also against terms of service of poker stars, right? Uh, when you buy like two million hands somewhere and then you import them in your holding manager and then use that, then you, I think you can make the argument that that's another thing because you're using um, data that not only people are not aware of, but that comes from something that you couldn't have like managed with your brain yourself, whereas the add on, the HUD, just basically facilitates what your brain is uh, not sufficiently capable of doing. I think that's that's like where I would uh, draw the line. So if I created an add-on that was going to give me another ridiculous advantage over people, <clears throat> let's say, for instance, I created a thing that uh, scooped up data of timing tells and had with amazing precision to milliseconds the percentage chance that somebody's bluffing on particular rivers or, or cards or runouts in different spots based on their timing tells. And let's say I didn't tell anybody I was using this and it was giving me like an extra, you know, 12 BB per hundred or 15 BB per hundred in the player pool. Uh, do you think that that would be ethical for me to keep hold of um, and and not tell anyone and keep using? I would make again uh, the difference between like add-ons like that um, do exist like in the terms of you can see it will count for you there. I think there's like po uh, poker add-ons where uh, whenever you see the decision timing, right? I, I, I mean, you must have seen that this before that, you know, maybe someone tanked for 12 seconds and it, it will show you every time. I've never used that, but some people are using that. Whereas if you have like obviously an, an RTA thing, which will map out um, mass scale, um, like timing tells, I think obviously that's, that's going to be like AI assistance. And then obviously that, that's like cheating in my book too. I mean, same as RTA, right? If you're using anything more than like an add-on that just tracks like the VPI, for instance, I think then, then we're entering cheating territory. So, I mean, the line so I, 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 yeah, I'm not really feeling from you where, where there's a line. It feels like there's just a really blurry line of like things that you want to use and things you don't want to use and things you want to use are, are, are ethical and things you don't want to use are unethical. And to me, it's like, it's very clear what the line is. If the other person is aware that I'm using it and can use it, then it's okay to use. If they're signing up and they're, they're you know, signing in, putting their password in and putting their money down, signed up to terms of service, and they're playing a game knowing that I can use add-ons, then I'm okay using add-ons. But as soon as I'm using information or technology or whatever fucking artificial intelligence it is that they're not aware of, that it's a disparity of information, we're now no longer playing poker we're playing poker with add-ons or with HUDs or whatever you want to call them. And this is now an unfair advantage that I would have over Mr. Bloggs, who's just depositing for the first time on PokerStars. Yeah, but, but, that, that, but that's like a uh, definition, like people, like let's say people are meeting at 100, 200 ML and everyone is aware of what add-ons in, in quotes you can use and then it becomes ethical. Yeah, if, if literally everyone I was playing against would know about that, if literally, if, if even PokerStars put out a thing that said, hey guys, HUDs exist, you can download them here. If they put that on the, like, the introductory thing, then I'd be like, yeah, okay, let's use a fucking HUD. But until they do that, I'm not going to be like, well, it's, in the t it's up to PokerStars to decide what's ethical. No, I'm going to decide what's ethical. And I know that as soon as I have an unfair advantage over other people I'm playing against, that is an unethical way of playing poker. No, I think it's like much more about the, the kind of help you're, you're receiving from a tool than like everyone knowing. Because yeah, it's, at some point, if you cross a certain threshold, like people will know about tools that exist let's say all this um for example in plo it would be visions i would find that highly unethical if if people were using like you know they would click through the pre-flop thing and see well did i do that correct and then they, they click on all the flop notes and turn notes etc um there's been like obviously this debate on twitter recently right where they talked about different kind of uh kind of tto tools whereas like a, a hard is, is 
like you, you can say that okay you, you can make an argument about again the, the hand history whether data on mining has been happening but as, as I said before like most poker sites they've just given you the hut you know as a result of this and taken over responsibility of you know, leveling the playing field and thing, and I think that's a good thing. Whereas, um, just before that, um, yeah, the, the players who wanted to, you know, basically learn how to multi-table effectively were using a HUD, right? Whereas, but like for one table, I don't even see the point of a HUD because you can technically remember the entire hand history roughly like if, right. if so, you, so, so ju ju just to be clear if you don't understand the point of a hud then over one if you're one tabling then you don't understand huds huds are so fucking powerful it, it's it's unreal like no knowing what percentage somebody's stabbing turns and it, like mm. it, it, it's it's just you can't you can't keep track of that when you're playing poker there's way too many stats to keep track of and just being able to look at that and have that inform your decision is so fucking powerful so let's let's be clear even if you're one tabling, HUDs are an insane advantage if you know how to use them correctly. For some people, they're going to be a disadvantage because they'll be focusing too much on that, but they have the, the capacity to give you a huge advantage. So that, let's, put that, let's put that aside. Secondly, I'm not hearing any convincing arguments of why you can draw the line between HUD and RTA or HUD or a super HUD where perhaps a super HUD will give you even more precise things. Okay, on these boards, on these textures, he usually bluffs the, these kind of combos and these kind of hands, these kind of things are shown down. Technically, we have all of that information available, but you know, mm. a super HUD would actually just package it really nicely and say, well, you know, he's probably got like 68% of bluffs in this based on past data with this much you know, percentage certainty. Uh, you know, you could really go hardcore on that. I mean, yeah, for example, like there used to be pop-ups, right, in all the manager where you're like, okay, this guy does this and that, and then you get like these batches and stuff. I've seen it like, uh, that was years ago. Yeah, and, and you, you, could get, you, can get, you could get even more precise than that. So what, what stops you from, you know, creating your own HUD and, uh, you know, having, having things like that or having things even more precise on that that don't technically break the rules because they might not have found the specific things that you're saying. Um, but are going to give you a stupidly unfair advantage. Um, yeah, well, at these levels, as, as you said, like everyone at some point is, is aware of that, right? And it also did, like takes a lot of no, heads no, not not right? everyone's aware of that. If I if I jump onto like one KNL stars, whenever it's running, there's one recreational player at the table. There's a good chance that recreational player doesn't know what a hut is. Yeah, I mean, at the at the like normal basic level, yeah, they don't, they don't, they are, yeah. Right. So they don't. So have you have, so you have an information, so you have an information disparity against these recreational players, the players that are already worse at poker and now putting being at a huge disadvantage that they don't even know exists because you want the extra EV and you're not willing to 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 give it up for the sake of ethics. Mm, no, no, not really. I mean, in the end, you're again, as I said, you're just using the add-on that basically tracks something that you could, your brain is just not capable of remembering, right? Yeah. It's, these are just stats. It's not like, a, like, it's not going to necessarily give you the right decisions. So you still have to make a decision based on that. But, but it's, it's going to, but it's going to inform the right decisions to a superhuman level. Like, I mean, I, I would, I, I would say that like an exaggeration, right? No, but it could, like, it, let, let's, let, I mean, HUDs mm -hmm. really do, they really, if you know how to use them well, they're such a powerful tool. But Maybe I'm not as good as, as HUDs as you would be if you use them, but... Uh, I, 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 I used to say this, and it was an exaggeration, but I used to say I'd rather play without, without cards than without a HUD. And it's obvious, it's, a, it's an exaggeration, but the level of specificity I used to be, be able to get on the 500 zoom pool was insane. Like it, it, it was, it was ridiculous. If you really go deep into the stats and and, and over a mm -hmm. large sample, especially, but even over a small sample, they're super powerful. Like the RFI stats versus recreational players, mm -hmm. it it means you can go from three betting like, you know, twelve percent small blind versus cutoff to like twenty eight percent against some people because you just have their fault to three bets. You have their RFIs from cutoff being yeah. fifty percent or whatever whatever it is. And it mm -hmm. yeah, the amount of EV you get from this this is is fucking insane. And the the fact that they don't know that these things are happening to them all the time is insane. And obviously that the site should tell them, but given the site isn't telling them, we're stuck in an ethical dilemma ourselves as individuals about whether we want to take up that extra EV uh, or we want to do the ethical thing, give up the EV and have a fairer game.
Yeah, I mean, let, let's uh, like go for fast forward. Like today, let's say the Zoom pool. Um, how many people at, at, at one two PLO do you think like are not using the hub? Doesn't matter as um, long as long as there's one. I don't want to use it. Yeah, I would say that makes like pretty big difference. Um, whether there's like one or just everyone, because that one person, I think there there's still some validity to say that person has to get informed about the game the person's playing no but he he, he is informed about the game that he's playing like for instance if you and i played head heads up chess you're informed mm -hmm. about how chess is playing if i'm secretly i found this loophole in the system that i've managed to like look into your opening bases and it's going to tell me the first fucking 15 hand or uh, 15 moves that i should be playing based on your your uh a suboptimal strategies mm. that's me you know i could be like it's and an add, think, it's an add-on bro it's an add-on bro but you know if we're yeah. playing for money especially I think actually that a would be... analogy, it might be like a really good one actually and let's say you and i have played a thousand games of chess <clears throat> and um for some reason you know then then it's basically preparation before you play the chess game right you you maybe have a program an add-on that uses preparation yeah, exactly. You have add-ons and, and things that you use as preparation before you play chess, but as soon as you play chess, you're not allowed to use any technological devices. That's why they strip yeah, you of your phone. That's, that's, very, that's very good that the chess side um, obviously has that in place, and the poker side should too, should have too. I, I don't think like the responsibility over this ethical uh, dilemma should be like on a player, nor should a player be blamed on poker stars today. Wait, wait. I feel, I, I feel like you were about to give me a chess analogy. <clears throat> what was the chess analogy you were about to give me? No, that, that's what you brought the chess analogy. That like it's it's a good. I think it's a good way of comparing things. Yeah. Where exactly. the evolution of any game uh, ends up in this uh, in the side in the host hosting the game, whereas it's chess.com or poker stars doesn't matter. So so so, so ima imagine I, imagine I challenge Ike Axton to a heads up chess game right right now for for high stakes. Which by the way, Ike, if you're listening, fucking let's do it. Um, Im Im imagine I'm playing in five k five k game heads up, and I'm just playing in three three minute blitz. And I have this little little add-on thing that you know we're playing on a site that he doesn't he that he doesn't know hasn't actually uh, completely disavowed these these specific type of add-ons where it tells me how to play the first fifteen moves or the end game or whatever it is, and I don't tell him that I have this thing and I beat him for five hundred k. Would that be a scam or would that not be a scam? I don't think that it compares to like. Two players signing up on PokerStar. So, um, what what I, I what, what 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 would be the difference there? If 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 you pulled him over, like from like a regulated site like Chess.com, and pulled him on the on the shady side, then it would be a scam. But okay, let let let's say for let's say the, let, no no ignore that then. Let's say for instance, I do yeah. it on Chess Chess.com, and, and I create this new engine that somehow gets around the loopholes of of their terms of service somehow manages to to do that and i and i challenge him to 10 for 5k a game and then i beat him for 500k mm. but yeah how, how is that the same as like two people signing up on poker stars 2023 and like playing a game of poker how is it, way, how, I, how, is, how is it how is it different okay how is it different for me like if you challenge someone you're basically um organizing the game yourself right I, I think that makes a huge difference too like just going on a poker site and playing there That's, and like getting familiar it's like the, with the tiniest the tiniest the tiniest tiniest difference that doesn't change the ethics of the situation the, the 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 important variables in the situation are that i would have an unfair informational disparity against ike he wouldn't know that i would have an unfair informational disparity against him and i would be winning money off him because of that no, that that's not the only uh, thing you have. You actually, when you would uh, make that challenge, the thing you would have done is like going on this specific place. No, no, I'm 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 sa I'm saying it's chess.com. Let's call it chess.com. But I found this supercomputer. I found this supercomputer that for some reason is a loophole in their terms of service. What do you mean by let, 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 getting around? You you're not getting around. That thing, unless you're actively cheating, like using no, no, no. Let let let's let's say hypothetically that we we I I, I spend I spend like fucking ten thousand hours looking into the terms of service. I find out that you can use a certain type of anal bead up your ass uh, to cheat that they haven't they I haven't mean, technically I mean, put into. That's, that's a hypothetical. You can't right because it's 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 like in the terms of service. It's a hypothetical. To, it's a, it's a hypothetical to prove a point. Okay. Let, let's I mean, let's case, let's so let's say that this loophole exists and I found it like the loophole exists in poker stars so let's say this loophole exists and i found it in chess.com i challenge ike axton to a heads up heads up chess match 
fi- and I win 500k off him. Is that ethical? No, but hats aren't like the loophole. Like somebody's even chat saying that like hats don't. Uh, how how are they? Uh, how are they this loophole that you're comparing it with in this hypothetical scenario? How how are they? Perhaps a loophole. It's not a loophole, but it's something that people can use, uh, a technological device that is giving them an informational disparity that the other person is not aware of. That are even advertised on like the same panel sometimes as poker sites. Yeah, I'm, 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 te- I'm telling you, there are, there are recreational players that are completely unaware that HUDs exist. I, play, yeah. I played next to one. I played yeah, next also, to I played yeah, next but, to one that was literally sponsored by PokerStars. Mm-hmm. He played loads of high stakes games without knowing that people were gathering stats on him and would have mm-hmm. all of these extra information points on him. Yeah, there, are, but there are also recreations that don't know rake or they don't know the rake boundaries. That like, there's a lot that you cannot get informed on. But in these poker. these are the it's rules of poker. The, this is the game. Obviously, if you don't know like fucking hand rankings and stuff like that, yeah. But these are the these are the rules of poker. But this isn't poker. This is something extra to poker. This isn't something you can take to a home game. This isn't something you can take to when you're watching WSOP it's, online. It's highly tied towards the. However, it's it's very closely tied to the terms of service of the game, which in theory every professional and recreational player should be reading on the poker side, right? Where, like we can agree, agree on that. No, like, not every poker player should be and chess player or whatever should be reading every single terms of service of every single site that they that they sign up you to. You accept them though, and and like in theory, you should be yeah, responsible in, for yeah, that in, in, decision to accept terms in, of service. In in the court of law, nobody's gonna get nobody's gonna get sued for using a HUD. In the court of law, you're completely right, but we're not talking about in theory in the court of law. We're talking about an ethical situation for an individual to be making for their own for their own uh, well being or sense of self. Yeah, I mean, in, in the end, that's why every business has these terms of services. I understand that in the end, you can make, you can distinguish between what, what is the law and what, what isn't. And yeah, you, you can make an argument, but in, but in the end, that's, that's what the sites are. They have the terms of service. And as I said, it's a good thing that they have re- regulated HUDs on, on some of the sites. Maybe it also explains why a lot of people have moved over to GG Poker rather than Poker Stars. Maybe Poker Stars should have gone with an inbuilt hub as well. Who knows? Maybe that would have brought a lot of trust back. Um, but in the end, you can actually get informed on on these on on, this, on the simple hat. And I, not... and Ike could technically be informed if he did the ten thousand hours of research of the loophole of the anal beads up my ass. But nobody expects him to do that. I know that he's not done that, and you know that you're playing against people that don't know the HUDs exist, and you're still taking advantage of them, of them like a predator. No, I, I don't. Uh, in, in that case, like if I'm playing on Poker Stars, all I'm doing is I have a program that tracks the hands that I've played and my opponents have played, and that displays numbers. This is something that anyone can get informed on. But. Well, like I, like, like it, it, feel, it feels like you're not listening to a single word I'm saying. Like, like I said, Ike could technically be informed about the anal beads thing up my ass if he did the 10,000 hours of research. Obviously, it's possible for him to be informed. But as a, an ethical human being, I don't want that kind of unfair advantage over somebody when I know that they're not informed. Even if it's, you know, even if they could inform themselves about these extra add-ons and things, I know that he turned up to play chess and he doesn't, he doesn't know about the anal beads up, up, up my ass vibrating and telling me what to do or whatever it is. And I know that when I play on poker stars, I'm playing against recreational players that don't know that HUDs exist and mm-hmm. shouldn't even know, fucking, they shouldn't need to know that HUDs exist because they play poker for maybe 20 years with their mates. They know the rules of poker. They're, they're very familiar with rake structures and things like that. They go onto online poker. They think they're playing poker because it's called fucking Poker Stars. It's the biggest poker site. They trust it because it's got such a big name. It's got fucking Kevin Hart playing for it, whoever else. And then they find out two years down the line that they lost $5,000 to a bunch of people that had way too much information on the way that they played in a way that they didn't even think existed. You know that's happening and you're still choosing to take advantage of these people. I don't think the analogy holds true with the angle beats and everything because there you're clearly using a decision-making tool that's dictating decisions directly to you, right? That's, that's you exactly say- what a HUD is. No, you still have to make uh, your own decisions based on a very limited data. I mean, if you, like most recreations that you play, you need like at least 100, 200 hands to even like 
to stay there a half. What are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? Be, think, think for a second. A HUD is informing you on how to play. It's not telling you the precise move, but it's saying, hey, just so you know, he folds to 86% of three bets. And it, it's, it's not like this huge, like fucking masterful jump to go from he folds 86% of three bets. I'm probably going to three bet him a bunch. A HUD mm. is, is informing you how to play. It's extra information that the person doesn't know about. Just as the anal beads could be telling me, okay, well, if you go into his Sicilian yeah. defense in, in this line, he's probably, you know, he could be, you know, weak in these kind of lines or he could be weak yeah, in these kind of lines. Look, look okay, let, let's make, actually drive and uh, make an analogy to live poker. Okay, let's say you have a stable, right, of people. And somehow that stable tracks how everyone's playing in a live setting. And you share that information with each other in a WhatsApp chat. And then you say, well, that person, you know, folded like a shit ton to three bets and you tell it to someone. Now, one of your stable mates, is, is he unethical by your standards? He would be unethical to then use that information against that other player. Of course because not, because, so much of course not because in between hands, you're allowed to do whatever studying you fucking want. But if he pulls up his phone and scrolls up to your database that you have on all of these people mid on let's say it's on the turn and you find like fold to turn percentage on dry boards oh 83 okay so i bet that is cheating because he's using it in the middle of the hand yeah but it's not by the sides like it, it is within the turn yeah trs of okay do, 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 do. you're all over the place yeah. right now logically if you're going to make a point let's actually get to the end of the point i can't just have you yeah. fucking firing 16 different points as soon as you lose one part of the argument you're just onto yeah. the terms of service onto this onto that onto that let's stick to one point you just gave the analogy of if mm -hmm. we have a bunch of friends that are yeah. feeding each other information and you try to make an analogy between that. My counterpoint was saying that, okay, they're allowed to do that. Of course they are, but they're not allowed to access that information in between hands. What is your rebuttal? Well, you cannot do it exactly within hand because you can basically pull it up before the hand starts. So yeah. you're saying the time difference between, let's say there existed a hut that only popped up right before you started playing a hand that would be comparable to my live poker example like exactly right you you would only see it and then once the hand starts it would vanish and you would have to remember what your friends told you between the hands that's what you're basically saying here right that's the perfect analogy yeah i i, I don't know whether that would be unethical or not but it would be a lot less unethical than using okay. something in, but, but in the do you see like how, on how thin of a thread we're walking here when it's literally okay in between hands you you would know the information from either a friend or the hut telling you this guy's folding 80 percent of the bet the on, the only important thing is that you're not, you're not the only important thing is you're not using you're not using additional information to cheat during the middle of a hand yeah so as a that, that's what i mean like it 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 is a very, very thin line to walk on. I'm like claiming something is unethical. Can we at least agree that like you're saying, okay, if, if it's just in the middle of the hand that you are able to access that 80% fold of three bets, that's then it's unethical. Whereas if it's in between hands or as a preparation fence, it's not. I, d I think that that's, that's the, I think uh, that in between thing is a gray area. And I think that when people go into live poker, it's a lot more permissible because they because when you sit down against a recreational player, they know that everyone's on their phones. They know they're allowed to research things. But as soon as that hand starts, that phone goes away. And that's why phones aren't allowed at the table. So they don't get any additional kind of help. Yeah, HUDs, a, HUDs, aren't, HUDs aren't allowed at the table and they're not mm -hmm. allowed additional information during yeah. the hand. So when we're playing online poker, the same thing counts. The same thing counts. We're not, we shouldn't be allowed additional information that other people are unaware of during the hand. I mean, you make a good point for the poker sites to then, as a consequence, not allow it. Of yeah. course, there's obviously a good point for that. But what I'm saying is you can't just rely on corporate entities to make your own ethical decisions as a human being. In the same way, you can't just rely on that the government to make, mm -hmm. to make ethical decisions in finance or in, in things like that, because there are a billion loopholes that people like politicians yeah. use to do insider trading, but technically not insider trading. And that's unethical. And that's something that they need to be working out for themselves on an ethical individual level. And for you, you need to be working 
working out on your ethical and individual level mm. whether or not you want that, to be taking advantage predatorily against mm. recreational players. Okay, those two things are actually not like mutually exclusive, right? Because if they were, I couldn't be um, like making a difference between RTA and the HUD. Mm. So, like the point that you said basically that. Uh, yeah, you cannot rely on poker side or governments to make ethical decisions. You have to do that yourselves. I agree with you on that point, but that isn't like mutually exclusive with, um, you know, my point that I think the, um, you know, the using hand is, is is still like an ethical thing to do, given that it is just a step that you can use that everyone's basically able to use um, when they. When they basically uh, register for a poker site, like poker sites. Okay, I, I'm just yeah. I'm just gonna call you out a little bit on that logical inconsistency. Again, it feels like we get to the we get to the conclusion of a point that we're making, and it feels like a checkmate you, and then you're like, well, what about this other thing that we're no, no, we're gonna? No, no. That's exactly <laughs> okay, what just happened. That's exactly what just happened. So again, we're making it very clear. We both decided HUDs shouldn't be allowed in the terms of service, but given that they are, now this is where we disagree. So your point is that you think just because they're not they're not disallowed in the terms of service, you should be allowed to use them. Now again, maybe there's a specific kind of RTA that they they haven't disallowed in terms of service that you might be able to use. You know what stops you from doing that? If that if that if that if that if that's your turning factor about whether it's allowed in the terms of service, what stops me using an RTA that happens to have wriggled through the terms of service? I mean, that's the thing, they, they, they don't, right? Because it's just but, straight But cheating. again, if I found one, that, or if I found a HUD that is so close to RTA that it's giving me a fucking huge advantage that it tells me exactly what percentage you're folding on, you know, 10, 3, deuce with a, with a probability distribution or whatever like that it would be. <laughs> if, I, if I created this super HUD that technically wasn't RTA, but it just force fed mm. me the answers of how to absolutely annihilate you, would that be fair? Because it's not disallowed in the terms of service? Look, as long, yeah, if, if, if like you're describing a situation that basically maybe was the case like some years ago, maybe, right? Where all the top players at some point, they used HUDs to their advantages and they battle it out, right? So when, when you're not using that edge, and I think the guy who was even before that, that was like his good point, right? Like not using that edge in, on a game theory sense is, is just suicide, basically. Especially if, if, if it's like that, rest that you cannot gain as an advantage over opponents. Okay, so if everyone's yeah. inside of trading uh, at the top level of government, you no, should, no, you, you should be, you should be that, inside of trading too. No, no. Why not? It, no, because in, inside of trading, like, is. They, they like, if they, if they, if they, no, if, okay, let, let, let's, let's say that they're finding loopholes to insider trading, which is very, very, very plausible. And they're finding legal ways of insider trading. So they're getting ridiculously unfair advantages of when the market's about to crash, of when certain things are about to happen and all of these things are, 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 are about to go down. And the, these politicians are uh, you know, making hundreds of millions of dollars of legislation that they're signing uh, in a technically legal fashion, which, you know, the, the, trust me, billionaires find lots of legal ways to fuck us, to fuck us really fucking oh, hard. Like financial insider trading and all of that is obviously like, highly unfair like but but how does that you know you're making that comparison well knowing that like these are not the two the two like you would have to prove that these two things are actually the same thing okay are so they? so like, so the analogy is that the government technically allows billionaires to fuck us in a, in a bunch of different ways financially to create that wealth disparity because they're the ones that fucking mm -hmm. made the fucking laws in the first place, you know, all the powerful yeah. people. And it comes all back to your argument that we cannot rely on governments and like these... All right, 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 no, 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 bear yeah. with me. You asked me to lay out the analogy. I'm going to simplify okay. it for oh, you because it feels like you're not really understanding what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is that if the government's laws are unfair 
your argument in this analogy would be that, okay, because everyone else at the top echelon of society's financial circles, uh, insider trading, we should also be doing it too, because otherwise we're going to be fucked EV wise. We'll fuck the poor people together because I don't want to be the only rich motherfucker that isn't fucking the poor people. So your, your idea of like, well, if it's within the terms of service, then it's fine to fuck Hold people. On is exactly the same or very, very analogous towards saying that insider trading in a legal way is fine because we're fucking them together. No, 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 I'm, I'm definitely not saying that because what you're saying like insider trading is a macro um, economical consequence. Whereas we're just talking about online over here where people voluntarily gamble for money within the rules of poker and the terms of service. That's what we're doing when we're playing online poker. That's all we're doing. We're not like talking about macro economics where people are doing insider trading. I think that's a huge difference actually. Why? Um, I, I don't know how, you, how is it not? How, how is there not a difference between um, insider trading in macroeconomics and so you know, the, the idea the idea about an analogy isn't that you equate the two things as exactly the same. The idea is that you take a concept and extrapolate it mm -hmm. from one situation to another. So the situation yeah. that I'm extrapolating is that if the law has created things that are super unfair for super rich people to fuck poor people up the ass financially, it's still not okay ethically for those individuals to do it they have to make their own individual ethical choice about how they act financially. So the analogy, when we take it over to poker stars, is that we've, we've, now, we've now agreed that it's unethical to let <clears throat> poker stars use HUDs. So now we're in the same fucking spot with these rich people, with a fucking crusher of poker players, deciding, okay, do we want to take advantage of, this, the, of these unethical uh, terms of services and continue to fuck these, these, uh, these recreational poker players or do we want to make an individualized ethical decision that isn't just relying on terms of service to do it for us? That is the analogy. Mm -hmm. So I, I partially agree with your statement. Um, again, partially, I think that there is a degree to unfairness, but I don't think unfairness equals to, you know, uh, unethical necessarily. It's literally the definition of unethical. What do you mean? No, acting unethical, right? Like if you ask someone, what well, is it unfair for the recreational? Um, if oh, okay. He... I see what you're saying. I see yeah. what you're saying. So you're saying that taking advantage of an unfair situation isn't unethical. No, wait. So. So you're, you're admitting, okay, this is an unfair situation for these recreational players to be in. They don't know the HUDs exist. They get fucked up the ass financially. And you're saying, so is, is it like an unfair, in a, in a, just in terms of who is at an advantage? Like, for example, like he went into a boxing match and someone is like much stronger than him. It's, it's also unfair, right? But so he, he knows play. that he's getting into a boxing match with a guy that's stronger than him. If he's getting into a boxing match with a guy that's stronger than him and also happens to have something inside of his gloves that's going to fucking hurt him a little bit more, yeah, well, that's yeah. unfair because he doesn't know about it and he hasn't signed up to do it, even if it's within the fucking TOS. Yeah. So, well, 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 what's 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 your point now with 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 the whole box? I mean, I, I get it. Like, if if you box a match, if you if you cheat somehow with something in your boxing glove, then yeah. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be real with you, dude. Yeah. It's it's like your defense mechanisms are just rejecting logic left, right, and center. It's like we get to we get to a point, we get to a, a bit down the road, and something just comes in where all you want to do is disagree, and it's like you don't have a point to disagree. It's not like you're giving a concise explanation of why you disagree. It's just like, no. And because the degree to like what an add-on can do is like we discussed this earlier, like matters a ton. And, and it's, it's really something like, let's, uh, maybe a boxing analogy that would be good is like, what, you know, what kind of gloves you're wearing or something like that. Maybe, you know, you know in, in a world like some or how you're taping your hands out. And like one coach tells one guy, okay, you have to tape this way and the other guy is a, is a bad coach. 
I know some tell me when that All right, how how about this for boxing? How how about this for boxing analogy? They so, they somehow in the in the oh let's use MMA. They somehow they somehow in the MMA find uh, a loophole in the terms of service where they have an artificial intelligence that can buzz in somebody's ear that tells them when to swing left or swing right, when to duck and when to grapple and when to do things like this. And they've used it based on pattern recognition and artificial intelligence. It's not within the terms of service. John Jones is fighting whoever the fuck John Jones is fighting. He has this thing fucking tapping in his brain every single time. And he's going left, he's going right because the artificial intelligence is telling him exactly what to do. He's trained with it. Terms of service says it's fine. Should John Jones yeah. use that no, thing? That's RTA. That's RTA. No, 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 because it's not telling him what to do. It's just informing him. It's saying like, just so you know, he tends to do worse when you grapple in this spot. No, it, should, it shouldn't be uh, allowed, yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't be allowed. And yeah. assuming that it is allowed in the terms of service in the MMA, should John Jones then still use it and not tell his opponent? But yeah, it, it, like that, it always depends. Like if there's a... By, the, by your sense, yeah, it doesn't. It always depends on the nuance. Like, what if your opponent uses the same thing? Like, it, it is a, in that example, I, I don't think that, like, analogies in that way function in logic the way that you think they do. Like, you cannot say, well, okay, we have this example. It, it might be a good and similar analogy, but it doesn't dictate exactly what holds true in, like, another similar but somewhat different situation. All you said there is I disagree and I don't have a point of why you disagree. All you all you said in the, in that sentence was your analogy doesn't work. That's that's it. But you haven't said why. You haven't said how it's different. But it doesn't work because it's not the same thing. Yeah, obviously you think that it's, it's not the same analogy. thing, but how is it different? Because it's an MMA fight and you have Okay, uh, but why is it not why is it not analogous to my point? Is the point that you have to be making. If you want to rebut that in a logical fashion, you have to say this is not analogous because. You can't just say it's not analogous. So why is that why why is that anal not analogous? I haven't said I haven't said that. I've said it's not it, it's not you can use them as a comparison for sure, but you cannot dictate behavior of ethical boundaries just based on that just because you have a, if you, just because you have found an analogy you cannot just go ahead and then say well if this mma uh, mma thing were in that case that's bad and i can see that it, the example you've just drawn why that would be bad and i personally wouldn't whereas in poker i am using hats and i don't think i'm doing anything unethical okay and it's I've given my explanation of why I believe they are analogous and why both are unfair. Now it's your turn in the logical discussion to rebut that and say why you don't think it's analogous and why you think that HUDs are different in that sense and why HUDs are fair and this boxing thing is unfair. And you have to be able to say that. You can't just say you disagree because that, that's not an argument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're in that boxing thing, if I remember correctly, you said, it's going to whisper in your ear based on tendencies, whereas like, yeah, something external helps you in order to swing correctly or whatever. Right. That's, that's the example that you've used. Yeah. Whereas in poker, you have to be able to make a decisions based on your skill of using the data that you have that someone could use. Um, maybe, a better analogy would be to go into trading. No, 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 no. Stick with this analogy. Stick, tell, tell me why those two things are different because you still haven't actually made a point. Why are those two things different? Yeah, because the, in, the, in, in your example, the tool tells you. No, no, it's not telling you. It's informing you. It's like, okay, you know, 60% yeah. of the time when, when he ducks, he's, you, it's get, it's, you know, you could, it, he, he falls for the fucking right hand jab. I'm not good enough at MMA to give better analogies, but you, you feel me. It's not telling you what to do. It's informing you of the data due to pattern recognition of this person's past performances. I think we're going exactly back uh, to the, to the um, example of at what point the hut is uh, staring in the face, whether it's between hands or 
at the start of the hand, right? All right, so, so the, this is the difference between a trainer using a, an artificial intelligence before the fight, which is completely mm -hmm. fair and completely fine of, of looking at exactly what everybody's doing before the fight, and everyone's doing this to some extent, whether they're using AI or whatever it is, pattern recognition. Everyone's doing this to the best of their abilities. They know that they're doing it. But now we get into the ring, and this is when the analogy starts, because in poker, everyone's allowed to study, everyone's allowed to use AI, everyone's allowed to use PO, but as soon as you get into the ring, as soon as you're playing that hand, you shouldn't be able to use outside artificial intelligence help or technological help or anything like that unless both people are aware that this exists. Yeah, that's, um, that's your point that you reiterated, that you shouldn't be that doing that. I, I don't agree with that. I think that uh, the hard um, example is something that has to be clearly like supervised by. It's not as severe that I would consider it unethical. I think it's viable to use a hard stat. Um, you know, on, on GG, some people might not even learn how they, they might not understand how to basically read the HUD. So they might not even be aware of what these things mean. So they are not aware that you're using that either. But it's right? it's so obvious because as soon as you click on a person's name, it comes up. It has it ha it literally has their VPIP there and it has all of the mm -hmm. things there. It makes it so obvious to a user. Yeah, that's good. And that's yeah. fantastic. But stars doesn't, but you still continue to take advantage of people. No, I'm just playing a game. All right, man, and... all right. I, yeah, lo I, lo I, I love you. I, lo I love you, brother. Yeah. It feels like we're going in circles. People right. in the chat can make up and make their mind up. Uh, in my, opi in my opinion, I, mm. it feels very difficult to speak to you about some things, but uh, you know, all, all the love to you. Yeah. All right. All right. Peace, guys. Give it up for Andreas. It's not easy to come in. Um, it was. Uh, it, was, it, was it was pretty wild. But uh, de definitely give it up for him. It's, it's uh, especially if you're not used to public speaking. Lewis making his Epiphany Poker debate deb Yo, debut. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you well, loud and clear. Yeah. Or maybe quietly and clear. Yo, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good. I'm very tired. It's past midnight now. Yeah, that's late, isn't it? Um, I was just want to say, you know, congrats on becoming a father, right? That's, that's Let's massive. Go. Thanks, man. Thanks. Means a lot. Yeah, I recorded your debate with Andreas as a present, so uh, you know, if the child's struggling to sleep, you can just play that for him. <laughs> <laughs> if the if the child likes repetitive, gentle noises, then uh... <laughs> so um, the reason I think I sent the child like you're basically doing something very similar to what you're calling other people out for doing, with not showing their cash game results, but then also wanting to coach people for cash games. I was just thinking, like, what do you think about that? Um, so I am sharing my cash game results as best as I can. Uh, so like I'm just trying to turn, turn you up. Um, I, no, no is the answer. No, I just don't have access to a meaningful sample. And I'm very, very open about it. Okay, so if you don't have access to a meaningful sample, do you think that it's okay to then go on stream and be like, Oh, I ran out of 30 big blinds per 100 in an unraked sample for a meaningless sample of hands, and that's unheard of. And then, like, so if you start to bolster people's opinions of what you can offer them as a coach. But I, I'm telling them factual things. I'm not saying that this means... In fact, I will literally say this is a small sample and this doesn't mean anything, but so far I'm absolutely crushing it. Yeah, but in saying that, you're, you're kind of hyping that up to be a selling point. I mean, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty fucking sick. I'd, 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 I'd like to see many other people over fifteen, yeah, sure. fifteen I mean, k hands get thirty BB per hundred pre rake. That's pretty fucking insane. Okay, so rake is about nine big blinds, so that would already be twenty two big blinds, and in a ten k hand sample, that can easily happen with even you know three big blinds, two big blinds. Like for example, my win rate over I think half a million hands is about six big blinds, and I was just checking to see. If that is unheard of, like you made out to be, and it's not, I have like three different cases where I run at that win rate, so it's not unheard of, and I don't think it's fair to then use that as like the only thing that you have to offer people, as a coach, like as something meaningful. Even if you say it's not meaningful, the fact that you bring it up, I feel like, is trying to say that as something to to factor in as to why they should get you as a coach. 
Yeah, maybe maybe the words unheard of is is, is an exaggeration. Fair, fair enough on that. But every other point you made is 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 nonsense. Uh, I I played super high stakes for a very long time. I crushed. Everybody agreed that I crushed. I put out bets to the whole poker community that I could beat the high stakes. Not a single person took it for a very good reason. I was a tournament specialist before. I am up a fucking shit ton of money in tournaments and. I streamed my whole bankroll challenge from $50 to $10,000. Everyone got to see every step of the way. I've been as transparent as I possibly can be. It just so happens that I don't have the hands to create the graphs of the cash games. But wouldn't you feel more comfortable, right? So I'm guessing you have a lot of money, right? Um, wouldn't you feel more comfortable just taking a month, two months? So you're so confident that you beat these games. Why not just take a month to play and then start selling coaching once you actually have the results? Why would you... Like wait until you start selling people and then and then uh, because so i've won poker at every single point in my career and it's never stopped no matter what stakes i've played bar playing like linus etc uh, online high stakes poker which i'm very mm -hmm. honest about not being able to beat i i have a i have a 10 year sample of being able to crush whatever poker i, I want to play including 500 zoom including what, whatever else uh, I feel very confident in being able to say that I'm extremely good at cash games, even if I don't have the recent uh, the graphs because I don't use HUDs. Yeah. I'm, I'm so 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 what? So so why why would I take a month out of my life to be like, well, I've now started saving hands. I've now shown things that we already knew was true, because uh, like given the evidence, literally anybody that looks at it will be able to be like, yep, there's like a ninety nine point something percent chance that Charlie can do the things he says he can do. All right, well, I can respond. So you're saying like you have enough belief in yourself as a player based on games that you're not selling. I mean, obviously you play high stakes cash, whatever, but I mean, it's still not what you're selling coaching for. Um, mm -hmm. So if you if you had a 10 year sample, surely you should have like a smart hand maybe where we could see some results from uh, anywhere in that in that timeline, if that is true. I mean, I, I, have, I have like screenshots of graphs from many, many years ago. But I, mean, I just haven't haven't been saving hands. I've been using HUDs for the last few years because. Uh, but every poker coach is probably very con like they come across as confident. They have the secrets. They know the way of how to be it. But then why would you not just take a month of your life? I mean, I think that's a. Point. All right, so I'm I'm just gonna answer that question. It is, with all with all love and thank you for coming on. It is a little bit of a, a retarded question. Why don't I take a month out of my life to grind online poker? Well, then you want to take people's money. For wait, your wait, 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 wait. Let me let, let me let me let me let me let me. Let me act. In fact, I'll put that to you. Why? Why do you think I don't take a month out of out of my life, which is uh, you know, involving in about to launch a charity? I'm a recent father. I've got a lot of stuff going on. I've got a business. I've got a lot of friends and family that I'm keeping up with. I got you know, I'm actually creating content and all these things. Why do you think I don't take a month out of my life to grind online poker? Well, if you don't want to do that, then why do you want to coach people? Because I'm it's amazing so at teaching poker and I help people. Yeah, but you won't have, you won't take some time out of your life to just grind. I literally like, did it my and... entire. I literally did it my entire career. I turned fifty dollars into like ten million dollars net profit. Yeah, sure, but like in what, wait, 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 what, what? No, 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 not just in tournaments and cash games as well. As yeah, a cash game grinder for most too, of it. But if there's no results for it. But there are there are results from the past, and, and there are coaching. there are results from from recent times, and there's also the fact that nobody would take my bet on whether or not I can beat okay, five hundred Zoom. Dude, so so if you can make it worth my time, if you're like, hey, I'm gonna get all of my fucking nerdy reddit bros together and we're we're gonna put up 100k that you can't beat fi 500 zoom over it or 200 zoom over whatever sample i'll fucking take it but if it's not worth my time of course i'm not gonna fucking do it because it's glaringly obvious to anybody with half a brain people to buy your coaching or actually providing evidence right because it's glaringly obvious to anyone with half a brain that there's enough evidence that i have provided to the utmost of my ability that i can crush the games that i say i can crush I just don't see how it's any different to what other poker gurus are claiming. Right, because you, because your brain's firing on like three cylinders, you're missing a couple of chromosomes. No, I'm kidding. But it's it is it is, I mean, it is you're kind of toxic, Charlie. I thought you were spiritual, man. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm just I'm just kidding, dude. I mean, it's okay. Don't need to be sensitive. Yeah, sure. um, but I I got I got all the love you and thank you thank you for coming on. I'm yeah, just saying like the. Very loving man. I I I'm sorry if I triggered something. I'm just joking. But um, it's uh. Uh, it, I just find it funny that like the spiritual people are always the most toxic deep down, right? It's quite funny, I think. Sure, man, sure. Uh, I mean, I didn't have to resort to like saying random insults like that, so... I'm just joking, I don't actually think you have Down Syndrome.
Yeah, okay. Um, just so, I think just so you know. Homeless? Just kidding. It's still the same thing, right? <laughs> nah, it's just, I was just fucking alright. I won't make any, I won't make any jokes. I was just fucking around. It's like okay. the biggest cop of all time to say something against Solon and say just kidding to like diffuse from it, but it's still a toxic thing to do, right? No, it's not. It depends what the intention it's is not. behind the joke. Okay, interesting. Yeah, you can you, like if you've ever watched any like stand up comedy, they're all calling themselves calling each other faggots and stuff, but they know it's done with like good intentions. Interesting. I thought we were talking about your win rate and why you wouldn't just grind a sample out. But... Okay. okay, so the reason I don't want to grind a sample out is because I've already got ample evidence that is publicly uh, shown. No, you don't. Your smart hand is losing. You don't have any winning sample that you can put on your website. I don't. I don't want a smart hand. Is. It's um, a website where you can see results on rec tables for like, I think five, last five years. I mean, realistically, like you could have just waited four months longer before you started coaching cash games until you have a sample. I'm just saying, why wouldn't you do that? It doesn't have to be right now. Wait, 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 wait. Tell, tell me what the smart hand thing is. Smart hand is a website where you can look up people's results on regular tables. On all regular tables over all sites or on what? Um. I think a lot of sites, I don't, I don't know all of them. For sure, PokerStars, for example. And you're not winning on that sample. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting wrecked on regular tables. I was playing like Linus and all of these people. Cool. Yeah, probably because like a 10K sample doesn't mean anything great. Can run no, Linus, because, 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 I'm, because I'm not winning at 5K and L and I'm not winning at 2K and L on a bunch of wrecked tables on PokerStars because these guys are better than me at poker. Okay. Okay. I don't see what that has to do though with why you wouldn't just wait until you have a sample at say 200 Russian cash. Before you start coaching people for it, with 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 with, with, all, with all with all due respect, if you have any doubt in your mind, I will lay you five to one for whatever amount you want that I can beat this over a decent sample. What win rate for your back? I I, I I don't know, but let we if if you're willing to come up with like a number that you want to okay. bet. Okay, well I, you said that like. Okay, what win rate do you realistically expect to have a two hundred Russian cash? I gross, I don't rate? I don't know. I'm about to find out. So you don't even know your win rate in these games, yeah? You're selling coaching and you flame other coaches that won't show results for their coaching. I don't know what my exact win rate is, nor does anybody else. But all I can do is say, hey guys, yeah, this, no, 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 li uh, listen for a second. And and with with all due respect, the reason that I was kind of making a little like jabby jokes is because you've come on with this kind of like fake quiet attitudes, but your your attitude is very like trolly. It's very like, well, actually, uh, how about this? And it's not coming it's from like, like a good... It's like spiritual attitude is actually rude and toxic. You have no about. idea what you're talking about, my friend. Uh, but with, with all due respect, I'm trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be gentle with you here, but the attitude that, that you're... You have extra chromosomes. I'm trying to be gentle. It's loving, bro. Just kidding. Okay, I'm, I will never make a joke to you ever again. I will only be very direct and literal. So what I'm saying is that <laughs> all I can do is provide as much information as I have and say, hey guys, this is all the information that I have. I don't have to go out and find out more information because I'm being as transparent as possible. Hey, I'm not calling, no, 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 let me, let me finish, trust. Trust, these other trust let, me. All right, I'm gonna mute you for a second so everyone else can hear. So all I'm saying to other coaches is not saying, I'm not saying go out and play more hands. I'm not saying go out and fucking do this, go out and prove this. I haven't said that once. All I've said is be as transparent as possible. Be as transparent as possible and then we're all okay because then people know what they're buying into. I'm not saying go out and find more information. I'm not saying go out and do more things. All I'm saying is be honest and transparent. And you can unmute yourself, please. And I'm saying you're selling a journey. You're not selling any provable results. And you're telling people to just join you on a journey, which is fine, but then why are you claiming other coaches that don't show their results, for example? But I do have results. No, you don't have any online results. Yes, like, I do. You, can... you have a 15k sample where you talk about a uh, 30 big line win rate as if it's anything sustainable or meaningful, which is not, by the way. I've literally never pointed at that until the last week, which is when I've been doing it. I still don't point it to it as anything more than just like, ha, ah, this is fun. This is the bankroll challenge. What I do point at is me turning $50 into $10 million. And you can't do that unless you have a very fucking good talent at poker. And this is what I'm selling to people. I'm saying, hey, guys. I've actually got really good at coaching poker, I'm really good at playing poker, and this is what I'm selling. Take it or leave it. I'm not Linus level. I'm not Ben Heath level when it comes to theory. I'm not this. I'm being as honest as I can. And that's what I'm trying to ask from other people in the community. Can you see that? Look, I'm not down your <clears throat> ability as a poker player. Like, obviously, I mean, 
surely you've made a lot of money, you know, whatever clashes and tournaments. I'm sure you've had a lot of success there. I'm sure maybe you even, even had good results at uh, high stakes cash games. But what I'm saying is, you don't have any tangible results that you can show on your website for the format you're selling coaching for. It doesn't matter your results in tournaments. Sure, you may have, you know, built a role in cash games too, but it's all like muddy. And you, the only thing you're selling is a journey and a 15k sample on 200 Russian cash. Yeah. Um, if that's how you say it, that's how you say it, my friends. Um, I, I, I'm not going to make any more jokes, but ju just in general, I would Can I say... Can another thing real quick? One, one second, let me just, yeah, let's just finish this. What I would say is like, go and speak to somebody that's really good at poker and ask them what they think. About what? About the thing about that we just... Uh, the, uh, yeah, about, about what we just talked about. Do you think that, you know, ask them, do you think Charlie needs to go and play 200 Zoom for how... In fact, I actually did just do a bankroll challenge where I crushed up to 200 Zoom. Uh, so, you know, but and streamed every second. So, you know, you could make a graph out of that if you wanted. So I have recently. We have to make the graph for you, even though you're the one selling other people. Well, things, I, you know? other people don't don't need graphs because they saw me do it. They saw me do it the whole way. And they, they you don't need a graph to just be like, oh, it went up. You know, I, I, I gave I gave updates every single session and I just didn't it's have a graph. Just stream I didn't. The winnings. You could just stream. The only I streamed every single hand. Through. You probably did. I, I take your word for it. But so, I take so, your word for it because you didn't provide a graph. If you want to be a professional coach, a businessman, why aren't you doing these things? Do you just not care about like? So, Lewis, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to be real real gentle with you. What you're saying is, and um, very many non sequiturs. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like not like not not like. I, I don't debate on for other things. So. Or often so. Well, okay, I, I knew that no when I was about 15, but okay, so a non sequitur is something that doesn't logically follow on from one thing to another. So what I'm saying is that all, I have all of these data points that show that I can beat poker up to a certain level, and I'm saying I can't beat it at this level, but I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. I can beat it at this level because I have throughout my whole career. We then started talking about streaming and the bankroll challenge, and I said, well, I didn't keep the graph because I wasn't... I wasn't looking at every single, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't inputting all of these hands into a graph, but what I did do is stream every single hand so people could look at me play and judge for themselves. And that's what's important, transparency and honesty to your audience. And that's what I'm asking from other people. Okay, but there's transparency to your audience and there's like, at the end of the day, you're selling people something. You can say you're doing it out of the good of your heart because you like to help people. You're, you have a product and you're selling it to people. You could have chosen to record all the hands that you played in a tracker. You could have chosen to wait a few months to actually be different from other coaches that just want you to believe that they have whatever win rate, want you to believe they have whatever, but don't actually show the results. Yeah, you made money in tournaments, maybe some in cash game. Who, who knows really how much here and there. But we're still taking a word for it and just doing you as you figure out along. You're grinding the hands whilst you're selling the content. Yeah, so, so, so all I've done is my best. And for sure I could have, in hindsight, I could have saved all of those hands and made a graph, but I haven't. So I apologize if that's okay. something that's important to you, if you're looking for a course, you're right. It would have been great if I kept a, a graph of the bankroll challenge. I just didn't because I, I made a mistake. But so do you not think it's important right now if you're selling cash game content, to actually have a resource that you can show people for cash games. No, I think what's important is that I'm as honest as possible. Okay, so does it not matter for the other players then? No, what's, impo what's other important other for other players is that they are as honest as, po as sorry, possible as well. What, yeah, what but I you, can, you can validate that by having provable results, right? Okay, so again, that's not that again. That wasn't what we were just talking about. What I was saying is that it's important for other players to be as honest as possible. And that's all I'm asking. And I'm just saying that I think that it's kind of an interesting point of view. Like you don't need to do the thing you expect other people. To no, do. again, yeah, as, again, that's okay. a not. It's a non sequitur. I, I'm not expecting other people to to prove these graphs. But what I am saying is that I would appreciate if people were honest about their results. So we just have to trust that you're being honest in your results because you don't want to show. Well, I, I, I could doc I could doctor a graph, mm -hmm. and you'd have to you'd have to trust that those those hands were honest as well. I, I could doctor a bunch of different graphs and trust you'd but have you to trust delay, me. Losing. You wouldn't delay coaching people for cash games like one month to play a few hours every day. I've been, I've day been coaching people for cash games up to way higher stakes than 200 an hour for about seven years. So no, I'm not going to yeah. delay it another month publicly because you feel like I need to then prove myself on 200 so, Russian cash, which bro, is one so of the... Plenty, so 
I want to see Clanny's results and Hans Stars where he has no winnings after four years. Like so many people have coached people of whatever limits. It doesn't mean anything if they don't have results that are winning. Okay, so you're you're kind of just recycling the same point, and there isn't much exploration for conversation in this yeah, in this moment. But there's um, one other thing I just wanted to say. Um, sure. You know the talk that you had with the previous guy about, you know, and um, I think he's talking about like hoods. Do you think like MDA, for example, like what Poker Detox is doing, where they just found two hundred million hand database, and then use that to get um, exploits on say fish, and then build their win rate of that? What do you think of that ethically? I think it's not bad I you think, don't think it's bad i don't think so but i i could be i could be convinced otherwise okay okay i'm just wondering because let's say you have a hood right that just says the hands the fish is playing on your table mm-hmm. um i don't see how that's very different to for example having a hood of 200 million hands of all fish like the mistakes that they make over like, a proven sample and then using that to boost your win rate right? I, I think the, the difference that. is that you're not using something in game that is telling you anything anything that you don't already know okay. in your mind. It's just interesting because you know uh, the guy that's running your podcast, EQ Poker, he's actually showing just having a document up of all the MDA HUD exploits on fish that he uses. So I, I just found that interesting that you wanted to give someone like that a platform with that as your like moral standpoint. I just thought that's interesting. Well, I, I would give anyone a platform, whether whether it's you or him or Hitler. But or you're like promoting him saying that you, you know you like what he's doing so uh, I, just I like him as a person doesn't mean i agree with every i actually didn't know that i didn't know that but mm-hmm. I, I i i assume to use the hud i assume that pretty much every poker player i speak to uses a hud but i i'm publicly against that but i'm not just gonna fucking not speak to people because uh-huh. they use it and um <coughs> you said you'd offer me five to one odds uh like just off the top of your head, what win rate do you expect to have? I, i'm i'm rate? i'm not gonna get into random negotiations if you want to message me uh, I'll you know I can give you the the email address of my CEO and if you want to get together something like a proposal for a for a thing I, you have to understand from my perspective I've had way too many hours wasted from very very gr- I'm not calling you grumpy but like grumpy regs in the in the poker world that have been like you can't beat this you can't beat and then when it comes to actually putting money on the table I've had crickets my whole career. Uh, so I'm not I'm not gonna waste time now and other people's time just speaking about these yeah, things. Yeah, no, because you 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 were the one who brought it up five to one on. So I was just wondering like what win rate you actually think you have in these. It, it, if if you if you're willing and fair enough, I did bring it up. You're right. Uh, if you're willing to put up like a hundred k, then we'll start talking about it. Okay, that's like an amount. I'm saying, what win rate do you just personally expect to have in these games? Uh, Who hundred Russian cash? That's it. Maybe like fifteen. Uh, pre rake or post rake? Post. So post rake. So you think you have in the clan you have like twenty four big blind win rate or whatever it is. Something like that, yeah. Okay, I, I would prop bear my entire role that you don't have that. Okay. Uh, which well, is a hundred k, so we we could do that for sure because there's no way. I mean, it depends on the sample. Let's say like four hundred k hands, four tabling. There's no way you're having. Oh, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play four hundred k hands no matter what. But I. I. I, I, I would. I. But. But. By, but. By the way, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet on the fifteen too much. You know that. That. That's me. Like I don't know. I really. I don't. I don't know much about it. I would bet on seven. Okay, that's half of what you just said, but we have to take your word on your win rate on your. If, if, if you if you want to give me if you want to give me one to one, then you said five to one. What to yeah, I I, I said I said five to one on a certain thing. I'm not no no, no. Mm-hmm. think 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 slowly and logically for a second. Okay, I'm yeah, saying I'm not, I'm saying and... I'm not certain about the fifteen. It could be completely off. It could be fucking minus fifteen. I don't know, but what you told me to give my most my you know my most honest guess. You think you could have minus fifteen big blinds and two hundred rush? Anything's possible, my friend. Anything's possible. But then you who knows? Who knows? I have. You think you might have fifteen big blinds and you don't have results, and we have to take your word for it. Okay. Do you not see an issue with that? No. I just an issue personally. So like, I, I I've like, got it. I I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you. I can't tell if you're trolling or not. I can't tell if this is a genuine, authentic interaction with another human okay. being. Why do you think I'm trolling? Why am I not being sincere about? Okay. And again, I'm not saying this to insult you, but. It, you're not saying things that are very like logically clear um, and it, it it feels like you just want to be right and it feels like you just no, want me I'm to be wrong. I'm genuinely curious. Like you said yourself, you could have 15 big blinds in a game you're coaching for and you don't want to take the time to know with confidence that you don't have minus 15 big blinds 
and you want people to well, buy I, obviously i don't something. think i have minus 15 big blinds in the same way that i don't think the world's about to explode in in 0.1 seconds but you never know so but that... you never know and the solution would be to grind out a sample and then sell coaching but you're selling coaching before grinding a sample but e even if to... even if i grinded a two billion hand sample and I got I know for sure, but it's more likely, right? Than just your words. Okay, so so you so you understand what I'm saying. I'm ninety nine point nine 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 percent certain. I I currently don't have a minus fifteen BB per hundred on two hundred Russian cash. Yes, you are you are confident. We have to believe in your confidence and your journey. Five hundred dollars to a mil, but you haven't done it. I'm just gonna take a quick breath. <sighs> <clears throat> I'm a little bit tired. You can unmute. <laughs> um i with, with 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 all the with all the with all the love brother um what you're saying is uh it feels very trolly it feels very smarmy is a good word from somebody in the chat it feels like all you're trying to do is trying to like dig and niggle and things like that i'm, I'm very tired so it's like you know not the easiest Wait, thing for me to do with I don't understand what that means. I'm sorry, but I, I'm not. I'm trying to be sincere with you. I think it's morally wrong to sell coaching if you don't have results, recent provable results that we can say, all right, yeah, sure. At least he's winning in these games. So, 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 so for instance, if I if I now proved it over a hundred k sample, and it's then, not that meaningful. No, no, no. Okay, let, okay. Let, let's say let's say I prove it over a five hundred k sample, and I prove like sure. ten bb, fifteen bb per hundred. In one year's time. There's going to be another Lewis that comes up and says, "Well, Charlie, you need to prove it over another 500k sample." I disagree. What, what, do, what do you mean? I've been shown. I've shown my whole career that I'm absolutely annihilating. I'm I've got stu I've got no, no, in cash games as well, and I've got I've got students that have been annihilating in cash games as well. Okay, then why is your smart hand on stars the only thing that we can see losing? Why because, do you not have because I got wrecked by sure. people like Linus Love. Okay, cool. You were playing top level competition. I mean, sure. And I, got, I got, I got, I, I, pro I probably lost like fucking to him and and all the top regs. I probably lost like 150k and like. Uh, Why did you do that, by the way? I saw you do heads up lines. The the main the main reason I did it is because I was scared to do it, and oh, okay. I I like doing things that I'm scared of doing. Interesting. Like grinding out 100k hands and then showing it right. No, I'm just kidding. Man. Just kidding. I don't I don't like jokes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, what what are your let let's speak about you for a second because I'm curious what what are what are some of your passions in life like what make what makes you deeply happy? Um, I, I, like passions. I mean, I play poker. That's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. Um, making music. I guess I'm not very good at it, but I'm like getting better. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have like do you have like do you have like yeah, friends and family around you? I mean, I have friends, but we just got a drink, and I wouldn't say it makes me like, deeply happy. It's just you know, mm. chill, chill myself. And um, what what do you want to like achieve from life? Um, I'm kind of just I don't like planning it out like your entire life planning out how it goes. I'm just and I'm playing poker. It's going well. Do that for a few years, and then like if I say open up, maybe start a business, doing something else. That would be fun. Do you want to like help people or anything? Eventually, but I don't believe in like helping people, just giving handouts of money. I think first you want to like build yourself up to to have a lot of money. You know, you have your house secured, maybe a nice car, nice few things, and then like use your time for a better cause. But I don't mm. think it's like the right time right now. Cool. But, yeah, I, I I agree with that to some extent. I think it's really important to help yourself first. And um, yeah. yeah, I I I am I am curious because just from from person to person level um it was it's an uncomfortable way of communicating the way that we were communicating and it, it definitely put me on the defensive uh not because of what you were saying but more because like about you it's no i'm, I'm I, i've talked about me for fucking ages on these these debates and I, I'm, I'm usually super super okay and the reason that i thought you were trolling is because of the energy that was coming from behind it it, it was the energy of somebody that just wanted to niggle just wanted to disagree just wanted to say no and i'm not saying that that's who you are as a person but that i'm just saying from like a person to person degree that that's the energy no. that, I, that i felt from you listen um, so I have a lot of respect for you. I actually started playing poker when I saw you doing well. I think there was a, maybe like a loud Bible interview or something. So I have a lot of respect for you as a person. I believe, you know, you're a sick tournament player. I actually believe that. Um, I think maybe felt like I was attacking your skill as a player or maybe 
your ability in cash games or your reputation. I don't know. It wasn't necessarily that. I just disagreed with the stance that you hold people to one standard, but you, you weren't willing to do something that I viewed as being fair to your, the people you're trying to get to buy your Yeah, games. no, I, I heard what you were saying and I, I gave like fair rebuttal and I said, hey, this is why I'm not doing it and I'm not actually holding a double standard. I'm not expecting people to go out and grind. And you still disagreed, which is okay. But it was just like, you didn't actually, you didn't, you didn't look at any of the points that I was saying. You didn't address any of the points I was saying. You just kept saying the same thing over and over again, which is why I felt like you might have been trolling or something like that. Because I would say, hey, actually, no, I'm not looking to do that. I'm just looking for mutual transparency. And then you would just go back to the same point of, well, why don't you grind 100K sample and prove it? Why? I think it's unethical to do this. And it's, it's very difficult to have that kind of communication if you're just repeating and regurgitating the same points. And I 100% I, I get that you're on stream and it's not, you might not be super comfortable speaking like this, but just from just from my personal perspective, from like a human to human way, I, I honestly couldn't tell if you were just coming on here to troll. And it's like, it might be something worth worth examining. Uh, examining how? Examining introspectively. Okay, I mean, so my perspective is, um obviously i don't do the base like I, I was more comfortable to do it in chat but you wanted me to come on stream i guess it's more entertaining for the stream but one thing i would say is you know you obviously have like an advantage here you stream often, yeah so yeah for sure this type of thing yeah for sure but so maybe it came across that way i just had a, a point i was making and i felt like the things you were saying i was trying to bring them up but i didn't want to um, bring the how, how about how about this? How about I make your argument for you, and you make my argument for me? Does that sound good? Uh, and then then sure then we're not, then we're not trying to like fight for it, fight for who's right and who's wrong. We're just trying trying to understand what the truth is. So if yeah. I were if I were to steel man your argument, which is like paint it in the best way possible, okay. it would be something along the lines of, Hey Charlie, you're selling cash game courses. You're selling that you're good at cash games. And there isn't any recent quantifiable evidence that you are because the only hand samples that you have are small hand samples on Russian cash. Um, and that that's not enough to go by to quantifiably prove that there's a very, very high degree of likelihood that you can crush the games that you say that you can crush. Is that, is that fair? Yes, that's pretty fair, man. All right. So, so what, what do you think my, my, my rebuttal to that would be? Um, Trust me, bro. No, I'm good. Uh, like some high stakes players said that I'm doing well, I guess. Um, Come I, on, you, you can do it. I, I just did my absolute best. I just did my absolute best to, to steal man your position. So if you could try and do your absolute best to, to steal man mine in, in, uh, in response. Um, oh, why you should take my word. Um, I mean, it has to be pretty defensive, I imagine, because what else could it be, right? Mm, okay. So, so perhaps that might be indicative of your inability to be able to see my perspective. Um, and I, look, it's not something I would personally do. Like, I, I wouldn't sell coaching unless I had the, re the results I could show people before they even buy it. Just, here's my results. It, you know, if you have what I'm offering, take it. Don't just take my word for it. Look, here. Because, mm. look, Charlie, whether you want to admit it or not, you could actually be down, like, I'm not saying you are, I think you're up lifetime, let's just say, like, you're actually down lifetime in cash, like, $5 million. People would still buy your cash game coaching, man. They would, because yeah. you're Charlie Carroll. And if you look up, like, best UK players, it'll come up with your name. You have a responsibility there mm -hmm. to understand people are just going to be naive coming to Bogan and buy your coaching regardless of how good you actually are. And so because of that, the thing to me that makes most sense to do would be to take some time before you want to sell coaching and cash games to actually have like the results that are provable that are yours and then you can show people so you know for sure because mm -hmm. in poker like people just take other people's word way too much for things and I think that's kind of why I have an issue with a lot of coaches doing and I feel like um, that, that's what's wrong with poker coaching in general. Mm. I don't know so you, so I, I, I completely understand your perspective it's just that a lot of people would disagree that they would need all of those pieces of the, all of those data points because there are so many other data points that show that I have success. And those data points include crushing high stakes tournaments, which, you know, it's pretty hard to be good at tournaments and not at cash, by the way. Sec okay. Secondly, my students, you know, I took Ben Heath from 10 and L to now he's crushing hundred Ks. 
uh, there are many, many, many examples of people that have had their games turned around to now crushing high stakes. Many I feel examples. Like I feel like it's naive to assume that you're going to be crushing a different game format because you've got it one format. It's like no, it's not. It's uh, I'm not saying that it's a definite, but I'm saying there's a strong correlation between somebody that can beat hundred Ks and somebody that can beat okay. two hundred Zoom. But like, I I just I just disagree, I guess, because I I know. You, the, the examples you're giving they're from tournament players in a tournament format and i had an issue with some cash no 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 a lot a lot a lot of a lot of the coaching i do was cash games as well like i, no, I, I, I have a ton a ton of students that are, that are doing cash as well i know um i know you've done cash game coaching too but i'm guessing okay sure maybe you coach some people high stakes they're probably coming to you for things that are outside of theory like reads or whatever else no they no no they're there. coming they're coming to me for for hardcore range analysis theory yeah Okay, sure, it could be, but I still think that the point remains that if you're using like results in tournaments to justify why your cash game coaching is good, or like the fact that you coached other cash game players, it still not doesn't come down to results from you actually playing the games. Yeah, no, I and I understand that to you that's really important, but to other people, what we're looking at is a lot of different data points that point towards something. And me saying, hey guys, I actually I actually beat 500 Zoom over a large sample. I've beat this over a large sample. Recently when I've played, I've won over a large sample. When I play tournaments, I've won okay. over a, a small sample. So and, can we break and, them down actually? I would like to break down all these data points if, if you're okay with that. I'm gonna go to bed soon. Um, but I, I'm just gonna finish I'm, so like... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna finish my point then sure we can we can go to that. Yeah. So when you have all of these data points and when you have people that trust me to tell the truth because they know who I am and I've got a very solid reputation of telling the truth, even when it's very difficult for me to not tell the truth. Yeah, hashtag trust me, bro. That's a funny comment, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, then for them, it's enough. And, and my, my whole thing in making this stream is I want everybody to be as transparent as possible and as honest as possible so people can make their own minds up. So if they come to me and they say, hey, Charlie, like you, you say, hey, Charlie, I don't want to learn from you because you don't have 500K hands on, on, X, on X stake. That is completely your prerogative. That is completely your decision. And I'm never gonna tell you that that's not the right decision to make for you. But for other people, other things are more important. So I'm not saying, hey, let's let's all fucking slap our dicks on the table and see who can get the mo the highest BB per 100 on 500 Zoom or whatever. What I'm saying is let's be as transparent as possible as a community so other people can make their own decisions as best as possible. And for you, that means that you probably don't want to learn from me because for you, it's really important someone has a, a very obvious graph fucking up. You know, you go, you go to somebody else. For other people, they're like, oh, okay, I see all of these other data points you know, success of your students, you know, mental health of your students, the, the retreats that you run, the tournaments that you've won, the cash games that you've shown on stream where I see you playing really well, live, by the way, not fucking doctoring and choosing the, the, like fucking the bankroll challenge every single hand that you, you could watch. For these people, that's important. And I'm very honest about saying, hey, this is what I have, this is what I don't have. And that's all, that's all we can ask for as, as a community. Do, 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 you, do you agree with that? I disagree largely because I think whilst you are acting in your best interest and you claim to there are other people that will claim that they're doing the same but not actually acting in their best interest. The only like it's a much easier way, a method of showing that people are actually real about what they're talking about. If they actually have winning samples, um, in the format they wanna coach. Because, you know, acting in good interest, trying to be faithful, like all this stuff, it's more abstract and it's harder to prove and I think that's why there's so many coaches that don't want to show their results. I, I hear what you're saying and I can understand from your perspective why that's really important. What I'm saying is I'm not going to grind 200, 300k hands because I have so much better things I could do with my time. So many better things I could do than, than grind 200, 300k hands. I've got a family, I've got a business, I've got friends, I've got a life. I've, I've, got, so, I've got a charity, I'm literally just about to launch. I'm preparing so many things, having meetings, I'm doing all of these things. I'm definitely not even close to, to wanting to grind two, two or 300, 300K hands. I'm very open. Hey, I'm not gonna do that. I don't have the, the graph that you want me to have to, in order to buy whatever the fuck I'm selling for $57 a month. Uh, and I'm 
I am who I am. This is this is the truth. This is the facts. I'm as transparent as possible. I'm not gonna fucking bend to anyone's whim because they feel like I I need a larger sample or whatever. And I guess my rebuttal would just be if you if you don't have the time to play the format that you want to coach, you just coach tournaments and not cash game. Obviously, you're not gonna do that. You don't have to. You believe you're acting good faith. You can help those people. I get that. I'm just saying everyone could argue that. Everyone could make reasons to not do it, and that's why it creates issues and a lot of um, bad actors. Yeah, I, I, I really hear what you're saying, but it's just not very logically concise. Um, again, we have enough data points to know that I'm going to be winning at the things that I'm coaching. Uh, I wanted to go over those data points. I mean, I know we, it was a bit of time, but like it, we could just say like one data point and then I say if I agree, agree or disagree with it. All right, let, 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 I'll, I'll give you five minutes. Um, and I, I do appreciate at the beginning, I, I, I was kind of being a little bit like fucking around with you because I genuinely thought you were coming, coming on here to troll. I'm getting now, I actually don't think that that's your intention. Um, so I apologize for being kind of harsh with you before I genuinely thought it was a different dynamic to what it was and I'm, I'm tired. So I might've just misread that. Uh, I, I just wanted to keep it fun. You know, the other guy made me want to fall asleep. So I thought, spice up a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm sorry if the chromosome joke offends you because I, I, I honestly, I don't think you're an unintelligent person. I can tell that you have like a strong intellect. I love that you have the desire to come on here and just kind of, you know, make some funny comments. I think that's a really good quality that you, you have the ability to do that without getting, you know, terrifying social anxiety and things like that. Nice. Um, I admire your ability to grow long hair. It's really nice. Man. I've been working on it for many years. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think you see the other by the way, like for sure. Just say like that was peak Charlie Crow, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it was definitely fit with the brand, but uh this is this is more me now. Bro, I'm the hippie outfit, like why did you ditch that? Um, I'm still I'm fucking wearing like a flannel top right now, white pants. It's pretty fucking hippie man. It's did, just Did you sell all your clothes by the way? Like what happened to them? I gave a I gave a bunch away. Bro Can I have one of your hoodies? Um no. Oh, okay. Anyway, let's go with the day of points real quick. <laughs> Oh, sorry, do you want me to start? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I have maybe seven years worth of students um, that I, I don't know if you'll find a single testimonial that's negative and you'll find many, many, many that are positive of changing their careers. My, you know, Ben Heath is, a, is probably the prime example, but then there's... Was that in tournaments or cash games? Or? <coughs> both. I think, like, okay. Uh, if it's both, then sure. Like, if there's some cash game players that say your coaching improved them, then... Sure, yeah, I, I could see that. Yeah. But I'd also say, like, there's some coaches I don't trust, like, that one guy coaching, uh, Call Me Lear and Nikki Swoody is just, like, but all the streamer students are just losing money, so, I mean, I don't see how they vouch him and stuff, but none of them win. I mean, that makes me skeptical of, like, what the students say. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you're pro if you want to be skeptical, you can be skeptical, I'm just telling you that my, what the truth is. You know, this is what I've been doing, and there are many, many people out there that can vouch for it. Okay. Oh, there he is, Jalda, man. Jalda, how come all your students lose, man? Like, what's going on? I mean, sorry, what's the other data points? That, so to me, that sounded kind of mean. I mean, charging $500 an hour for coaching, but your streamer students don't, man. I, I just think that's wrong, but... I... I I'm just saying, from my perspective, from human to human, it's a lot easier to say that because now it's not about me. The The tone of that is very, like, non-compassionate. It doesn't feel like you're saying that from a good place. You actually have, like, I actually believe that you win a poker. I don't know if Charles Man wins. No, but I, I'm, I'm not talking about whether he's, he wins or not. I'm saying that from, from a personal place, that didn't feel to me like it was coming from a good place. It's just a weird coincidence that I brought up the streams and I saw him in chat, so I thought it was... <coughs> No, I, 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 I feel, I feel what you're saying. We'll give him a chance to rebut. Um, but, but what I, but what I really want to draw attention to is like the intention behind what you said. It, it didn't feel kind. Okay, may, maybe it was an unkind thing. I say unkind things, but yeah, but that, that's that's all. That's all I want to say. I'm not, I'm not going to debate the point because we, we already had him on and he, he got to say, yeah. his, say his bit and thing. Uh, I'm just saying, like from you know, from a like a, a life GTO perspective, kindness. You know, if you'd come on and been really kind, I would have given you that fucking hoodie. And who knows what else you get in life? Oh, you know, that's, maybe that's maybe, maybe you get 
maybe you get people falling mm-hmm. in love with you more maybe you'd get deeper relationships maybe you get people trusting you more maybe there's a lot of things that would happen if you were coming from a kind place when you uh when you spoke to people like yeah i can we just in but i just like i've gone to poker to not have to put on like an attitude of kindness to people that i don't feel like deserve it and also like i win money playing poker so although it might deny me opportunities to like charge 500 an hour for coaching at the same time i don't want to do that anyways so. okay well I'm, I'm i'm just saying maybe, maybe think about it and um see see how your life pans out and you know maybe even experiment what happens when i'm really honest and kind to people for a week um, i try and be honest and kind to people i feel like deserve it but but if you're if you're putting yourself you in a show p- results and you charge 500 an hour for coaching then i have um yeah it doesn't sit right with me and i don't think we deserve to give those people benefit of the doubt until they show their results so. so i i hear what you're saying um it's uh <laughs> i i would personally be a lot more open to to hearing your opinions if they were coming from a kind place just so you know, we'll, we'll move on let, let, let's go on to more data points so we, we had me coaching people over seven years being and then being extremely successful and okay. uh you know pe- people from from the highest stakes to the lowest stakes i'm just curious like you reference the tawny player can you reference any cash game players and now i mean i'm sure you probably could if, if you look but just off the top of the head yeah, there's a there's a guy called Tien. There's a guy called Tass, uh, Helena, Frank. Is Tien the Asian? Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that guy's good, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah he's he's um he's really really good. The guy called Tass, he plays five ten. Uh, he recently messaged me, I think today, saying thank you so much for the coaching. I just mm. yeah, things like that. He's been crushing recently. Um, there's Helena. There's. Hector, which is mainly tournaments. Uh, Frank plays cash games. Paco plays ten twenty live. I uh, say testimonies is definitely useful. And I agree. This is a good data point. Are there any other ones? Okay. Um, so other data points that that I'd be able to beat cash games is that throughout all of my poker career, I've been able to be successful in tournaments and live tournaments. Um, again, that's not that's not proving anything. But that's another data point that might inform. Okay, I managed to beat the the super super high stakes that is a very 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 big uh, uh, ROI again not 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 definitive proof but another data point personally I, I disagree with this one because I I've seen some like guys who have won a few hundred thousand on tournaments like play you know one k now like whatever it is and they have bad results in those games so I, I, I don't but I, I haven't won a few hundred thousand in tournaments I've won you won a lot yeah yeah I've, I've I've probably won like eight eight million or something like that, eight point five million. Sure. Um, I mean, I, yeah, sure. You won like more money, but that could be just playing tournaments for a longer amount of time. No, it was over a very short short amount of time. Sure, but I still don't think like if you win like ten million in tournaments or one million, it means it's it's significant enough to say whether you 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 know win that no it's 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 not it's not significant enough to be able to prove it for sure you're right yeah, yeah. but that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying it's a data point yeah okay um, so I, so, I we have, so we have so we have so we have testimonials of very successful students and we have it's like a seven out of ten for sure yeah yeah sure and whatever you think uh and then we have the the crushing tournaments <clears throat> we then have the bankroll challenge where i streamed every single hand so th- this is kind of like a weird data point where it's obviously cash games at low stakes up to 200 zoom. Uh, the 200 zoom was a pretty small sample because I just fucking sailed through it, honestly. Um, but, you know, the the ones below, a re- reasonable sample. Uh, we don't have a graph, but it was very quick. Like, uh, there, there were not too many downswings at all uh, in terms of how many hands played, at least. In terms of time, time fucking spent doing it, it was a very long thing because I didn't fucking stream. Like, this, like, well, I'll just say real quick is like, um, I think, okay, you probably do have some data points like these. I think they're varying, um, so how useful they are, but that's definitely useful, definitely worth considering. I would just ask you to consider, like, um, I, I think it's a very useful data point to actually have results in cash games that people can see. I think yeah, of, co- of, of course, and no, nobody, nobody's disagreeing with that. And I, if, if I had infinite time, I would go and grind 200 zoom right yeah, now and and just and do one it. last hour every stream here and like you know you could but it just it just doesn't it doesn't make me happy so i don't do it you know i i don't enjoy grinding 200 zoom I, i'm doing russian cash a little bit maybe like an hour every day 
and I'm using it to make content so I can help coach people with another bankroll challenge. And I'm building up a sample size and doing exactly what you're saying, but I'm not going to sit there and grind six hours a day. I'll trust, I take your word for it and I trust you for it. But I see this so often when people do these bankroll challenges alongside coaching, they take forever to finish the bankroll challenge, like as slow as possible, as long as much coaching as possible. And then nine out of 10 times, you just can't cancel the challenge at some, at some point down the line. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, a it's, a real, it's a real, it's a real, it's a real problem, but it's not what I'm doing. And you can see that from the way that I'm playing, I'm fucking invested in winning. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, I, I guess so. I, I just think, um, hmm. Okay, so, so, so again, another, another data point, not, not, not the most important data point in the world, but we're, we're adding on data points. And, and the thing is, when you're, when you're conducting a multivariate analysis, you have, you have to be taking into consideration all of these data points. And Are we looping? Is it just saying we're just going over the same things? We actually might have just been looping for like 30 minutes, I'm not sure. Uh, not, not, not as much as the last conversation. Okay. Going forward. He's bluffing Snapchat. Okay, so yeah, um, <laughs> I, I want to be boring like the last guy. So if we're going over the same stuff, just let me know. No, you're, you're good. I, on, honestly, for me, like the the intellectual side of this conversation is is cool, and it's it's nice to be able to have you know the torch shine, shone on me. More, I'm more interested in you, and what's I going on. I get that because like it's easy to call your behaviors, but you know, I saw you know when I said to Jar the man, you you wanted to get back at me on that one, which I get, I do get that. Yeah. Um, no, but I'm, I'm curious of you as a person, you know, I, I see a lot in you and, uh, it's a, I, my read on you was wrong. Actually, my read on you was dead wrong. Um, really? What read did you have? I, I honestly thought with a high degree of certainty, like 80% that you come in with like seriously, like needly and, and cruel intentions. Uh, and uh, there, there is an element of that in you. And I see it and I feel it yeah, really, really, sure. really deeply. But I do also see this part of you that is, there's a part of you that's dispassionate and there is actually a part of you that's a little compassionate as well. Um, I, and that, that little part of you does genuinely care for people that you think are good. And it's like in your head, you like to categorize people as, and tell me if I'm wrong on this, but this is my read. But you like to categorize people as kind of like good or not good. And you like to be compassionate, like with family or friend or whatever, but with people, uh, other people, mm. it seems to be not, not so. Uh... No, I, I actually think like the things that you see in me, I feel like they exist in you as well. You probably don't realize how much they exist in you, but I think they do. And in everyone as well. I just think that conversation needs to happen in poker where like there's too many coaches that get away with not showing results and selling way too much money sort of for coaching. And I'm worried that people will use measurements like that are more abstract and use you know people like you um, as a way to get away with a similar thing, and that's what I think is uh, why I disagree with. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, yeah, yeah, that's why we disagree. That that was a little bit of a loop, but uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, to to the people in the Twitch chat that are trying to fucking make us fight against each other. Uh, with with all, with all due respect, so you gotta you gotta fucking uh, grow up. Uh, we're not we're not trying to fucking uh, win against each other. What 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 I really want to do is you know I want to learn from you, and if you want to learn from me, that would be cool. Um, so do do you, do you feel what I'm saying that when we're looking at these these things, I'm I'm not caring about this one unidimensional thing that you care a lot about, and I see why you care about it. I get it. I like guess it will be a good data point. And I have a solution to you, man. Um, you could just get coaches that show their results um, to do that for you. Like, if you want, like, if you didn't want to do that work yourself, you could hire like other coaches that want to, and then use them to, you know, help add validity to your your coaching program. Yeah, with all due respect, I'm probably not going to take too much business advice from you. Um, I've thought about these things a lot. I've had conversations with with you know professionals in the industry, people that are very successful, and it's something that we might implement in the future. Um, out out of interest, what what stakes do you play? Uh, it's kind of a weird grind. I play one thousand L to hundred and L. Okay. Uh, on on which uh, which side? Um, I play here and there, mostly party poker. How's how how's it going? What's your BB per hundred on a thousand L? 
uh, like 40 for his uh, 10k hand sample, so it means nothing, or even less for like a 5k hand sample. Cool. Congrats on the shot taking going well. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, like, the thing is, um, I actually don't, I feel like I make more money playing 200 now, but getting more tables than, say, playing 1,000 an hour and just two tabling. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah I used to play 1,000 an hour on that. But I think it's interesting, like, if you didn't <coughs> want to do the work of, like, playing in that sample and you thought it would be useful to your company, I just feel like that is something that you would want, but... Oh, it's it's something. If I if I could if I could snap my fingers and you know I could get my hand sample from the bankroll challenge and the five hundred zoom I played over the last few years, then then fuck yeah. Uh, you know, in fact, I might be able to fucking find it to be honest. Um, if if can I do that? Can I just like go on stars and be like, hey, can I have the last? I don't think so. Okay. Actually, maybe maybe you can. Right. Well, I'll I'll try that anyway. Because if I because if I can have that with with little to minimal minimal effort, I fucking love that. Uh, somebody's saying I can, so I'll fucking I'll do that. Um, yeah, no, that that's great. But what I'm not going to do is fucking waste my life grinding something that I, I I'm almost certain I can beat. Uh, but I I'm still doing it. I'm still doing one one hour a day. I just have a million other things I'm doing. Yeah, I believe, <clears throat> I believe you. All right, that was uh, that was emotional, kind of. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with you, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like I'm speaking to a robot. It's great. No, it, and, and, and may, may I just end on a compliment, like, um, it's good to be able to speak truth to people, even, you know, what you see as truth, in, even in situations where it's uncomfortable. Um, I, I appreciate your ability to be able to say things that are socially difficult to say, and I think that that's, that's a really powerful phenomenon to, to be able to cultivate and maintain within you. Um, I would love to see it done in a more precise way to really take a step back and think deeply and intellectually so you can like rebut against people um because i i think the world needs people like that especially as the world gets a lot more fucking scary and totalitarian well now that we end on a good note i feel kind of like uh uncomfortable about it but you know if you did want to prop that like 15 big minds for 100 <laughs> win rate or something like i'll that, I'll, pro- I'll, I'll, I'll i'll prop bet that I will consider prop betting that because I actually don't know too much about how unlikely that is for somebody to be able to beat in GG. I'll, I'll have to like research that. It's fully that. delusional. It's, it's just not possible. Oh, if, 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 that, if that is fully delusional and it's not possible, then I won't prop bet it. Okay. Um, I, I just don't know about like, I've never, I, I never see people getting that high win rates, um, but I've also never played in a pool that I've crushed so easily as a uh, 200 uh, Zoom. Is, is, it, is it impossible to, play, to, to get 15 BB per 100 in, in like 2 and out? I'd be surprised if you have 5 BB. I'd be surprised if you have 2 BB, actually. Oh. Genuinely surprised. Okay, so do you want to bet on 2 BB? Um, no, I'll take as high as I can. No, 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 no. Well, I, no, no, you said you'll be surprised if you're... If, I'll, 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 I'll give you 5 to 1 on 2 BB. I'd be surprised. No, no, okay. five, 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 five to 1 on something that would surprise you is... You're crushing here. I'll, I'll give you as, mm. as big as you want. But five to one and fifteen to one. No, 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 no. I don't want fifteen. I, I don't, I don't have confident enough uh, uh, opinion of this. But if you would be surprised on two BB, I will give you five to one on any any amount you want. No, because two BB is still within reason. Like no, no, no. You said you'd be surprised. It's not within you. You'd be surprised. Like that, that's that's got to be like a one in ten minimum, right? I have no idea because you probably like play not many hands a day. Like okay. 2BB, if you're playing like 10 hours a day, four tabling, yeah, it's, it's very hard to do. If you do that, you know, 28 days a month. Whatever. Okay, okay. So you're, you're going back a bit. What what would you like to bet and how much? Um, I, I'd like to bet 20 big blinds per 100 that you don't know about. Okay, before, okay. But like, take, 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 what's what's the lowest you bet? Because I, I don't want to bet any, any ludicrous what's, things. What's the lowest, what's the highest you would bet? I don't know enough about Russian cash to be able to know win rates because I haven't paid attention to win rates properly in a very long time because I don't use HUDs. Um, but let's say five. If two would surprise you, five five would just knock you off your fucking chair. I'll, I'll, I'll give you two and a half to one at five. Five BB. Mm. Two and a half to one. That's, that's fucking great odds. So that would be, so it rakes like nine big blinds, you play wide, you're probably playing closer to 10. So you, you think you have 15 big blinds in the client. 
I, I don't know, dude. Honestly, I could be wrong. Who fucking knows? Mm-hmm. But, but like, the, 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 you, you said two would surprise you, so five that's, sounds, that's sounds good. I, good shot, but, um, I, I will give you two and a half to one at five. Five is a fair fight for sure. Because that's like, that's like 15 big lines, man, in the climb. That's very difficult. Um, like, what, how would you play? Do you, would you uh, be able to two-table if you felt like it? Would you pull select? Would you not? You know, these things also matter. I yeah, say. I'm just going to play whenever the fuck I feel like it. I'm not going to game select it. I just play whenever the fuck I feel like it. Um, can I just message you on like, Instagram afterwards? Okay, but only mm-hmm. only if you're gonna only if you promise me that you're gonna okay. be absolutely serious, and it has to be like it has to be like minimum twenty k, and it can't okay, be over, minimum twenty k for sure, and like, it can't be over like a hundred k sample because that that mm-hmm. that's too much for me. Bro, the, the issue is like a hundred k sample is already a very small sample. Yeah, right? okay, okay. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, 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 not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not playing through it. You, you can play. You can pay me a billion dollars to play to play a million dollars. I, I will sample. say this though, right? That I can see why Rex wouldn't take your bet if you weren't willing to play over hundred. No, I, I was back then. I was. Back then you were. I was, su- I was, su- I was super willing to play larger samples back then, but I I just yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, less than a hundred k hands. I feel like it's a hundred. A hundred k hands is enough to make it a plus EV bet. And if you're, if in your opinion, you'd be surprised for me to be at two BB, a hundred K hands is enough that 90 something percent of the time, surely I'm not going to be making five BB. Yeah, sure. So yeah, if I can reach out, I, I, I'm calling it now. This bet isn't going to happen because you're not going to put the money up because I've literally had these conversations like fucking 20 times and nobody ever does. So nobody actually believes in, in their thing, but I'm honestly saying this a little bit to bait you. Because uh, I'd love to have this kind of bet, but yeah, hundred K hands is the maximum I'll do, and it ha- you know it's going to be over a while because I've got family and I've got stuff going on. Hundred K is like, like that is the bare minimum that I would do for sure. Is all right. Well, I, I'm I'm not going to have any more of this conversation. Do you want to do you want to say anything else? Do you want to shout out anything or say hi to anyone or fuck like, it? Like let's say I, I uh, sleep on it and then I message you tomorrow. Would that be something you'd accept? I mean, you're allowed to message me. Sure. Uh, Heat Check Megaways wants a shout out. Shout out to Heat Check Megaways. Anyone else want a shout out? <clears throat> um, we, somebody man, says we want you. Sterling. I don't know who Sterling is. It's 1 a.m. here. Uh, I should not have streamed for fucking five hours. Shout out to Dio Plays. Can I get a reverse shout out? Fuck you, Jada Man. There you go. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Shout out, shout out to my boy Weasel 1991. Dude, apparently, uh, apparently, well. Goodbye, by the way, Leos. Thank, thank you so much you, for, for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Guys, yeah. give, it, give it up for Lewis. He's a fucking champ. Uh, speaking, speaking his truth as best he can. Weasel 1991. Uh, he was that guy that won that tournament. And I came into a chat with Eastie. I didn't know who Eastie was. I didn't know who Weasel was until the day before. And he just won this Triton tournament. And I was like fucking cheering him on. I was like, yeah, yeah, this is great. Then everyone in the chat was like, Charlie, these guys hate you. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Uh, not again. <clears throat> All right. So I hope you can see I'm human. Um, definitely, uh, definitely allow myself to get a little bit heated there when it wasn't, wasn't optimal for me to do so. We live and learn, and this is why I'm doing this, so I can get better preparation for the future um so i can uh yeah handle myself in all situations no matter how tired i am no matter how uh whatever i am i will say there are a few people in the chat that were very very toxic uh i'm probably going to ban people next time if they're gonna get like that but at the same time uh you know this time shout out to you guys for keeping the keeping the energy alive All right, beautiful human beings. We made it five hours. We didn't find a single scam artist, um, but we uh, we managed to have a lot of fun. And shout shout out to everyone that came on today. It was a really fucking good time. Uh, shout out to Jowderman, uh, Peter Clark, and then the the guests afterwards as well. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Peace.